The Book of Ezekiel Chapter 1 Now in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Kibar, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, Yahweh's word came to Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Kibar, and Yahweh's hand was there on him. I looked, and behold, a stormy wind came out of the north, a great cloud with flashing lightning and a brightness around it, and out of the middle of it, as it were glowing metal, out of the middle of the fire, out of its center came the likeness of four living creatures. This was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Everyone had four faces, and each one of them had four wings. Their feet were straight feet. The sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like burnished bronze. They had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. The four of them had their faces and their wings like this. Their wings were joined to one another. They didn't turn when they went. Each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they had the face of a man. The four of them had the face of a lion on the right side. The four of them had the face of an ox on the left side. The four of them also had the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread out above. Two wings of each one touched another, and two covered their bodies. Each one went straight forward. Where the spirit was to go, they went. They didn't turn when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of torches. The fire went up and down among the living creatures. The fire was bright, and lightning went out of the fire. The living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I saw the living creatures, behold, there was one wheel on the earth beside the living creatures, for each of the four faces of it. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like a barrel. The four of them had one likeness. Their appearance and their work was, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. When they went, they went in their four directions. They didn't turn when they went. As for their rims, they were high and dreadful. And the four of them had their rims full of eyes all around. When the living creatures went, the wheels went beside them. When the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Wherever the spirit was to go, they went. The spirit was to go there. The wheels were lifted up beside them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. When those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up beside them for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Over the head of the living creature there was the likeness of an expanse, like an awesome crystal to look at, stretched out over their heads above. Under the expanse their wings were straight, one toward the other. Each one had two which covered on this side, and each one had two which covered their bodies on that side. When they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, like the voice of the Almighty, a noise of tumult, like the noise of an army. When they stood, they let down their wings. There was a voice above the expanse that was over their heads. When they stood, they let down their wings. Above the expanse that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. On the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man on it above. I saw, as it were, glowing metal, as the appearance of fire within it all around.
from the appearance of his waist and upward. And from the appearance of his waist and downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire. And there was brightness around him, as the appearance of the rainbow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So was the appearance of the brightness all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of Yahweh's glory. When I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke. Chapter 2 He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. The Spirit entered into me when he spoke to me, and set me on my feet, and I heard him who spoke to me. He said to me, Son of man, I send you to the children of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even to this very day. The children are impudent and stiff-hearted. I am sending you to them, and you shall tell them, this is what the Lord, Yahweh, says. They, whether they will hear, or whether they will refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that there has been a prophet among them. You, son of man, don't be afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions. Don't be afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they will hear, or whether they will refuse, for they are most rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I tell you. Don't be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat that which I give you. Then I looked. Behold, a hand was stretched out to me. And behold, a scroll of a book was in it. He spread it before me. It was written within and without, and lamentations, mourning, and woe were written in it. Chapter 3 He said to me, Son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll, and go, speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat the scroll. He said to me, Son of man, cause your belly to eat, and fill your bowels with this scroll that I give you. Then I ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. He said to me, Son of man, go to the house of Israel, and speak my words to them, for you are not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel, not to many peoples of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words you can't understand. Surely, if I sent you to them, they would listen to you, but the house of Israel will not listen to you, for they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are obstinate and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made your face hard against their faces, and your forehead hard against their foreheads. I have made your forehead as a diamond, harder than flint. Don't be afraid of them, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they are a rebellious house. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, receive in your heart and hear with your ears all my words that I speak to you. 
Go to them of the captivity, the children of your people, and speak to them, and tell them, This is what the Lord Yahweh says, whether they will hear, or whether they will refuse. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me the voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be Yahweh's glory from his place. I heard the noise of the wings of the living creatures as they touched one another, and the noise of the wheels beside them, even the noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, and Yahweh's hand was strong on me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Aviv that lived by the river Kibar, and to where they lived. And I sat there overwhelmed among them seven days. At the end of seven days, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word from my mouth and warn them from me. When I tell the wicked, you will surely die and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. That wicked man will die in his iniquity, but I will require his blood at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he doesn't turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he will die. Because you have not given him warning, he will die in his sin, and his righteous deeds which he has done will not be remembered. But I will require his blood at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous not sin, and he does not sin, he will surely live, because he took warning, and you have delivered your soul. Yahweh's hand was there on me, and he said to me, Arise, go out into the plain, and I will talk with you there. Then I arose and went out into the plain, and behold, Yahweh's glory stood there, like the glory which I saw by the river Kibar. Then I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. He spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. But you, son of man, behold, they will put ropes on you and will bind you with them and you will not go out among them. I will make your tongue stick to the roof of your mouth, that you will be mute, and will not be able to correct them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall tell them. This is what the Lord Yahweh says. He who hears, let him hear. And he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. Chapter 4 You also, son of man, take a tile and lay it before yourself, and portray on it a city, even Jerusalem. Lay siege against it. Build forts against it, and cast up a mound against it. Also set camps against it, and plant battering rams against it all around. Take for yourself an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between you and the city. Then set your face toward it. It will be besieged and you shall lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Moreover, 
lie on your left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel on it according to the number of the days that you shall lie on it you shall bear their iniquity for i have appointed the years of their iniquity to be to you a number of days even three hundred ninety days so you shall bear the iniquity of the house of israel again when you have accomplished these you shall lie on your right side, and shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. I have appointed forty days, each day for a year, to you. You shall set your face toward the siege of Jerusalem, with your arm uncovered, and you shall prophesy against it. Behold, I put ropes on you, and you shall not turn yourself from one side to the other until you have accomplished the days of your siege. Take for yourself also wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt, and put them in one vessel. Make bread of it according to the number of the days that you will lie on your side even three hundred ninety days, you shall eat of it. Your food, which you shall eat, shall be by weight, twenty shekels a day. From time to time you shall eat it. You shall drink water by measure, the sixth part of a hen. From time to time you shall drink. You shall eat it as barley cakes and you shall bake it in their sight with dung that comes out of man. Yahweh said, Even thus will the children of Israel eat their bread unclean among the nations where I will drive them. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, my soul has not been polluted, for from my youth up, even until now, I have not eaten of that which dies of itself, or is torn of animals. No abominable meat has come into my mouth. Then he said to me, Behold, I have given you cow's dung for man's dung, and you shall prepare your bread on it. Moreover, he said to me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. They will eat bread by weight and with fearfulness. They will drink water by measure and in dismay, that they may lack bread and water, be dismayed one with another, and pine away in their iniquity. Chapter 5 you, son of man, take a sharp sword. You shall take it as a barber's razor to yourself, and shall cause it to pass over your head and over your beard. Then take balances to weigh and divide the hair. A third part you shall burn in the fire in the middle of the city, when the days of the siege are fulfilled. You shall take a third part and strike with the sword around it. A third part you shall scatter to the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. You shall take of it a few in number, and bind them in the folds of your robe. Of these again you shall take, and cast them into the middle of the fire and burn them in the fire. From it a fire will come out into all the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, This is Jerusalem. I have set her in the middle of the nations, and countries are around her. She has rebelled against my ordinances in doing wickedness more than the nations, and against my statutes more than the countries that are around her. 
for they have rejected my ordinances, and as for my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Because you are more turbulent than the nations that are around you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my ordinances, neither have followed the ordinances of the nations that are around you. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I, even I, am against you, and I will execute judgments among you in the sight of the nations. I will do in you that which I have not done, and which I will not do anything like it any more, because of all your abominations. Therefore the fathers will eat the sons within you, and the sons will eat their fathers. I will execute judgments on you, and I will scatter the whole remnant of you to all the winds. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your detestable things and with all your abominations, therefore I will also diminish you. My eye won't spare, and I will have no pity. A third part of you will die with the pestilence, and they will be consumed with famine within you. A third part will fall by the sword around you. A third part I will scatter to all the winds, and will draw out a sword after them. Thus my anger will be accomplished, and I will cause my wrath toward them to rest, and I will be comforted. They will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken in my zeal when I have accomplished my wrath on them. Moreover, I will make you a desolation and a reproach among the nations that are around you in the sight of all that pass by. So it will be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment to the nations that are around you when I execute judgments on you in anger and in wrath, and in wrathful rebukes, I, Yahweh, have spoken it, when I send on them the evil arrows of famine that are for destruction, which I will send to destroy you. I will increase the famine on you, and will break your staff of bread, I will send on you famine and evil animals, and they will bereave you. Pestilence and blood will pass through you. I will bring the sword on you. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Chapter 6 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, Set your face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy to them, and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword on you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will become desolate, and your incense altars will be broken. I will cast down your slain men before your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the children of Israel before their idols. I will scatter your bones around your altars. In all your dwelling places, the cities will be laid waste, and the high places will be desolate that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your incense altars may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. The slain will fall among you, and you will know that I am Yahweh. Yet I will leave a remnant, in that you will have some that escape the sword among the nations, when you are scattered through the countries. Those of you that escape will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive, how I have been broken with their lewd heart, 
which has departed from me, and with their eyes, which play the prostitute after their idols. Then they will loathe themselves in their own sight for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. They will know that I am Yahweh. I have not said in vain that I would do this evil to them. The Lord Yahweh says, Strike with your hand, and stamp with your foot, and say, Alas! Because of all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. He who is far off will die of the pestilence. He who is near will fall by the sword. He who remains and is besieged will die by the famine. Thus I will accomplish my wrath on them. You will know that I am Yahweh when their slain men are among their idols around their altars on every high hill, on all the tops of the mountains, under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the places where they offered pleasant aroma to all their idols, I will stretch out my hand on them and make the land desolate and waste from the wilderness toward Dibla throughout all their habitations then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 7 Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, You, son of man, the Lord Yahweh says to the land of Israel, An end, the end has come on the four corners of the land. Now is the end on you and I will send my anger on you, and will judge you according to your ways. I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye will not spare you, neither will I have pity. But I will bring your ways on you, and your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, An evil, a unique evil. Behold, it comes. An end has come. The end has come. It awakes against you. Behold, it comes. Your doom has come to you, inhabitant of the land. The time has come. The day is near, a day of tumult, and not of joyful shouting on the mountains. Now I will shortly pour out my wrath on you, and accomplish my anger against you, and will judge you according to your ways. I will bring on you all your abominations. My eye won't spare, neither will I have pity. I will punish you according to your ways. Your abominations will be among you. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, strike. Behold the day. Behold, it comes. Your doom has gone out, the rod has blossomed, pride has budded, violence has risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them will remain, nor of their multitude, nor of their wealth. There will be nothing of value among them. The time has come. The day draws near. Don't let the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is on all its multitude. For the seller won't return to that which is sold, although they are still alive. For the vision concerns the whole multitude of it. None will return. None will strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet and have made all ready. But no one goes to the battle. For my wrath is on all its multitude. The sword is outside, and the pestilence and the famine within. He who is in the field will die by the sword. He who is in the city will be devoured by famine and pestilence. But those of those who escape, they will escape and will be on the mountains, 
like doves of the valleys, all of them moaning, everyone in his iniquity. All hands will be feeble, and all knees will be weak as water. They will also clothe themselves with sackcloth, and horror will cover them. Shame will be on all faces, and baldness on all their heads. They will cast their silver in the streets, and their gold will be as an unclean thing. Their silver and their gold won't be able to deliver them in the day of Yahweh's wrath. They won't satisfy their souls or fill their bellies because it has been the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Therefore, I have made it to them as an unclean thing. I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a plunder, and they will profane it. I will also turn my face from them, and they will profane my secret place. Robbers will enter into it and profane it. Make chains, for the land is full of bloody crime and the city is full of violence. Therefore, I will bring the worst of the nations, and they will possess their houses. I will also make the pride of the strong to cease. Their holy places will be profaned. Destruction comes. They will seek peace, and there will be none. Mischief will come on mischief, and rumor will be on rumor. They will seek a vision of the prophet, but the law will perish from the priest, and counsel from the elders. The king will mourn, and the prince will be clothed with desolation. The hands of the people of the land will be troubled. I will do to them after their way, and according to their own judgments I will judge them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 8 In the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, the Lord Yahweh's hand fell on me there. Then I saw, and behold, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his waist and downward, fire, and from his waist and upward, as the appearance of brightness, as it were glowing metal. He stretched out the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my head. And the Spirit lifted me up between earth and the sky, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the gate of the inner court that looks toward the north, where there was the seed of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. Behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the appearance that I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift up your eyes now, the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north, and saw, northward of the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said to me, Son of man, do you see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel commit here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But you will again see yet other great abominations. He brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. When I had dug in the wall, I saw a door. He said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and looked and saw every form of creeping things, abominable animals, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed around on the wall. Seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel stood before them. In the middle of them, Jeazaniah, the son of Shaphan, stood. 
every man with his censer in his hand, and the smell of the cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in his rooms of imagery? For they say, Yahweh doesn't see us. Yahweh has forsaken the land. He said also to me, You will again see more of the great abominations which they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. And I saw the women sit there, weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? You will again see yet greater abominations than these. He brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and I saw at the door of Yahweh's temple, between the porch and the altar, there were about twenty-five men with their backs toward Yahweh's temple and their faces toward the east. They were worshiping the sun toward the east. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have turned again to provoke me to anger. Behold, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will also deal in wrath. My eye won't spare, neither will I have pity. Though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. Chapter 9 Then he cried in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause those who are in charge of the city to draw near, each man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Behold, six men came from the way of the upper gate, which lies toward the north, every man with his slaughter weapon in his hand. One man in the middle of them was clothed in linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. The glory of the God of Israel went up from the cherub, whereupon it was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in linen, who had the rider's inkhorn by his side. Yahweh said to him, Go through the middle of the city, through the middle of Jerusalem, and set a mark on the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry over all the abominations that are done within it. To the others he said in my hearing, Go through the city after him and strike. Don't let your eye spare, neither have pity. Kill utterly the old man, the young man, the virgin, little children and women, but don't come near any man on whom is the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the old men who were before the house. He said to them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. They went out and struck in the city. While they were killing, and I was left, I fell on my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, will you destroy all the residue of Israel in your pouring out of your wrath on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perversion. For they say, Yahweh has forsaken the land, and Yahweh doesn't see. As for me also, my eye won't spare, neither will I have pity, but I will bring their way on their head. Behold, the man clothed in linen, who had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have commanded me. Chapter 10 Then I looked, and see, in the expanse that was over the head of the cherubim, there appeared above them as it were a sapphire stone, 
as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. He spoke to the man clothed in linen and said, Go in between the whirling wheels, even under the cherub, and fill both your hands with coals of fire from between the cherubim, and scatter them over the city. He went in as I watched. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Yahweh's glory mounted up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of Yahweh's glory. The sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard even to the outer court as the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. It came to pass, when he commanded the man clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from between the whirling wheels, from between the cherubim, that he went in and stood beside a wheel. The cherub stretched out his hand from between the cherubim to the fire that was between the cherubim, and took some of it, and put it into the hands of him who was clothed in linen, who took it and went out. The form of a man's hand appeared here in the cherubim under their wings. I looked, and behold, there were four wheels beside the cherubim, one wheel beside one cherub, and another wheel beside another cherub. The appearance of the wheels was like a barrel stone. As for their appearance, the four of them had one likeness, like a wheel within a wheel. When they went, they went in their four directions. They didn't turn as they went, but to the place where the head looked, they followed it. They didn't turn as they went. Their whole body, including their backs, their hands, their wings, and the wheels, were full of eyes all around, even the wheels that the four of them had. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing the whirling wheel. Every one of them had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub. The second face was the face of a man. The third face was the face of a lion. The fourth face was the face of an eagle. The cherubim mounted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river Kibar. When the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. And when the cherubim lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the wheels also didn't turn from beside them. When they stood, these stood. When they mounted up, these mounted up with them. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. Yahweh's glory went out from over the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. The cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight when they went out with the wheels beside them. Then they stood at the door of the east gate of Yahweh's house, and the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river Kibar, and I knew that they were cherubim. Every one had four faces, and every one four wings. The likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. As for the likeness of their faces, they were the faces which I saw by the river Kibar, their appearances, and themselves. They each went straight forward. Chapter 11 Moreover, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me to the east gate of Yahweh's house, which looks eastward. Behold, twenty-five men were at the door of the gate, and I saw among them Jeazaniah, the son of Azar, and Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, princes of the people. He said to me, Son of man, these are the men who devise iniquity and who give wicked counsel in this city, who say, The time is not near to build houses. This is the cauldron, and we are the meat. Therefore, Prophesy against them. Prophesy, son of man. Yahweh's spirit fell on me, and he said to me, Speak, Yahweh says. Thus you have said, house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind. 
You have multiplied your slain in this city, and you have filled its streets with the slain. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Your slain, whom you have laid in the middle of it, they are the meat, and this is the cauldron, but you will be brought out of the middle of it. You have feared the sword, and I will bring the sword on you, says the Lord Yahweh. I will bring you out of the middle of it, and deliver you into the hands of strangers, and will execute judgments among you. You will fall by the sword. I will judge you in the border of Israel. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. This will not be your cauldron. Neither will you be the meat in the middle of it. I will judge you in the border of Israel. You will know that I am Yahweh. For you have not walked in my statutes. You have not executed my ordinances, but have done after the ordinances of the nations that are around you. When I prophesied, Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died. Then I fell down on my face and cried out with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, will you make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, your brothers, even your brothers, the men of your relatives, and all the house of Israel, all of them, are they to whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Go far away from Yahweh. This land has been given to us for a possession. Therefore, say, the Lord Yahweh says, Whereas I have removed them far off among the nations, and whereas I have scattered them among the countries, Yet I will be to them a sanctuary for a little while in the countries where they have come. Therefore say, the Lord Yahweh says, I will gather you from the peoples, and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. They will come there, and they will take away all its detestable things, and all its abominations from there. I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them. They will be my people, and I will be their God. But as for them whose heart walks after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their way on their own heads, says the Lord Yahweh. Then the cherubim lifted up their wings, and the wheels were beside them. The glory of the God of Israel was over them above. Yahweh's glory went up from the middle of the city and stood on the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me in the vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to the captives. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spoke to the captives all the things that Yahweh had shown me. Chapter 12 Yahweh's word also came to me, saying, Son of man, you dwell in the middle of the rebellious house, who have eyes to see and don't see, who have ears to hear, and don't hear, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, you, son of man, prepare your stuff for moving, and move by day in their sight. You shall move from your place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your stuff by day, in their sight, as stuff for moving. You shall go out yourself at evening in their sight, as when men go out into exile. Dig through the wall in their sight, and carry your stuff out that way. 
In their sight you shall bear it on your shoulder, and carry it out in the dark. You shall cover your face, so that you don't see the land, for I have sent you for a sign to the house of Israel. I did so as I was commanded. I brought out my stuff by day, as stuff for moving, and in the evening I dug through the wall with my hand. I brought it out in the dark, and bore it on my shoulder in their sight. In the morning, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, hasn't the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, The Lord Yahweh says, This burden concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel among whom they are. Say, I am your sign. As I have done, so will it be done to them. They will go into exile, into captivity. The prince who is among them will bear on his shoulder in the dark, and will go out. They will dig through the wall to carry things out that way. He will cover his face, because he will not see the land with his eyes. I will also spread my net on him, and he will be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans. Yet he will not see it, though he will die there. I will scatter toward every wind all who are around him to help him, and all his bands. I will draw out the sword after them. They will know that I am Yahweh when I disperse them among the nations and scatter them through the countries. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the nations where they come. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink your water with trembling and with fearfulness. Tell the people of the land, the Lord Yahweh says concerning the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the land of Israel, they will eat their bread with fearfulness, and drink their water in dismay, that her land may be desolate, and all that is therein, because of the violence of all those who dwell therein. The cities that are inhabited will be laid waste, and the land will be a desolation. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision fails? Tell them, therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, I will make this proverb to cease, and they will no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But tell them, The days are at hand, and the fulfillment of every vision for there will be no more any false vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am Yahweh. I will speak, and the word that I speak will be performed. It will be no more deferred, for in your days, rebellious house, I will speak the word and will perform it, says the Lord Yahweh. Again Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he sees is for many days to come, and he prophesies of times that are far off. Therefore tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, None of my words will be deferred any more, but the word which I speak will be performed, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 13 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, 
prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy, and say to those who prophesy out of their own heart, Hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Israel, your prophets have been like foxes in the waste places. You have not gone up into the gaps or built up the wall for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in Yahweh's day. They have seen falsehood and lying divination, who say, Yahweh says, but Yahweh has not sent them. They have made men to hope that the word would be confirmed. Haven't you seen a false vision? And haven't you spoken a lying divination, in that you say, Yahweh says, but I have not spoken? Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, because you have spoken falsehood and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord Yahweh. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who utter lying divinations. They will not be in the council of my people, neither will they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither will they enter into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there is no peace, when one builds up a wall, behold, they plaster it with whitewash. Tell those who plaster it with whitewash that it will fall. There will be an overflowing shower, and you, great hailstones, will fall. A stormy wind will tear it. Behold, when the wall has fallen, won't it be said to you, Where is the plaster with which you have plastered it? Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, I will even tear it with a stormy wind in my wrath. There will be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstones in wrath to consume it. So I will break down the wall that you have plastered with whitewash, and bring it down to the ground, so that its foundation will be uncovered. It will fall, and you will be consumed in the middle of it. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, Thus I will accomplish my wrath on the wall and on those who have plastered it with whitewash. I will tell you, the wall is no more, neither those who plastered it. To wit, the prophets of Israel who prophesy concerning Jerusalem and who see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, says the Lord Yahweh. You, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people, who prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy against them, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the women who sew pillows on all elbows, and make kerchiefs for the head of persons of every stature, to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people, and save souls alive for yourselves? You have profaned me among my people for handfuls of barley, and for pieces of bread, to kill the souls who should not die, and to save the souls alive who should not live, by your lying to my people who listen to lies. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against your pillows, with which you hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms. I will let the souls go, even the souls whom you hunt to make them fly. I will also tear your kerchiefs and deliver my people out of your hand, and they will be no more in your hand to be hunted. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, because with lies you have grieved the heart of the righteous, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way and be saved alive. Therefore you shall no more see false visions, nor practice divination. 
I will deliver my people out of your hand. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 14 Then some of the elders of Israel came to me and set before me. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have taken their idols into their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak to them and tell them. The Lord Yahweh says, Every man of the house of Israel who takes his idols into his heart and puts the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet, I, Yahweh, will answer him therein according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore, tell the house of Israel, the Lord Yahweh says, Return, and turn yourselves from your idols. Turn away your faces from all your abominations. For everyone of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who live in Israel, who separates himself from me, and takes his idols into his heart, and puts the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and comes to the prophet to inquire for himself of me. I, Yahweh, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man, and will make him an astonishment for a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from among my people. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. If the prophet is deceived and speaks a word, I, Yahweh, have deceived that prophet and I will stretch out my hand on him, and will destroy him from among my people Israel. They will bear their iniquity. The iniquity of the prophet will be even as the iniquity of him who seeks him, that the house of Israel may no more go astray from me, neither defile themselves any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God says the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, when a land sins against me by committing a trespass, and I stretch out my hand on it, and break the staff of its bread, and send famine on it, and cut off from it man and animal, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they would deliver only their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord Yahweh. If I cause evil animals to pass through the land, and they ravage it, and it is made desolate, so that no man may pass through because of the animals. Though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only would be delivered but the land would be desolate. Or if I bring a sword on that land and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off from it man and animal, though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, they would deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only would be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land, and pour out my wrath on it in blood, to cut off from it man and animal, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, they would deliver neither son nor daughter. They would deliver only their own souls by their righteousness. For the Lord Yahweh says, How much more when I send my four severe judgments on Jerusalem, the sword, the famine, the evil animals, and the pestilence, to cut off from it man and animal. Yet, behold, there will be left a remnant in it that will be carried out, both sons and daughters. Behold, 
they will come out to you, and you will see their way and their doings. Then you will be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought on Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought on it. They will comfort you when you see their way and their doings. Then you will know that I have not done all that I have done in it without cause, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 15 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, the vine branch which is among the trees of the forest? Will wood be taken of it to make anything? Will men take a pen of it to hang any vessel on it? Behold, it is cast into the fire for fuel. The fire has devoured both its ends, and the middle of it is burned. Is it profitable for any work? Behold, when it was whole, it was suitable for no work. How much less when the fire has devoured it, and it has been burned, will it yet be suitable for any work? Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, As the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so I will give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will set my face against them. They will go out from the fire, but the fire will devour them. Then you will know that I am Yahweh when I set my face against them. I will make the land desolate because they have committed a trespass, says the Lord, Yahweh. Chapter 16 Again Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, The Lord Yahweh says to Jerusalem, Your origin and your birth is of the land of the Canaanite, an Amorite was your father, and your mother was a Hittite. As for your birth, in the day you were born, your navel was not cut. You weren't washed in water to cleanse you. You weren't salted at all, nor wrapped in blankets at all. No eye pitied you to do any of these things to you, to have compassion on you. But you were cast out in the open field because you were abhorred in the day that you were born. When I passed by you, and saw you wallowing in your blood, I said to you, Though you are in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you, Though you are in your blood, live. I caused you to multiply as that which grows in the field, and you increased and grew great, and you attained to excellent ornament. Your breasts were formed, and your hair grew, yet you were naked and bare. Now, when I passed by you and looked at you, behold, your time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore to you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord Yahweh, and you became mine. Then washed I you with water. Yes, I thoroughly washed away your blood from you, and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you also with embroidered work and put sealskin sandals on you. I dressed you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I decked you with ornaments, put bracelets on your hands, and put a chain on your neck. I put a ring on your nose, and earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus you were decked with gold and silver. Your clothing was of fine linen, silk, and embroidered work. You ate fine flour, 
honey and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful, and you prospered to royal estate. Your renown went out among the nations for your beauty, for it was perfect. Through my majesty, which I put on you, says the Lord Yahweh, but you trusted in your beauty and played the prostitute because of your renown and poured out your prostitution on everyone who passed by. It was his. You took some of your garments and made for yourself high places decked with various colors and played the prostitute on them. This shall not happen, neither shall it be. You also took your beautiful jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I had given you, and made for yourself images of men, and played the prostitute with them. You took your embroidered garments, covered them, and set my oil and my incense before them. My bread also, which I gave you, fine flour, oil, and honey, with which I fed you, you even set it before them for a pleasant aroma. And so it was, says the Lord Yahweh. Moreover, you have taken your sons and your daughters, whom you have borne to me, and you have sacrificed these to them to be devoured. Was your prostitution a small matter, that you have slain my children and delivered them up, and causing them to pass through the fire to them? In all your abominations and your prostitution, you have not remembered the days of your youth, when you were naked and bare, and were wallowing in your blood. It has happened after all your wickedness. Woe, woe to you, says the Lord Yahweh, that you have built for yourselves a vaulted place, and have made yourselves a lofty place in every street. You have built your lofty place at the head of every way, and have made your beauty an abomination, and have opened your feet to everyone who passed by, and multiplied your prostitution. You have also committed sexual immorality with the Egyptians, your neighbors, great of flesh, and have multiplied your prostitution to provoke me to anger. See, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over you, and have diminished your portion, and delivered you to the will of those who hate you, the daughters of the Philistines, who are ashamed of your lewd way. You have played the prostitute also with the Assyrians, because you were insatiable. Yes, you have played the prostitute with them, and yet you weren't satisfied. You have, moreover, multiplied your prostitution to the land of merchants, to Chaldea, and yet you weren't satisfied with this. How weak is your heart, says the Lord Yahweh, since you do all these things, the work of an impudent prostitute, in that you build your vaulted place at the head of every way, and make your lofty place in every street, and have not been as a prostitute, in that you scorn pay, a wife who commits adultery, who takes strangers instead of her husband. People give gifts to all prostitutes, but you give your gifts to all your lovers, and bribe them, that they may come to you on every side for your prostitution. You are different from other women in your prostitution, in that no one follows you to play the prostitute, and whereas you give hire, and no hire is given to you. Therefore you are different. Therefore, prostitute, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, Because your filthiness was poured out, and your nakedness uncovered through your prostitution with your lovers, and because of all the idols of your abominations, and for the blood of your children that you gave to them. Therefore, see, I will gather all your lovers with whom you have taken pleasure, and all those who you have loved, and all those who you have hated, 
I will even gather them against you on every side and will uncover your nakedness to them, that they may see all your nakedness. I will judge you as women who break wedlock and shed blood are judged, and I will bring on you the blood of wrath and jealousy. I will also give you into their hand, and they will throw down your vaulted place and break down your lofty places. They will strip you of your clothes and take your beautiful jewels. They will leave you naked and bare. They will also bring up a company against you, and they will stone you with stones and thrust you through with their swords. They will burn your houses with fire and execute judgments on you in the sight of many women. I will cause you to cease from playing the prostitute, and you will also give no hire any more. So I will cause my wrath toward you to rest, and my jealousy will depart from you. I will be quiet and will not be angry any more, because you have not remembered the days of your youth, but have raged against me in all these things. Therefore, behold, I also will bring your way on your head, says the Lord Yahweh, and you shall not commit this lewdness with all your abominations. Behold, everyone who uses proverbs will use this proverb against you, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. You are the daughter of your mother, who loathes her husband and her children, and you are the sister of your sisters, who loathed their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. Your elder sister is Samaria, who dwells at your left hand, she and her daughters, and your younger sister, who dwells at your right hand, is Sodom with her daughters. Yet you have not walked in their ways, nor done their abominations, but soon you were more corrupt than they in all your ways. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, Sodom, your sister, has not done, she nor her daughters, as you have done, you and your daughters. Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and prosperous ease was in her and in her daughters. She also didn't strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. They were arrogant and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away when I saw it. Samaria hasn't committed half of your sins, but you have multiplied your abominations more than they, and have justified your sisters by all your abominations which you have done. You also bear your own shame yourself, in that you have given judgment for your sisters. Through your sins, that you have committed more abominable than they. They are more righteous than you. Yes, be also confounded, and bear your shame, in that you have justified your sisters. I will reverse their captivity, the captivity of Sodom and her daughters, and the captivity of Samaria and her daughters, and the captivity of your captives among them that you may bear your own shame and may be ashamed because of all that you have done, in that you are a comfort to them. Your sisters, Sodom and her daughters, will return to their former estate, and Samaria and her daughters will return to their former estate, and you and your daughters will return to your former estate. For your sister Sodom was not mentioned by your mouth in the day of your pride, before your wickedness was uncovered, as at the time of the reproach of the daughters of Syria, and of all who are around her, the daughters of the Philistines, who despise you all around. You have borne your lewdness and your abominations, says Yahweh. For the Lord Yahweh says, 
I will also deal with you as you have done, who have despised the oath in breaking the covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish to you an everlasting covenant. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your sisters, your elder sisters, and your younger, and I will give them to you for daughters, but not by your covenant. I will establish my covenant with you. Then you will know that I am Yahweh, that you may remember and be confounded and never open your mouth any more because of your shame. When I have forgiven you all that you have done, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 17 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, tell a riddle and speak a parable to the house of Israel, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, A great eagle with great wings and long feathers, full of feathers, which had various colors, came to Lebanon and took the top of the cedar. He cropped off the topmost of its young twigs and carried it to a land of traffic, he planted it in a city of merchants. He also took some of the seed of the land and planted it in fruitful soil. He placed it beside many waters. He set it as a willow tree. It grew and became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him, and its roots were under him. So it became a vine produced branches, and shot out sprigs. There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers. Behold, this vine bent its roots toward him and shot out its branches toward him from the beds of its plantation that he might water it. It was planted in a good soil by many waters that it might produce branches, and that it might bear fruit, that it might be a good vine. Say, the Lord Yahweh says, Will it prosper? Won't he pull up its roots and cut off its fruit, that it may wither, that all its fresh springing leaves may wither? It can't be raised from its roots by a strong arm or many people. Yes, behold, being planted, will it prosper? Won't it utterly wither when the east wind touches it? It will wither in the beds where it grew. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Say now to the rebellious house, Don't you know what these things mean? Tell them, Behold, the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and took its king and its princes, and brought them to him to Babylon. He took some of the royal offspring, and made a covenant with him. He also brought him under an oath, and took away the mighty of the land, that the kingdom might be brought low, that it might not lift itself up, but that by keeping his covenant it might stand. But he rebelled against him in sending his ambassadors into Egypt, that they might give him horses and many people. Will he prosper? Will he, who does such things, escape? Will he break the covenant and still escape? As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely in the place where the king dwells, who made him king whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he broke. Even with him in the middle of Babylon, he will die. Pharaoh, with his mighty army and great company, won't help him in the war. When they cast up mounds and build forts, to cut off many persons, for he has despised the oath by breaking the covenant, and behold, he had given his hand, 
and yet has done all these things, he won't escape. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, As I live, I will surely bring on his own head my oath that he has despised and my covenant that he has broken. I will spread my net on him, and he will be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, and will enter into judgment with him there, for his trespass that he has trespassed against me. All his fugitives in all his bands will fall by the sword, and those who remain will be scattered toward every wind. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it. The Lord Yahweh says, I will also take some of the lofty top of the cedar and will plant it. I will crop off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. I will plant it in the mountain of the height of Israel, and it will produce boughs and bear fruit and be a good cedar. Birds of every kind will dwell in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made the dry tree flourish. I, Yahweh, have spoken and have done it. Chapter 18 Yahweh's word came to me again, saying, What do you mean that you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, you shall not use this proverb any more in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins, he shall die. But if a man is just, and does that which is lawful and right, and has not eaten on the mountains, hasn't lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hasn't defiled his neighbor's wife, hasn't come near a woman in her impurity, and has not wronged any, but has restored to the debtor his pledge, has taken nothing by robbery, has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment. He who hasn't lent to them with interest, hasn't taken any increase from them, who has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, has executed true justice between man and man, has walked in my statutes and has kept my ordinances to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord Yahweh. If he fathers a son who is a robber who sheds blood and who does any one of these things or who does not do any of those things, but even has eaten at the mountain shrines, and defiled his neighbor's wife, has wronged the poor and needy, has taken by robbery, has not restored the pledge, and has lifted up his eyes to the idols, has committed abomination, has lent with interest, and has taken increase from the poor. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He has done all these abominations. He shall surely die. His blood will be on him. Now behold, if he fathers a son who sees all his father's sins, which he has done, and fears and does not such like, who hasn't eaten on the mountains, hasn't lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, hasn't defiled his neighbor's wife, hasn't wronged any, hasn't taken anything to pledge, hasn't taken by robbery, but has given his bread to the hungry and has covered the naked with a garment, who has withdrawn his hand from the poor,
who hasn't received interest or increase, has executed my ordinances, has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, robbed his brother, and did that which is not good among his people, behold, he will die in his iniquity. Yet you say, Why doesn't the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son has done that which is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, and has done them, he will surely live. The soul who sins, he shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be on him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be on him. But if the wicked turns from all his sins that he has committed, and keeps all my statutes, and does that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his transgressions that he has committed will be remembered against him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord Yahweh? and not rather that he should return from his way and live? But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness, and commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, should he live? None of his righteous deeds that he has done will be remembered. In his trespass that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them he shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, house of Israel, is my way not equal? Aren't your ways unequal? When the righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies therein, in his iniquity that he has done, he shall die. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed, and does that which is lawful and right. He will save his soul alive, because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. House of Israel, aren't my ways fair? Aren't your ways unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord Yahweh. Return and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions in which you have transgressed, and make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him who dies, says the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, turn yourselves and live. Chapter 19 Moreover, take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel, and say, What was your mother? A lioness. She couched among lions. In the middle of the young lions she nourished her cubs. She brought up one of her cubs. He became a young lion. He learned to catch the prey. He devoured men. The nations also heard of him. He was taken in their pit, and they brought him with hooks to the land of Egypt. Now when she saw that she had waited, and her hope was lost, then she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He went up and down among the lions. He became a young lion. He learned to catch the prey. He devoured men. He knew their palaces and laid waste their cities. The land was desolate with its fullness because of the noise of his roaring. Then the nations attacked him on every side from the provinces. 
They spread their net over him. He was taken in their pit. They put him in a cage with hooks and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into strongholds so that his voice should no more be heard on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your blood, planted by the waters. It was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. It had strong branches for the scepters of those who ruled. Their stature was exalted among the thick boughs. They were seen in their height with the multitude of their branches, but it was plucked up in fury. It was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried up its fruit. Its strong branches were broken off and withered. The fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has gone out of its branches. It has devoured its fruit, so that there is in it no strong branch to be a scepter to rule. This is a lamentation, and shall be for a lamentation. Chapter 20 In the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, some of the elders of Israel came to inquire of Yahweh and set before me. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel and tell them. The Lord Yahweh says, Is it to inquire of me that you have come? As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Tell them, the Lord Yahweh says, In the day when I chose Israel and swore to the offspring of the house of Jacob and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt, when I swore to them, saying, I am Yahweh your God. In that day I swore to them to bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had searched out for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. I said to them, Each of you throw away the abominations of his eyes. Don't defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh your God. But they rebelled against me and would not listen to me. They didn't all throw away the abominations of their eyes. They also didn't forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said I would pour out my wrath on them to accomplish my anger against them in the middle of the land of Egypt. But I worked for my name's sake, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations, among which they were, in whose sight, I made myself known to them in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So I caused them to go out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my statutes and showed them my ordinances, which, if a man does, he will live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They didn't walk in my statutes, and they rejected my ordinances, which if a man keeps, he shall live in them. They greatly profaned my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my wrath on them in the wilderness to consume them but I worked for my name's sake, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations, in whose sight I brought them out. Moreover, also I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they rejected my ordinances and didn't walk in my statutes and profaned my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eye spared them, and I didn't destroy them. 
I didn't make a full end of them in the wilderness. I said to their children in the wilderness, Don't walk in the statutes of your fathers. Don't observe their ordinances or defile yourselves with their idols. I am Yahweh, your God. Walk in my statutes. Keep my ordinances and do them. Make my Sabbaths holy. They shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Yahweh, your God. But the children rebelled against me. They didn't walk in my statutes and didn't keep my ordinances to do them, which if a man does, he shall live in them. They profaned my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my wrath on them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and worked for my name's sake, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations in whose sight I brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the nations and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my ordinances but had rejected my statutes and had profaned my Sabbaths and their eyes were after their father's idols. Moreover, also I gave them statutes that were not good and ordinances in which they should not live. I polluted them in their own gifts, in that they caused all that opens the womb to pass through the fire, that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am Yahweh. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel, and tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, Moreover, in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land which I swore to give to them, then they saw every high hill and every thick tree, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There they also made their pleasant aroma, and there they poured out their drink offerings. Then I said to them, what does the high place where you go mean? So its name is called Bema to this day. Therefore, tell the house of Israel, the Lord Yahweh says, Do you pollute yourselves in the way of your fathers? Do you play the prostitute after their abominations? When you offer your gifts, when you make your sons pass through the fire, do you pollute yourselves with all your idols to this day? Should I be inquired of by you, house of Israel? As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will not be inquired of by you. That which comes into your mind will not be at all, in that you say, We will be as the nations, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh. Surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with wrath poured out, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the peoples, and will gather you out of the countries in which you are scattered with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with wrath poured out. I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face, just as I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, says the Lord Yahweh. I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge out from among you the rebels and those who disobey me. I will bring them out of the land where they live, but they shall not enter into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. As for you, house of Israel, the Lord Yahweh says, Go, everyone serve his idols, and hereafter also, if you will not listen to me. But you shall no more profane my holy name with your gifts and with your idols. For in my holy mountain, 
in the mountain of the height of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. There all the house of Israel, all of them, shall serve me in the land. There I will accept them, and there I will require your offerings and the first fruits of your offerings with all your holy things. I will accept you as a pleasant aroma when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries in which you have been scattered. I will be sanctified in you in the sight of the nations. You will know that I am Yahweh when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country which I swore to give to your fathers. There you will remember your ways and all your deeds in which you have polluted yourselves. Then you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that you have committed. You will know that I am Yahweh when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your evil ways, nor according to your corrupt doings, you house of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the south, and preach toward the south, and prophesy against the forest of the field in the south. Tell the forest of the south, Hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will kindle a fire in you, and it will devour every green tree in you, and every dry tree. The burning flame will not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north will be burned by it. All flesh will see that I, Yahweh, have kindled it. It will not be quenched. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, they say of me, isn't he a speaker of parables? Chapter 21 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Jerusalem and preach toward the sanctuaries and prophesy against the land of Israel. Tell the land of Israel, Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, and will draw my sword out of its sheath, and will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from you the righteous and the wicked, therefore my sword will go out of its sheath against all flesh, from the south to the north, all flesh will know that I, Yahweh, have drawn my sword out of its sheath. It will not return any more. Therefore, sigh, you son of man. You shall sigh before their eyes with a broken heart and with bitterness. It shall be when they ask you, Why do you sigh? That you shall say, Because of the news, for it comes. Every heart will melt, all hands will be feeble, every spirit will faint, and all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it comes, and it shall be done, says the Lord Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Yahweh says, A sword, a sword, it is sharpened and also polished. It is sharpened that it may make a slaughter. It is polished that it may be as lightning. Should we then make mirth? The rod of my son condemns every tree. It is given to be polished that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened. Yes, it is polished to give it into the hand of the killer. Cry and wail, son of man, for it is on my people. It is on all the princes of Israel. They are delivered over to the sword with my people. Therefore, beat your thigh, for there is a trial. What if even the rod that condemns will be no more, says the Lord Yahweh. You, therefore, son of man, prophesy 
and strike your hands together. Let the sword be doubled the third time, the sword of the fatally wounded. It is the sword of the great one who is fatally wounded, which enters into their rooms. I have set the threatening sword against all their gates, that their heart may melt, and their stumblings be multiplied. Ah, it is made as lightning, it is pointed for slaughter. Gather yourselves together, go to the right, set yourselves in array, go to the left. Wherever your face is set, I will also strike my hands together, and I will cause my wrath to rest. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Yahweh's word came to me again, saying, Also, you son of man, appoint two ways that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. They both will come out of one land and mark out a place. Mark it out at the head of the way to the city. You shall appoint a way for the sword to come to Rabbah of the children of Ammon and to Judah in Jerusalem, the fortified. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination. He shook the arrows back and forth. He consulted the teraphim. He looked in the liver. In his right hand was the lot for Jerusalem, to set battering rams, to open the mouth in the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to set battering rams against the gates, to cast up mounds, and to build forts. It will be to them as a false divination in their sight, who have sworn oaths to them. But he brings iniquity to memory, that they may be taken. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have caused your iniquity to be remembered, in that your transgressions are uncovered, so that in all your doings your sins appear, because you have come to memory, you will be taken with the hand. You, deadly wounded wicked one, the prince of Israel, whose day has come, in the time of the iniquity of the end, the Lord Yahweh says, Remove the turban and take off the crown. This will not be as it was. Exalt that which is low and humble that which is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. This also will be no more until he comes whose right it is, and I will give it. You, son of man, prophesy and say, the Lord Yahweh says this concerning the children of Ammon and concerning their reproach. A sword, a sword is drawn. It is polished for the slaughter, to cause it to devour, that it may be as lightning, while they see for you false visions, while they divine lies to you, to lay you on the necks of the wicked who are deadly wounded, whose day has come in the time of the iniquity of the end. Cause it to return into its sheath, in the place where you were created, in the land of your birth. I will judge you. I will pour out my indignation on you. I will blow on you with the fire of my wrath. I will deliver you into the hand of brutish men, skillful to destroy. You will be for fuel to the fire. Your blood will be in the middle of the land. You will be remembered no more, for I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Chapter 22 Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, You, son of man, will you judge? Will you judge the bloody city? Then cause her to know all her abominations. You shall say, The Lord Yahweh says, A city that sheds blood within herself, that her time may come, and that makes idols against herself to defile her. You have become guilty in your blood that you have shed, and are defiled in your idols which you have made. You have caused your days to draw near, and have come even to your years. Therefore, 
I have made you a reproach to the nations, and a mocking to all the countries. Those who are near, and those who are far from you, will mock you, you infamous one, full of tumult. Behold, the princes of Israel, everyone according to his power, have been in you to shed blood. In you have they treated father and mother with contempt. Among you they have oppressed the foreigner. In you they have wronged the fatherless and the widow. You have despised many holy things and have profaned my Sabbaths. Slanderous men have been in you to shed blood. In you they have eaten on the mountains. They have committed lewdness among you. In you have they uncovered their father's nakedness. In you have they humbled her who was unclean in her impurity. One has committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. Another in you has humbled his sister, his father's daughter. In you have they taken bribes to shed blood. You have taken interest and increase and you have greedily gained of your neighbors by oppression, and have forgotten me, says the Lord Yahweh. Behold, therefore I have struck my hand at your dishonest gain which you have made, and at your blood which has been within you. Can your heart endure, or can your hands be strong in the days that I will deal with you? I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and will do it, I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you through the countries. I will consume your filthiness out of you. You will be profaned in yourself, in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me, all of them are bronze, tin, iron, and lead in the middle of the furnace. They are the dross of silver. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have all become dross, therefore, behold, I will gather you into the middle of Jerusalem, as they gather silver, bronze, iron, lead, and tin into the middle of the furnace to blow the fire on it to melt it so i will gather you in my anger and in my wrath and i will lay you there and melt you yes i will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath and you will be melted in the middle of it as silver is melted in the middle of the furnace so you will be melted in the middle of it, and you will know that I, Yahweh, have poured out my wrath on you. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, tell her, You are a land that is not cleansed nor rained on in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets within it, like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. They take treasure and precious things. They have made many widows within it. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common. Neither have they caused men to discern between the unclean and the clean and have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths. So I am profaned among them. Her princes within it are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls, that they may get dishonest gain. Her prophets have plastered for them with whitewash, seeing false visions and divining lies to them, saying, The Lord Yahweh says, When Yahweh has not spoken, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery. Yes, they have troubled the poor and needy and have oppressed the foreigner wrongfully. 
I sought for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I would not destroy it. But I found no one. Therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have brought their own way on their heads, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 23 Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. They played the prostitute in Egypt. They played the prostitute in their youth. Their breasts were fondled there, and their youthful nipples were caressed there. Their names were Ohola, the elder, and Oholaba, her sister. They became mine, and they bore sons and daughters. As for their names, Samaria is Ohola, and Jerusalem, Oholaba. Ohola played the prostitute when she was mine. She doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors who were clothed with blue, governors and rulers, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. She gave herself as a prostitute to them, all of them the choicest men of Assyria. She defiled herself with the idols of whoever she lusted after. She hasn't left her prostitution since leaving Egypt. For in her youth they lay with her, they caressed her youthful nipples, and they poured out their prostitution on her. Therefore I delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians, on whom she doted. These uncovered her nakedness, they took her sons and her daughters, and they killed her with the sword. She became a byword among women, for they executed judgments on her. Her sister, Oholaba, saw this, yet she was more corrupt in her lusting than she, and in her prostitution, which was more depraved than the prostitution of her sister. She lusted after the Assyrians, governors and rulers, her neighbors, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. I saw that she was defiled. They both went the same way. She increased her prostitution, for she saw men portrayed on the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with red, dressed with belts on their waists, with flowing turbans on their heads, all of them looking like princes, after the likeness of the Babylonians in Chaldea, the land of their birth. As soon as she saw them, she lusted after them, and sent messengers to them into Chaldea. The Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their prostitution. She was polluted with them, and her soul was alienated from them. So she uncovered her prostitution and uncovered her nakedness. Then my soul was alienated from her, just like my soul was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her prostitution, remembering the days of her youth, in which she had played the prostitute in the land of Egypt. She lusted after their lovers, whose flesh is as the flesh of donkeys, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thus you called to memory the lewdness of your youth, in the caressing of your nipples by the Egyptians because of your youthful breasts. Therefore, O Holaba, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will raise up your lovers against you, from whom your soul is alienated, and I will bring them against you on every side, the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod, Shoah, Koah, 
and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, governors and rulers, princes and men of renown, all of them riding on horses. They will come against you with weapons, chariots and wagons, and with a company of peoples. They will set themselves against you with buckler, shield, and helmet all around. I will commit the judgment to them, and they will judge you according to their judgments. I will set my jealousy against you, and they will deal with you in fury. They will take away your nose and your ears. Your remnant will fall by the sword. They will take your sons and your daughters, and the rest of you will be devoured by the fire. They will also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. Thus I will make your lewdness to cease from you and remove your prostitution from the land of Egypt so that you will not lift up your eyes to them nor remember Egypt any more. For the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will deliver you into the hand of them whom you hate, into the hand of them from whom your soul is alienated. They will deal with you in hatred and will take away all your labor and will leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your prostitution will be uncovered, both your lewdness and your prostitution. These things will be done to you because you have played the prostitute after the nations, and because you are polluted with their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into your hand. The Lord Yahweh says, You will drink of your sister's cup, which is deep and large. You will be ridiculed and held in derision. It contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of your sister Samaria. You will even drink it and drain it out. You will gnaw the broken pieces of it and will tear your breasts. For I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have forgotten me, and cast me behind your back. Therefore, you also bear your lewdness and your prostitution. Yahweh said moreover to me, Son of man, will you judge Ohola and Oholaba? Then declare to them their abominations, for they have committed adultery, and blood is in their hands. They have committed adultery with their idols. They have also caused their sons, whom they bore to me, to pass through the fire to them, to be devoured. Moreover, this they have done to me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day, and have profaned my Sabbaths. For when they had slain their children to their idols, then they came the same day into my sanctuary to profane it. And behold, they have done this in the middle of my house. Furthermore, you sisters have sent for men who come from far away, to whom a messenger was sent. And behold, they came, for whom you washed yourself, painted your eyes, decorated yourself with ornaments, and sat on a stately bed, with a table prepared before it, whereupon you set my incense and my oil. The voice of a multitude, being at ease, was with her. With men of the common sort were brought drunkards from the wilderness, and they put bracelets on their hands, and beautiful crowns on their heads. Then I said of her who was old in adulteries, Now they will play the prostitute with her, and she with them. They went in to her, as they go in to a prostitute. So they went in to Ohola, and to Oholaba, the lewd women. 
Righteous men will judge them with the judgment of adulteresses and with the judgment of women who shed blood, because they are adulteresses, and blood is in their hands. For the Lord Yahweh says, I will bring up a mob against them, and will give them to be tossed back and forth and robbed. The company will stone them with stones, and dispatch them with their swords. They will kill their sons and their daughters, and burn up their houses with fire. Thus I will cause lewdness to cease out of the land, that all women may be taught not to be lewd like you. They will recompense your lewdness on you, and you will bear the sins of your idols. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Yahweh. Chapter 24 Again, in the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, write the name of the day. This same day, the king of Babylon drew close to Jerusalem. This same day, utter a parable to the rebellious house, and tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, Put the cauldron on the fire, put it on, and also pour water into it, gather its pieces into it, even every good piece, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with the choice bones, Take the choice of the flock, and also a pile of wood for the bones under the cauldron. Make it boil well. Yes, let its bones be boiled within it. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the bloody city, to the cauldron whose rust is in it, and whose rust hasn't gone out of it. Take out of it piece after piece. No lot is fallen on it, for her blood is in the middle of her. She set it on the bare rock. She didn't pour it on the ground to cover it with dust, that it may cause wrath to come up to take vengeance. I have set her blood on the bare rock, that it should not be covered. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the bloody city! I also will make the pile great. Heap on the wood, make the fire hot, boil the meat well, make the broth thick, and let the bones be burned. Then set it empty on its coals, that it may be hot, and its bronze may burn and that its filthiness may be molten in it, that its rust may be consumed. She is weary with toil, yet her great rust, rust by fire, doesn't leave her. In your filthiness is lewdness, because I have cleansed you and you weren't cleansed. You won't be cleansed from your filthiness any more, until I have caused my wrath toward you to rest. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. It will happen, and I will do it. I won't go back. I won't spare. I won't repent. According to your ways and according to your doings, they will judge you, says the Lord, Yahweh. Also Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I will take away from you the desire of your eyes with a stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, neither shall your tears run down. Sigh, but not aloud. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your headdress on you, and put your sandals on your feet. Don't cover your lips, and don't eat mourner's bread. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. 
so I did in the morning as I was commanded. The people asked me, Won't you tell us what these things are to us, that you do so? Then I said to them, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Speak to the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the pride of your power, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pities. And your sons and your daughters, whom you have left behind, will fall by the sword. You will do as I have done. You won't cover your lips or eat mourner's bread. Your turbans will be on your heads and your sandals on your feet. You won't mourn or weep, but you will pine away in your iniquities and moan one toward another. Thus Ezekiel will be assigned to you. According to all that he has done, you will do. When this comes, then you will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. You, son of man, Shouldn't it be in the day when I take from them their strength, the joy of their glory, the desire of their eyes, and that whereupon they set their heart, their sons and their daughters, that in that day he who escapes will come to you to cause you to hear it with your ears? In that day your mouth will be opened to him who has escaped, and you will speak and be no more mute. So you will be a sign to them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 25 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward the children of Ammon, and prophesy against them. Tell the children of Ammon, Hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, Because you said, Aha, against my sanctuary, when it was profaned, and against the land of Israel, when it was made desolate, and against the house of Judah, when they went into captivity, Therefore, behold, I will deliver you to the children of the east for a possession. They will set their encampments in you and make their dwellings in you. They will eat your fruit and they will drink your milk. I will make Rabbah a stable for camels and the children of Ammon a resting place for flocks. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. For the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have clapped your hands, stamped with the feet, and rejoiced with all the contempt of your soul against the land of Israel, therefore, behold, I have stretched out my hand on you and will deliver you for a plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the people and I will cause you to perish out of the countries. I will destroy you. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, Because Moab and Seir say, Behold, the house of Judah is like all the nations. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshimoth, Baalmeon, and Kiriathaim, to the children of the east, to go against the children of Ammon, and I will give them for a possession, that the children of Ammon may not be remembered among the nations. I will execute judgments on Moab, then they will know that I am Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh says, Because Edom has dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and has greatly offended and taken revenge on them. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, I will stretch out my hand on Edom, 
and will cut off man and animal from it, and I will make it desolate from Teman. They will fall by the sword, even to Dedan. I will lay my vengeance on Edom by the hand of my people Israel. They will do in Edom according to my anger and according to my wrath. Then they will know my vengeance, says the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, Because the Philistines have taken revenge and have taken vengeance with contempt of soul, to destroy with perpetual hostility. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will stretch out my hand on the Philistines, and I will cut off the Carathites and destroy the remnant of the seacoast. I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes. Then they will know that I am Yahweh when I lay my vengeance on them. Chapter 26 In the eleventh year, in the first of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, because Tyre has said against Jerusalem, Aha, she is broken. She who was the gateway of the peoples has been returned to me. I will be replenished now that she is laid waste. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Tyre, and will cause many nations to come up against you, as the sea causes its waves to come up. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers. I will also scrape her dust from her, and make her a bare rock. She will be a place for the spreading of nets in the middle of the sea, for I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. She will become plunder for the nations. Her daughters who are in the field will be slain with the sword. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. For the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will bring on Tyre Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of kings, from the north, with horses, with chariots, with horsemen, and an army with many people. He will kill your daughters in the field with the sword. He will make forts against you, cast up a mound against you, and raise up the buckler against you. He will set his battering engines against your walls, and with his axes he will break down your towers. By reason of the abundance of his horses, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, of the wagons, and of the chariots when he enters into your gates, as men enter into a city which is broken open. He will tread down all your streets with the hoofs of his horses. He will kill your people with the sword. The pillars of your strength will go down to the ground. They will make a plunder of your riches and make a prey of your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. They will lay your stones, your timber, and your dust in the middle of the waters. I will cause the noise of your songs to cease. The sound of your harps won't be heard any more. I will make you a bare rock. You will be a place for the spreading of nets. You will be built no more. For I, Yahweh, have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to Tyre, Won't the islands shake at the sound of your fall? when the wounded groan, when the slaughter is made within you, then all the princes of the sea will come down from their thrones and lay aside their robes and strip off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground and will tremble every moment and be astonished at you. They will take up a lamentation over you and tell you, how you are destroyed, 
you were inhabited by seafaring men, the renowned city, who was strong in the sea, she and her inhabitants, who caused their terror to be on all who lived there. Now the islands will tremble in the day of your fall. Yes, the islands that are in the sea will be dismayed at your departure. For the Lord Yahweh says, When I make you a desolate city, like the cities that are not inhabited, when I bring up the deep on you, and the great waters cover you, then I will bring you down with those who descend into the pit, to the people of old time, and will make you dwell in the lower parts of the earth, in the places that are desolate of old, with those who go down to the pit, that you be not inhabited, and I will set glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror, and you will no more have any being, though you are sought for, yet you will never be found again, says the Lord, Yahweh. Chapter 27 Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, You, son of man, take up a lamentation over Tyre, and tell Tyre, you who dwell at the entry of the sea, who are the merchant of the peoples to many islands, the Lord Yahweh says, You, Tyre, have said, I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the heart of the seas. Your builders have perfected your beauty. They have made all your planks of cypress trees from cedar. They have taken a cedar from Lebanon to make a mast for you. They have made your oars of the oaks of Bashan. They have made your benches of ivory inlaid in cypress wood from the islands of Kittim. Your sail was of fine linen with embroidered work from Egypt, that it might be to you for a banner. Blue and purple from the islands of Elisha was your awning. The inhabitants of Sidon and Arvad were your roars. Your wise men, Tyre, were in you. They were your pilots the old men of Gebel, and its wise men were your repairers of ship seams in you. All the ships of the sea, with their mariners, were in you to deal in your merchandise. Persia, Lud, and Put were in your army, your men of war. They hung the shield and helmet in you. They showed your beauty. The men of Arvad with your army were on your walls all around, and valiant men were in your towers. They hung their shields on your walls all around. They have perfected your beauty. Tarshish was your merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches. They traded for your wares with silver, iron, tin, and lead. Javan, Tubal, and Meshach were your traders. They traded the persons of men and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. They of the house of Togarma traded for your wares with horses, war horses, and mules. The men of Dedan traded with you. Many islands were the market of your hand. They brought you horns of ivory and ebony in exchange. Syria was your merchant by reason of the multitude of your handiworks. They traded for your wares with emeralds, purple, embroidered work, fine linen, coral, and rubies. Judah and the land of Israel were your traders. They traded wheat of minneth, confections, honey, oil, and balm for your merchandise. Damascus was your merchant for the multitude of your handiworks, by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches, with the wine of Helbun and white wool. Vedan and Javan traded with yarn for your wares. Bright iron, Cassia, and Calamus were among your merchandise. Dedan was your trafficker in precious cloths for riding. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar were the merchants of your hand, in lambs, rams, and goats, 
in these they were your merchants. The traders of Sheba and Rehama were your traders. They traded for your wares with the chief of all spices and with all precious stones and gold. Haran, Cana, and Eden, the traders of Sheba, Asher, and Kilmad were your traders. These were your traders in choice wares, in wrappings of blue and embroidered work, and in chests of rich clothing, bound with cords and made of cedar among your merchandise. The ships of Tarshish were your caravans for your merchandise. You were replenished and made very glorious in the heart of the seas. Your roars have brought you into great waters. The east wind has broken you in the heart of the seas. Your riches, your wares, your merchandise, your mariners, your pilots, your repairers of ship seams, the dealers in your merchandise, and all your men of war who are in you, with all your company which is among you, will fall into the heart of the seas in the day of your ruin. At the sound of the cry of your pilots, the pasture lands will shake. All who handle the oars, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea will come down from their ships. They will stand on the land and will cause their voice to be heard over you and will cry bitterly. They will cast up dust on their heads. They will wallow in the ashes. They will make themselves bald for you and clothe themselves with sackcloth. They will weep for you in bitterness of soul with bitter mourning. In their wailing, they will take up a lamentation for you and lament over you, saying, Who is there like Tyre, like her who is brought to silence in the middle of the sea? When your wares went out of the seas, you filled many peoples. You enriched the kings of the earth with the multitude of your riches and of your merchandise. In the time that you were broken by the seas, in the depths of the waters, your merchandise and all your company fell within you. All the inhabitants of the islands are astonished at you, and their kings are horribly afraid. They are troubled in their face. The merchants among the peoples hiss at you. You have become a terror, and you will be no more. Chapter 28 Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, Son of man, tell the prince of Tyre, the Lord Yahweh says, Because your heart is lifted up, and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the middle of the seas. Yet you are man, and not God though you set your heart as the heart of God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that is hidden from you. By your wisdom and by your understanding, you have gotten yourself riches and have gotten gold and silver into your treasures. By your great wisdom and by your trading, you have increased your riches, and your heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Because you have set your heart as the heart of God, therefore, behold, I will bring strangers on you, the terrible of the nations. They will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom. They will defile your brightness, they will bring you down to the pit. You will die the death of those who are slain in the heart of the seas. Will you yet say before him who kills you, I am God? But you are man and not God in the hand of him who wounds you. You will die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, says the Lord. Yahweh. Moreover, 
Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation over the king of Tyre, and tell him, The Lord Yahweh says, You were the seal of full measure, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you, ruby, topaz, emerald, chrysolite, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and beryl. Gold work of tambourines and of pipes was in you. They were prepared in the day that you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Then I set you up on the holy mountain of God, you have walked up and down in the middle of the stones of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. By the abundance of your commerce, your insides were filled with violence, and you have sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as profane out of God's mountain. I have destroyed you, covering cherub, from the middle of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You have corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I have cast you to the ground. I have laid you before kings that they may see you. By the multitude of your iniquities, in the unrighteousness of your commerce, you have profaned your sanctuaries. Therefore, I have brought out a fire from the middle of you. It has devoured you. I have turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all those who see you. All those who know you among the peoples will be astonished at you. You have become a terror, and you will exist no more. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, Set your face toward Sidon, and prophesy against it, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Sidon. I will be glorified among you. Then they will know that I am Yahweh, when I have executed judgments in her, and am sanctified in her. For I will send pestilence into her, and blood into her streets. The wounded will fall within her, with the sword on her, on every side. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. There will be no more a pricking briar to the house of Israel, nor a hurting thorn of any that are around them that scorned them. Then they will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says, When I have gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered, and am sanctified in them in the sight of the nations, then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will dwell in it securely. Yes, they will build houses, plant vineyards, and will dwell securely when I have executed judgments on all those who scorned them all around. Then they will know that I am Yahweh their God. Chapter 29 In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great monster that lies in the middle of his rivers, that has said, my river is my own, and I have made it for myself. 
I will put hooks in your jaws, and I will make the fish of your rivers stick to your scales. I will bring you up out of the middle of your rivers, with all the fish of your rivers which stick to your scales. I'll cast you out into the wilderness, you and all the fish of your rivers. You'll fall on the open field. You won't be brought together or gathered, I have given you for food to the animals of the earth and to the birds of the sky. All the inhabitants of Egypt will know that I am Yahweh, because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you by your hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and paralyzed all of their thighs. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will bring a sword on you, and will cut off man and animal from you. The land of Egypt will be a desolation and a waste. Then they will know that I am Yahweh, because he has said, The river is mine, and I have made it. Therefore, Behold, I am against you and against your rivers. I will make the land of Egypt an utter waste and desolation, from the tower of Savannah even to the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man will pass through it, nor will any animal foot pass through it. It won't be inhabited for forty years. I will make the land of Egypt a desolation in the middle of the countries that are desolate. Her cities among the cities that are laid waste will be a desolation forty years. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. For the Lord Yahweh says, At the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples where they were scattered. I will reverse the captivity of Egypt, and will cause them to return into the land of Pathras, into the land of their birth. They will be a lowly kingdom there. It will be the lowest of the kingdoms. It won't lift itself up above the nations any more. I will diminish them, so that they will no longer rule over the nations. It will no longer be the confidence of the house of Israel bringing iniquity to memory when they turn to look after them. Then they will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. It came to pass in the twenty-seventh year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyre. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder was worn. Yet he had no wages, nor did his army from Tyre, for the service that he had served against it. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he will carry off her multitude, take her plunder, and take her prey. That will be the wages for his army. I have given him the land of Egypt as his payment for which he served, because they worked for me, says the Lord Yahweh. In that day I will cause a horn to sprout for the house of Israel, and I will open your mouth among them then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 30 Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Well, alas for the day, for the day is near, even Yahweh's day is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of the nations. 
A sword will come on Egypt, and anguish will be in Ethiopia when the slain fall in Egypt. They take away her multitude, and her foundations are broken down. Ethiopia, Put, Lud, all the mixed people, Cub, and the children of the land that is allied with them will fall with them by the sword. Yahweh says, They also who uphold Egypt will fall. The pride of her power will come down. They will fall by the sword in it. From the tower of Savina, says the Lord Yahweh, they will be desolate in the middle of the countries that are desolate. Her cities will be among the cities that are wasted. They will know that I am Yahweh when I have set a fire in Egypt and all her helpers are destroyed. In that day, messengers will go out from before me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. There will be anguish on them as in the day of Egypt, for behold, it comes. The Lord Yahweh says, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, he and his people with him. The terrible of the nations will be brought in to destroy the land. They will draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. I will make the rivers dry and will sell the land into the hand of evil men. I will make the land desolate, and all that is therein, by the hand of strangers. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. The Lord Yahweh says, I will also destroy the idols, and I will cause the images to cease from Memphis. There will be no more a prince from the land of Egypt. I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathras desolate, and will set a fire in Zoan, and will execute judgments on No. I will pour my wrath on Sin, the stronghold of Egypt. I will cut off the multitude of No. I will set a fire in Egypt. Sin will be in great anguish. No will be broken up. Memphis will have adversaries in the daytime. The young men of Avon and of Pibesis will fall by the sword. They will go into captivity. At Tehophnehes also, the day will withdraw itself when I break the yokes of Egypt there. The pride of her power will cease in her. As for her, a cloud will cover her and her daughters will go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. In the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Behold, it has not been bound up to apply medicines, to put a bandage to bind it, that it become strong to hold the sword. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, the strong arm, and that which was broken. I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. But I will break the arms of Pharaoh and he will groan before the king of Babylon with the groaning of a mortally wounded man. I will hold up the arms of the king of Babylon, and the arms of Pharaoh 
will fall down. Then they will know that I am Yahweh when I put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he stretches it out on the land of Egypt. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them through the countries. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 31 In the eleventh year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and his multitude, whom are you like in your greatness? Behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and with a forest-like shade, of high stature, and its top was among the thick boughs. The waters nourished it, the deep made it to grow. Its rivers ran all around its plantation and it sent out its channels to all the trees of the field. Therefore its stature was exalted above all the trees of the field, and its boughs were multiplied. Its branches became long by reason of many waters, when it spread them out. All the birds of the sky made their nests in its boughs, under its branches, all the animals of the field gave birth to their young. All great nations lived under its shadow. Thus was it beautiful in its greatness, in the length of its branches, for its root was by many waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide it. The cypress trees were not like its boughs. The pine trees were not as its branches, nor was any tree in the garden of God like it in its beauty. I made it beautiful by the multitude of its branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied it. Therefore, Thus said the Lord Yahweh, Because you are exalted in stature, and he has set his top among the thick boughs, and his heart is lifted up in his height, I will even deliver him into the hand of the Mighty One of the nations. He will surely deal with him. I have driven him out for his wickedness. Strangers, the tyrants of the nations, have cut him off and have left him. His branches have fallen on the mountains and in all the valleys, and his boughs are broken by all the watercourses of the land. All the peoples of the earth have gone down from his shadow and have left him. All the birds of the sky will dwell on his ruin, and all the animals of the field will be on his branches to the end that none of all the trees by the waters exalt themselves in their stature and don't set their top among the thick boughs. Their mighty ones don't stand up on their height, even all who drink water, for they are all delivered to death, to the lower parts of the earth, among the children of men, with those who go down to the pit. The Lord Yahweh says, In the day when he went down to Sheol, I caused a mourning. I covered the deep for him, and I restrained its rivers. The great waters were stopped. I caused Lebanon to mourn for him, and all the trees of the field fainted for him. I made the nations to shake at the sound of his fall when I cast him down to Sheol with those who descend into the pit. All the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water, 
were comforted in the lower parts of the earth. They also went down into Sheol with him, to those who are slain by the sword. Yes, those who were his arm, who lived under his shadow in the middle of the nations. To whom are you thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet you will be brought down with the trees of Eden to the lower parts of the earth. You will lie in the middle of the uncircumcised, with those who are slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 33 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and tell them, when I bring the sword on a land, and the people of the land take a man from among them, and set him for their watchman, if, when he sees the sword come on the land, he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and doesn't heed the warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood, will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and didn't take warning. His blood will be on him. Whereas, if he had heeded the warning, he would have delivered his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and doesn't blow the trumpet, and the people aren't warned, and the sword comes, and takes any person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have set you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word from my mouth, and give them warnings from me. When I tell the wicked, O oh, wicked man, you will surely die, and you don't speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man will die in his iniquity, but I will require his blood at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, and he doesn't turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity but you have delivered your soul. You, son of man, tell the house of Israel, you say this, our transgressions and our sins are on us, and we pine away in them. How then can we live? Tell them, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. For why will you die, house of Israel? You, son of man, tell the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous will not deliver him in the day of his disobedience. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he will not fall by it in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Neither will he who is righteous be able to live by it in the day that he sins. When I tell the righteous that he will surely live, if he trusts in his righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous deeds will be remembered, but he will die in his iniquity that he has committed. Again, when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, if he turns from his sins and does that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that which he had taken by robbery, walk in the statutes of life, committing no iniquity, he will surely live. He will not die. None of his sins that he has committed will be remembered against him. He has done that which is lawful and right. 
he will surely live. Yet the children of your people say, The way of the Lord is not fair. But as for them, their way is not fair. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he will even die therein. When the wicked turns from his wickedness and does that which is lawful and right, he will live by it. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not fair. House of Israel, I will judge every one of you after his ways. In the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, one who had escaped out of Jerusalem came to me, saying, The city has been defeated. Now Yahweh's hand had been on me in the evening before he who had escaped came, and he had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was opened, and I was no longer mute. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, those who inhabit the waste places in the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many. The land is given us for inheritance. Therefore, tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, You eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes to your idols, and shed blood. So should you possess the land? You stand on your sword, you work abomination, and every one of you defiles his neighbor's wife. So should you possess the land? You shall tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, As I live, surely those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword. I will give he who is in the open field to the animals to be devoured, and those who are in the strongholds and in the caves will die of the pestilence. I will make the land a desolation and an astonishment. The pride of her power will cease. The mountains of Israel will be desolate, so that no one will pass through. Then they will know that I am Yahweh when I have made the land a desolation and an astonishment because of all their abominations which they have committed. As for you, son of man, the children of your people talk about you by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak to one another, every one to his brother, saying, Please, come and hear what the word is that comes out from Yahweh. They come to you as the people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but don't do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goes after their gain. Behold, you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear your words, but they don't do them. When this comes to pass, behold, it comes. Then they will know that a prophet has been among them. Chapter 34 Yahweh's word came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and tell them, even the shepherds. The Lord Yahweh says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Shouldn't the shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat. You clothe yourself with the wool. You kill the fatlings, but you don't feed the sheep. You haven't strengthened the diseased. You haven't healed that which was sick. You haven't bound up that which was broken. You haven't brought back that which was driven away. You haven't sought that which was lost, but you have ruled over them with force and with rigor. They were scattered because there was no shepherd. They became food 
to all the animals of the field, and were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and on every high hill. Yes, my sheep were scattered on all the surface of the earth. There was no one who searched or sought. Therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely because my sheep became a prey, and my sheep became food to all the animals of the field. Because there was no shepherd, my shepherds didn't search for my sheep, but the shepherds fed themselves and didn't feed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my sheep at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the sheep. The shepherds won't feed themselves any more. I will deliver my sheep from their mouth, that they may not be food for them. For the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I myself, even I, will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, that are scattered abroad, so I will seek out my sheep. I will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and their fold will be on the mountains of the height of Israel. There they will lie down in a good fold. They will feed on fat pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord Yahweh. I will seek that which was lost, and will bring back that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them in justice. As for you, O my flock, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, the rams and the male goats. Does it seem a small thing to you? to have fed on the good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture, and to have drunk of the clear waters, but must you foul the residue with your feet? As for my sheep, they eat that which you have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which you have fouled with your feet. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says to them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you thrust with side and with shoulder and push all the diseased with your horns until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore I will save my flock, and they will no more be a prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up one shepherd over them, and he will feed them, even my servant David. He will feed them, and he will be their shepherd. I, Yahweh, will be their God, and my servant David, prince among them. I, Yahweh, have spoken it. I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause evil animals to cease out of the land. They will dwell securely in the wilderness, and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places around my hill a blessing. I will cause the shower to come down in its season. There will be showers of blessing. The tree of the field will yield its fruit, and the earth will yield its increase, and they will be secure in their land. Then they will know that I am Yahweh when I have broken the bars of their yoke and have delivered them out of the hand of those who made slaves of them. They will no more be a prey to the nations. 
neither will the animals of the earth devour them, but they will dwell securely, and no one will make them afraid. I will raise up to them a plantation for renown, and they will no more be consumed with famine in the land, and not bear the shame of the nations any more. They will know that I, Yahweh, their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, says the Lord Yahweh. You, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 35 Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir, and prophesy against it, and tell it. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Mount Seir, and I will stretch out my hand against you. I will make you a desolation and an astonishment. I will lay your cities waste, and you will be desolate. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Because you have had a perpetual hostility, and have given over the children of Israel to the power of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time of the iniquity of the end, therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will prepare you for blood, and blood will pursue you. Since you have not hated blood, therefore blood will pursue you. Thus I will make Mount Seir an astonishment and a desolation. I will cut off from it him who passes through and him who returns. I will fill its mountains with its slain. The slain with the sword will fall in your hills and in your valleys, and in all your water courses, I will make you a perpetual desolation, and your cities will not be inhabited. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Because you have said, These two nations and these two countries will be mine, and we will possess it, whereas Yahweh was there. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord Yahweh, I will do according to your anger and according to your envy, which you have shown out of your hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I judge you. You will know that I, Yahweh, have heard all your insults, which you have spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They have been laid desolate. They have been given us to devour. You have magnified yourselves against me with your mouth and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard it. The Lord Yahweh says, When the whole earth rejoices, I will make you desolate, as you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel because it was desolate. So I will do to you. You will be desolate, Mount Seir, and all Edom, even all of it, then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 36 You, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel, and say, You mountains of Israel, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says, because the enemy has said against you, Aha! And the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Because, even because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that you might be a possession to the residue of the nations, and you are taken up in the lips of talkers, and the evil report of the people. Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Yahweh. The Lord Yahweh says to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses 
and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which have become a prey and derision to the residue of the nations that are all around. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Surely in the fire of my jealousy I have spoken against the residue of the nations, and against all Edom, that have appointed my land to themselves for a possession with the joy of all their heart, with despite of soul, to cast it out for a prey. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel, and tell the mountains, the hills, the watercourses, and the valleys. The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my wrath, because you have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, I have sworn, surely the nations that are around you will bear their shame. But you, mountains of Israel, you shall shoot out your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will come to you, and you will be tilled and sown. I will multiply men on you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. The cities will be inhabited, and the waste places will be built. I will multiply man and animal on you. They will increase and be fruitful. I will cause you to be inhabited as you were before and you will do better than at your beginnings. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Yes, I will cause men to walk on you, even my people Israel. They will possess you, and you will be their inheritance, and you will never again bereave them of their children. The Lord Yahweh says, Because they say to you, You are a devourer of men, and have been a bereaver of your nation. Therefore you shall devour men no more, and not bereave your nation any more, says the Lord Yahweh. I won't let you hear the shame of the nations any more. You won't bear the reproach of the peoples any more, and you won't cause your nation to stumble any more, says the Lord Yahweh. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their own land, they defiled it by their ways and by their deeds. Their way before me was as the uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. Therefore I poured out my wrath on them for the blood which they had poured out on the land, and because they had defiled it with their idols, I scattered them among the nations and they were dispersed through the countries. I judged them according to their way and according to their deeds. When they came to the nations where they went, they profaned my holy name, in that men said of them, These are Yahweh's people, and have left his land. But I had respect for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations where they went. Therefore, Tell the house of Israel, the Lord Yahweh says, I don't do this for your sake, house of Israel, but for my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, says the Lord Yahweh, when I am proven holy in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will also give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you 
and cause you to walk in my statutes. You will keep my ordinances and do them. You will dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You will be my people, and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain, and will multiply it, and lay no famine on you. I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that you may receive no more the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways, and your deeds that were not good, and you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. I don't do this for your sake, says the Lord, Yahweh. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and confounded for your ways, house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, In the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the waste places will be built. The land that was desolate will be tilled instead of being a desolation in the sight of all who passed by. They will say, This land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. The waste, desolate, and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. Then the nations that are left around you will know that I, Yahweh, have built the ruined places and planted that which was desolate. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and I will do it. The Lord Yahweh says, For this, moreover, I will be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock, as the flock for sacrifice, as the flock of Jerusalem in her appointed feasts, so the waste cities will be filled with flocks of men. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 37 Yahweh's hand was on me, and he brought me out in Yahweh's spirit, and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and behold, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, Lord Yahweh, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and tell them, you dry bones, hear Yahweh's word. The Lord Yahweh says to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you will live. I will lay sinews on you, and will bring up flesh on you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you will live. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. So I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, there was an earthquake. Then the bones came together, bone to its bone. I saw, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh came up, and skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and tell the wind. The Lord Yahweh says, Come from the four winds, breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are completely cut off. Therefore prophesy and tell them, 
the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. Then I will place you in your own land, and you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it and performed it, says Yahweh. Yahweh's word came again to me, saying, You, son of man, take one stick and write on it, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them for yourself to one another into one stick, that they may become one in your hand. When the children of your people speak to you, saying, Won't you show us what you mean by these? Tell them, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will put them with it, with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick and they will be one in my hand. The sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Say to them, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations where they have gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. I will make them one nation in the land, on the mountains of Israel. One king will be king to them all. They will no longer be two nations. They won't be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. They won't defile themselves anymore with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions but I will save them out of all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. So they will be my people, and I will be their God. My servant David will be king over them. They all will have one shepherd. They will also walk in my ordinances, and observe my statutes, and do them. They will dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, in which your fathers lived. They will dwell therein, they and their children, and their children's children, forever. David, my servant, will be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them, multiply them, and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My tent also will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. The nations will know that I am Yahweh who sanctifies Israel when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. Chapter 38 Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog, of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, I will turn you around 
and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords, Persia, Cush, and Put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, the house of Togarma in the uttermost parts of the north, and all his hordes, even many peoples with you. Be prepared, yes, prepare yourself, you and all your companies who are assembled to you, and be a guard to them. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples on the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste, but it is brought out of the peoples, and they will dwell securely, all of them. You will ascend. You will come like a storm. You will be like a cloud to cover the land, you and all your hordes and many peoples with you. The Lord Yahweh says, It will happen in that day that things will come into your mind, and you will devise an evil plan. You will say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to those who are at rest, who dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take the plunder and to take prey, to turn your hand against the waste places that are inhabited, and against the people who are gathered out of the nations, who have gotten livestock and goods, who dwell in the middle of the earth, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions of it, will ask you, Have you come to take the plunder? Have you assembled your company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods? to take great plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and tell Gog, the Lord Yahweh says, In that day when my people Israel dwells securely, will you not know it? You will come from your place out of the uttermost parts of the north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army, you will come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It will happen in the latter days that I will bring you against my land that the nations may know me when I am sanctified in you, Gog, before their eyes. The Lord Yahweh says, Are you he of whom I spoke in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel? who prophesied in those days for years that I would bring you against them? It will happen in that day when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh, that my wrath will come up into my nostrils. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals of the field, all creeping things who creep on the earth, and all the men who are on the surface of the earth will shake at my presence. Then the mountains will be thrown down, the steep places will fall, and every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him to all my mountains, says the Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will enter into judgment with him, with pestilence and with blood. I will rain on him and on his hordes and on the many peoples who are with him, an overflowing shower with great hailstones, fire and sulfur. 
I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Chapter 39 You, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, The Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around and will lead you on and will cause you to come up from the uttermost parts of the north and I will bring you on to the mountains of Israel. I will strike your bow out of your left hand and will cause your arrows to fall out of your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your hordes and the peoples who are with you. I will give you to the ravenous birds of every sort and to the animals of the field to be devoured. You will fall on the open field, for I have spoken it, says the Lord Yahweh. I will send a fire on Magog and on those who dwell securely in the islands. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. I will make my holy name known among my people Israel. I won't allow my holy name to be profaned any more. Then the nations will know that I am Yahweh, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it comes and it will be done, says the Lord, Yahweh. This is the day about which I have spoken. Those who dwell in the cities of Israel will go out and will make fires of the weapons and burn them, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows, and the arrows, and the war clubs, and the spears, and they will make fires with them for seven years, so that they will take no wood out of the field, and not cut down any out of the forests, for they will make fires with the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them, and rob those who robbed them, says the Lord Yahweh. It will happen in that day that I will give to Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of those who pass through on the east of the sea, and it will stop those who pass through. They will bury Gog and all his multitude there, and they will call it the valley of Haman Gog. The house of Israel will be burying them for seven months, that they may cleanse the land. Yes, all the people of the land will bury them, and they will become famous in the day that I will be glorified, says the Lord, Yahweh. They will set apart men of continual employment who will pass through the land. Those who pass through will go with those who bury those who remain on the surface of the land to cleanse it. After the end of seven months, they will search. Those who pass through the land will pass through. And when anyone sees a man's bone, then he will set up a sign by it, until the undertakers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. Hamona will also be the name of a city. Thus they will cleanse the land. You, son of man, the Lord Yahweh says, Speak to the birds of every sort, and to every animal of the field. Assemble yourselves, and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice on the mountains of Israel, that you may eat meat and drink blood. You shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bulls, all of them fatlings of Bashan. You shall eat fat until you are full, and drink blood until you are drunk of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. You shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men and with all men of war, says the Lord Yahweh. I will set my glory among the nations. Then all the nations will see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I have laid on them. 
so the house of Israel will know that I am Yahweh, their God, from that day and forward. The nations will know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they trespassed against me, and I hid my face from them. So I gave them into the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. I did to them according to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, Now I will reverse the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy on the whole house of Israel. I will be jealous for my holy name. They will bear their shame, and all their trespasses by which they have trespassed against me. When they dwell securely in their land, and no one will make them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, they will know that I am Yahweh their God, in that I caused them to go into captivity among the nations, and have gathered them to their own land. Then I will leave none of them captive any more. I won't hide my face from them any more, for I have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 40 In the twenty-fifth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after that the city was struck, in the same day Yahweh's hand was on me, and he brought me there. In the visions of God, he brought me into the land of Israel and set me down on a very high mountain on which was something like the frame of a city to the south. He brought me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. The man said to me, Son of man, see with your eyes, and hear with your ears, and set your heart on all that I will show you. For you have been brought here, so that I may show them to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. Behold, there was a wall on the outside of the house all around, and in the man's hand a measuring reed, six cubits long, of a cubit and a hand width each. So he measured the thickness of the building, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then he came to the gate which looks toward the east and went up its steps. He measured the threshold of the gate, one reed wide, and the other threshold, one reed wide. Every lodge was one reed long and one reed wide. Between the lodges was five cubits. The threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate toward the house was one reed. He measured also the porch of the gate toward the house, one reed. Then he measured the porch of the gate, eight cubits, and its posts, two cubits. And the porch of the gate was toward the house. The lodges of the gate eastward were three on this side and three on that side. The three of them were of one measure. The posts had one measure on this side and on that side. He measured the width of the opening of the gate, ten cubits, and the length of the gate, thirteen cubits, and a border before the lodges, one cubit on this side, and a border, one cubit on that side, and the lodges, six cubits on this side, and six cubits on that side. He measured the gate from the roof of the one lodge to the roof of the other, a width of twenty-five cubits, door against door. He also made posts, sixty cubits, and the court reached to the posts around the gate. From the forefront of the gate at the entrance to the forefront of the inner porch of the gate were fifty cubits. There were closed windows to the lodges, and to their posts within the gate all around, and likewise to the arches. Windows were around inward. 
Palm trees were on each post. Then he brought me into the outer court. Behold, there were rooms and a pavement made for the court all around. Thirty rooms were on the pavement. The pavement was by the side of the gates, corresponding to the length of the gates, even the lower pavement. Then he measured the width from the forefront of the lower gate to the forefront of the inner court outside, one hundred cubits, both on the east and on the north. He measured the length and width of the gate of the outer court, which faces toward the north. The lodges of it were three on this side and three on that side. Its posts and its arches were the same as the measure of the first gate. Its length was fifty cubits and the width twenty-five cubits. Its windows, its arches, and its palm trees were the same as the measure of the gate which faces toward the east. They went up to it by seven steps. Its arches were before them. There was a gate to the inner court facing the other gate on the north and on the east. He measured one hundred cubits from gate to gate. He led me toward the south, and behold, there was a gate toward the south. He measured its posts and its arches according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around like those windows. The length was fifty cubits, and the width twenty-five cubits. There were seven steps to go up to it, and its arches were before them. It had palm trees, one on this side and another on that side, on its posts. There was a gate to the inner court toward the south. He measured one hundred cubits from gate to gate toward the south. Then he brought me to the inner court by the south gate. He measured the south gate according to these measurements, with its lodges, its posts, and its arches according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around. It was fifty cubits long and twenty-five cubits wide. There were arches all around, twenty-five cubits long and five cubits wide. Its arches were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts. The ascent to it had eight steps. He brought me into the inner court toward the east. He measured the gate according to these measurements, with its lodges, its posts, and its arches, according to these measurements. There were windows in it and in its arches all around. It was fifty cubits long, and twenty-five cubits wide. Its arches were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts on this side and on that side. The ascent to it had eight steps. He brought me to the north gate, and he measured it according to these measurements. Its lodges, its posts, and its arches. There were windows in it all around. The length was fifty cubits and the width twenty-five cubits. Its posts were toward the outer court. Palm trees were on its posts on this side and on that side. The ascent to it had eight steps. A room with its door was by the posts at the gates. They washed the burnt offering there. In the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side on which to kill the burnt offering the sin offering, and the trespass offering. On the one side, outside, as one goes up to the entry of the gate toward the north, were two tables, and on the other side, which belonged to the porch of the gate, were two tables. Four tables were on this side, and four tables on that side, by the side of the gate. Eight tables on which they killed the sacrifices. There were four tables for the burnt offering, of cut stone, a cubit and a half long, and a cubit and a half wide, and one cubit high. They laid the instruments with which they killed the burnt offering and the sacrifice on them. The hooks, a hand with long, were fastened within, all around. The meat of the offering was on the tables. Outside of the inner gate were rooms for the singers in the inner court, which was at the side of the north gate. They faced toward the south. One at the side of the east gate faced toward the north. 
he said to me, This room, which faces toward the south, is for the priests, the keepers of the duty of the house. The room which faces toward the north is for the priests, the keepers of the duty of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who from among the sons of Levi come near to Yahweh to minister to him. He measured the court, one hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits wide, square. The altar was before the house. Then he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch, five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side. The width of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side. The length of the porch was twenty cubits, and the width eleven cubits, even by the steps by which they went up to it. There were pillars by the posts, one on this side and another on that side. Chapter 41 He brought me to the temple and measured the posts six cubits wide on the one side, and six cubits wide on the other side, which was the width of the tent. The width of the entrance was ten cubits, and the sides of the entrance were five cubits on the one side and five cubits on the other side. He measured its length, forty cubits, and the width, twenty cubits. Then he went inward and measured each post of the entrance, two cubits, and the entrance, six cubits, and the width of the entrance, seven cubits. He measured its length, twenty cubits, and the width, twenty cubits, before the temple. He said to me, This is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the width of every side room, four cubits, all around the house on every side. The side rooms were in three stories, one over another, and thirty in order. They entered into the wall, which belonged to the house for the side rooms all around, that they might be supported and not penetrate the wall of the house. The side rooms were wider on the higher levels, because the walls were narrower at the higher levels. Therefore, the width of the house increased upward. And so one went up from the lowest level to the highest through the middle level. I saw also that the house had a raised base all around. The foundations of the side rooms were a full reed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side rooms on the outside, was five cubits. That which was left was the place of the side rooms that belonged to the house. Between the rooms was a width of twenty cubits around the house on every side. The doors of the side rooms were toward an open area that was left, one door toward the north and another door toward the south. The width of the open area was five cubits all around. The building that was before the separate place at the side toward the west was seventy cubits wide and the wall of the building was five cubits thick all around, and its length ninety cubits. So he measured the house, one hundred cubits long, and the separate place, and the building with its walls, one hundred cubits long. Also, the width of the face of the house, and of the separate place toward the east, one hundred cubits. He measured the length of the building before the separate place, which was at its back, and its galleries on the one side and on the other side, one hundred cubits from the inner temple, and the porches of the court, the thresholds, and the closed windows, and the galleries around on their three stories, opposite the threshold, with wood ceilings all around, and from the ground up to the windows. Now the windows were covered to the space above the door, even to the inner house and outside, and by all the wall all around inside and outside, by measure. It was made with cherubim and palm trees. A palm tree was between cherub and cherub, and every cherub had two faces, so that there was the face of a man toward the palm tree on the one side, 
and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made like this through all the house all around. Cherubim and palm trees were made from the ground to above the door. The wall of the temple was like this. As for the temple, the doorposts were squared. As for the face of the sanctuary, its appearance was as the appearance of the temple. The altar was of wood, three cubits high, and its length two cubits. Its corners, its length, and its walls were of wood. He said to me, This is the table that is before Yahweh. The temple and the sanctuary had two doors. The doors had two leaves each, two turning leaves, two for the one door and two leaves for the other. There were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubim and palm trees, like those made on the walls. There was a threshold of wood on the face of the porch outside. There were closed windows and palm trees on the one side, and on the other side, on the sides of the porch. This is how the side rooms of the house and the thresholds were arranged. Chapter 42 Then he brought me out into the outer court, the way toward the north. Then he brought me into the room that was opposite the separate place, and which was opposite the building toward the north. Before the length of one hundred cubits was the north door, and the width was fifty cubits. Opposite the twenty cubits which belonged to the inner court, and opposite the pavement which belonged to the outer court, was gallery against gallery in the third floor. Before the rooms was a walk of ten cubits width, inward, a way of one cubit, and their doors were toward the north. Now the upper rooms were shorter, for the galleries took away from these, more than from the lower and the middle, in the building. For they were in three stories, and they didn't have pillars as the pillars of the courts. Therefore, the uppermost was set back, more than the lowest and the middle from the ground. The wall that was outside by the side of the rooms, toward the outer court before the rooms, its length was fifty cubits. For the length of the rooms that were in the outer court was fifty cubits. Behold, before the temple were one hundred cubits. From under these rooms was the entry on the east side, as one goes into them from the outer court. In the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east, before the separate place, and before the building, there were rooms. The way before them was like the appearance of the rooms which were toward the north. According to their length, so was their width. And all their exits were both according to their fashions, and according to their doors. According to the doors of the rooms that were toward the south was a door at the head of the way, even the way directly before the wall toward the east, as one enters into them. Then he said to me, The north rooms and the south rooms, which are before the separate place, are the holy rooms, where the priests who are near to Yahweh shall eat the most holy things. There they shall lay the most holy things, with the meal offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. For the place is holy. When the priests enter in, then they shall not go out of the holy place into the outer court, but they shall lay their garments in which they minister there, for they are holy. Then they shall put on other garments, and shall approach that which is for the people. Now when he had finished measuring the inner house, he brought me out by the way of the gate which faces toward the east, and measured it all around. He measured on the east side with the measuring reed, five hundred reeds, with the measuring reed all around. He measured on the north side, five hundred reeds, with the measuring reed all around. He measured on the south side, five hundred reeds, with the measuring reed. He turned about to the west side and measured five hundred reeds with the measuring reed. He measured it on the four sides. It had a wall around it, the length five hundred and the width five hundred. 
to make a separation between that which was holy and that which was common. Chapter 43 Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looks toward the east. Behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. It was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Kibar. And I fell on my face. Yahweh's glory came into the house by the way of the gate which faces toward the east. The Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, Yahweh's glory filled the house. I heard one speaking to me out of the house, and a man stood by me. He said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell among the children of Israel forever. The house of Israel will no more defile my holy name. Neither they nor their king by their prostitution, and by the dead bodies of their kings in their high places, in their setting of their threshold by my threshold, and their doorpost beside my doorpost. There was a wall between me and them, and they have defiled my holy name by their abominations which they have committed. Therefore, I have consumed them in my anger, now let them put away their prostitution and the dead bodies of their kings far from me. Then I will dwell among them forever. You, son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. If they are ashamed of all that they have done, Make known to them the form of the house, and its fashion, and its exits, and its entrances, and all its forms, and all its ordinances, and all its forms, and all its laws, and write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form of it, and all its ordinances, and do them. This is the law of the house. On the top of the mountain, the whole limit around it shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. These are the measurements of the altar by cubits. The cubit is a cubit and a hand width. The bottom shall be a cubit and the width a cubit and its border around its edge a span. And this shall be the base of the altar. From the bottom on the ground to the lower edge shall be two cubits, and a width one cubit. And from the lesser ledge to the greater ledge shall be four cubits, and the width a cubit. The upper altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar hearth and upward there shall be four horns, the altar earth shall be twelve cubits long by twelve wide, square in its four sides. The ledge shall be fourteen cubits long by fourteen wide in its four sides, and the border about it shall be half a cubit, and its bottom shall be a cubit around, and its steps shall look toward the east. He said to me, Son of man, the Lord Yahweh says, These are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they make it, to offer burnt offerings on it, and to sprinkle blood on it. You shall give to the Levitical priests, who are of the offspring of Zadok, who are near to me, to minister to me, says the Lord Yahweh, a young bull for a sin offering. You shall take of its blood, and put it on its four horns, and on the four corners of the ledge, and on the border all around. You shall cleanse it, and make atonement for it that way. 
you shall also take the bull of the sin offering, and it shall be burned in the appointed place of the house, outside of the sanctuary. On the second day, you shall offer a male goat without defect for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they cleanse it with the bull. When you have finished cleansing it, you shall offer a young bull without defect, and a ram out of the flock without defect. You shall bring them near to Yahweh, and the priests shall cast salt on them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering to Yahweh. Seven days you shall prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bull and a ram out of the flock without defect. Seven days shall they make atonement for the altar and purify it. So shall they consecrate it. When they have accomplished the days, it shall be that on the eighth day and forward, the priests shall make your burnt offerings on the altar, and your peace offerings. Then I will accept you, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 44 Then he brought me back by the way of the outer gate of the sanctuary, which looks toward the east, and it was shut. Yahweh said to me, This gate shall be shut it shall not be opened no man shall enter in by it for yahweh the god of israel has entered in by it therefore it shall be shut as for the prince he shall sit in it as prince to eat bread before yahweh he shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out the same way then he brought me by the way of the north gate before the house and i looked and behold yahweh's glory filled yahweh's house so i fell on my face yahweh said to me son of man mark well and see with your eyes and hear with your ears all that i tell you concerning all the ordinances of Yahweh's house and all its laws, and mark well the entrance of the house with every exit of the sanctuary. You shall tell the rebellious, even the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, You house of Israel, let that be enough of all your abominations in that you have brought in foreigners, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to profane it, even my house, when you offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant, to add to all your abominations. You have not performed the duty of my holy thing, but you have set performers of my duty in my sanctuary for yourselves. The Lord Yahweh says, No foreigner, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of any foreigners who are among the children of Israel. But the Levites who went far from me when Israel went astray, who went astray from me after their idols, they will bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having oversight at the gates of the house and ministering in the house. They shall kill the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister to them. Because they ministered to them before their idols and became a stumbling block of iniquity to the house of Israel, therefore, I have lifted up my hand against them, says the Lord Yahweh, and they will bear their iniquity. They shall not come near to me to execute the office of priest to me, nor to come near to any of my holy things, to the things that are most holy. But they will bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. 
Yet I will make them performers of the duty of the house, for all its service, and for all that will be done therein. But the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who performed the duty of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me, to minister to me. They shall stand before me, to offer to me the fat and the blood, says the Lord Yahweh. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table, to minister to me, and they shall keep my instruction. It will be that, when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments. No wool shall come on them while they minister in the gates of the inner court, and within. They shall have linen turbans on their heads, and shall have linen trousers on their waists. They shall not clothe themselves with anything that makes them sweat. When they go out into the outer court, even into the outer court to the people, they shall put off their garments in which they minister, and lay them in the holy rooms. They shall put on other garments, that they not sanctify the people with their garments. They shall not shave their heads, or allow their locks to grow long. They shall only cut off the hair of their heads. None of the priests shall drink wine when they enter into the inner court. They shall not take for their wives a widow, or her who is put away, but they shall take virgins of the offspring of the house of Israel, or a widow who is the widow of a priest. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. In a controversy they shall stand to judge, they shall judge it according to my ordinances. They shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed feasts. They shall make my Sabbaths holy. They shall go in to no dead person to defile themselves, but for father, or for mother, or for son, or for daughter, for brother, or for sister who has had no husband they may defile themselves. After he is cleansed, they shall reckon to him seven days. In the day that he goes into the sanctuary, into the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, says the Lord Yahweh. They shall have an inheritance. I am their inheritance, and you shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the meal offering, and the sin offering, and the trespass offering. And every devoted thing in Israel shall be theirs, the first of all the first fruits of everything, and every offering of everything, of all your offerings, shall be for the priest. You shall also give to the priests the first of your dough, to cause a blessing to rest on your house. The priests shall not eat of anything that dies of itself, or is torn, whether it is bird or animal. Chapter 45 Moreover, when you divide by lot the land for inheritance, you shall offer an offering to Yahweh, a holy portion of the land, the length shall be the length of twenty-five thousand reeds, and the width shall be ten thousand. It shall be holy in all its border, all around. Of this there shall be a five hundred by five hundred square for the holy place, and fifty cubits for its pasture lands all around. Of this measure you shall measure a length of twenty-five thousand, and a width of ten thousand. In it shall be the sanctuary, which is most holy. It is a holy portion of the land. It shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, who come near to minister to Yahweh. It shall be a place for their houses, and a holy place for the sanctuary, twenty-five thousand in length, 
and ten thousand in width shall be for the Levites, the ministers of the house, as a possession for themselves, for twenty rooms. You shall appoint the possession of the city five thousand wide and twenty-five thousand long, side by side, with the offering of the holy portion. It shall be for the whole house of Israel. What is for the prince shall be on the one side and on the other side of the holy offering and of the possession of the city, in front of the holy offering and in front of the possession of the city, on the west side westward and on the east side eastward, and in length answerable to one of the portions, from the west border to the east border. In the land it shall be to him for a possession in Israel. My princes shall no more oppress my people, but they shall give the land to the house of Israel according to their tribes. The Lord Yahweh says, Let it suffice you, princes of Israel. Remove violence and plunder, and execute justice and righteousness. Dispossessing my people, says the Lord Yahweh, you shall have just balances, a just ephah, and a just bath. The ephah and the bath shall be of one measure, that the bath may contain one-tenth of a homer, and the ephah one-tenth of a homer. Its measure shall be the same as the homer. The shekel shall be twenty geras, twenty shekels plus twenty-five shekels plus fifteen shekels shall be your mina. This is the offering that you shall offer, the sixth part of an ephah from a homer of wheat. And you shall give the sixth part of an ephah from a homer of barley, and the set portion of oil, of the bath of oil, one-tenth of a bath out of the core, which is ten baths, even a homer. For ten baths are a homer, and one lamb of the flock, out of two hundred from the well-watered pastures of Israel, for a meal offering, and for a burnt offering, and for peace offerings, to make atonement for them, says the Lord Yahweh. All the people of the land shall give to this offering for the prince in Israel. It shall be the prince's part to give the burnt offerings, the meal offerings, and the drink offerings, in the feasts and on the new moons, and on the Sabbaths, in all the appointed feasts of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering, the meal offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offerings, to make atonement for the house of Israel. The Lord Yahweh says, In the first month, in the first day of the month, you shall take a young bull without defect, and you shall cleanse the sanctuary. The priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the house and on the four corners of the ledge of the altar and on the posts of the gate of the inner court. So you shall do on the seventh day of the month for everyone who errs and for him who is simple. So you shall make atonement for the house. In the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, you shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. On that day the prince shall prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bull for a sin offering. The seven days of the feast he shall prepare a burnt offering to Yahweh. Seven bulls and seven rams without defect daily the seven days. And a male goat daily for a sin offering. He shall prepare a meal offering, an ephah for a bull, and an ephah for a ram, and a hen of oil to an ephah. In the seventh month, in the fifteenth day of the month, in the feast, he shall do like that for seven days, according to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to the meal offering, and according to the oil. Chapter 46 The Lord Yahweh says, The gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days. 
But on the Sabbath day it shall be opened, and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. The prince shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate outside, and shall stand by the post of the gate. And the priests shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go out, but the gate shall not be shut until the evening. The people of the land shall worship at the door of that gate before Yahweh on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. The burnt offering that the prince shall offer to Yahweh shall be on the Sabbath day, six lambs without defect, and a ram without defect. And the meal offering shall be an ephah for the ram, and the meal offering for the lambs as he is able to give, and a hen of oil to an ephah. On the day of the new moon it shall be a young bull without defect, and six lambs, and a ram. They shall be without defect. He shall prepare a meal offering, an ephah for the bull, and an ephah for the ram, and for the lambs according as he is able, and a hen of oil to an ephah. When the prince enters, he shall go in by the way of the porch of the gate, and he shall go out by its way. But when the people of the land come before Yahweh in the appointed feasts, he who enters by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate, and he who enters by the way of the south gate shall go out by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by the way of the gate by which he came in, but shall go out straight before him. The prince shall go in with them when they go in. When they go out, he shall go out. In the feasts and in the solemnities, the meal offering shall be an ephah for a bull, and an ephah for a ram, and for the lambs as he is able to give, and a hen of oil to an ephah. When the prince prepares a free will offering, a burnt offering, or peace offerings as a free will offering to Yahweh. One shall open for him the gate that looks toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after his going out, one shall shut the gate. You shall prepare a lamb a year old without defect for a burnt offering to Yahweh daily. Morning by morning you shall prepare it. You shall prepare a meal offering with it, morning by morning, the sixth part of an ephah, and the third part of a hen of oil, to moisten the fine flour, a meal offering to Yahweh continually by a perpetual ordinance. Thus they shall prepare the lamb, the meal offering, and the oil, morning by morning, for a continual burnt offering. The Lord Yahweh says, if the prince gives a gift to any of his sons, it is his inheritance. It shall belong to his sons. It is their possession by inheritance. But if he gives of his inheritance a gift to one of his servants, it shall be his to the year of liberty. Then it shall return to the prince. But as for his inheritance, it shall be for his sons. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance to thrust them out of their possession. He shall give inheritance to his sons out of his own possession, that my people not each be scattered from his possession. Then he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy rooms for the priests, which looked toward the north. Behold, there was a place on the back part westward, he said to me, This is the place where the priests shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering, and where they shall bake the meal offering, that they not bring them out into the outer court to sanctify the people. Then he brought me out into the outer court, and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And behold, in every corner of the court there was a court. In the four corners of the court there were courts enclosed, forty cubits long and thirty wide. 
These four in the corners were the same size. There was a wall around in them, around the four, and boiling places were made under the walls all around. Then he said to me, These are the boiling houses, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. Chapter 47 He brought me back to the door of the house, and behold, waters flowed out from under the threshold of the house, eastward, for the front of the house faced toward the east. The waters came down from underneath, from the right side of the house, on the south of the altar. Then he brought me out by the way of the gate, northward, and led me around by the way outside to the outer gate by the way of the gate that looks toward the east. Behold, waters ran out on the right side. When the man went out eastward with the line in his hand, he measured one thousand cubits, and he caused me to pass through the waters, waters that were to the ankles. Again he measured one thousand, and caused me to pass through the waters, waters that were to the knees. Again he measured one thousand, and caused me to pass through the waters that were to the waist. Afterward he measured one thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass through, for the waters had risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be walked through. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen? Then he brought me, and caused me to return to the bank of the river, now when I had returned, behold, on the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then he said to me, These waters flow out toward the eastern region, and will go down into the Arabah. Then they will go toward the sea, and flow into the sea, which will be made to flow out, and the waters will be healed. It will happen that every living creature which swarms in every place where the rivers come will live. Then there will be a very great multitude of fish, for these waters have come there, and the waters of the sea will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river comes. It will happen that fishermen will stand by it. From in Gedi, even to in Eglium will be a place for the spreading of nets, their fish will be after their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. But the miry places of it and its marshes will not be healed. They will be given up to salt. By the river, on its bank, on this side and on that side, will grow every tree for food, whose leaf won't wither, neither will its fruit fail. It will produce new fruit every month because its waters issue out of the sanctuary. Its fruit will be for food, and its leaf for healing. The Lord Yahweh says, This shall be the border by which you shall divide the land for inheritance according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions. You shall inherit it, one as well as another, for I swore to give it to your fathers. This land will fall to you for inheritance. This shall be the border of the land. On the north side, from the great sea, by the way of Heathland, to the entrance of Zedad, Hamath, Berotha, Sibraim, which is between the border of Damascus and the border of Hamath, Hazarhatakon, which is by the border of Horon. The border from the sea shall be hazar -Enon at the border of Damascus, and on the north, northward, is the border of Hamath. This is the north side. The east side, between Horon and Damascus and Gilead, and the land of Israel, shall be the Jordan. From the north border to the east sea, you shall measure. This is the east side. The south side, southward, shall be from Tamar, as far as the waters of Meribah Kadesh, to the brook, to the great sea. This is the south side southward. The west side shall be the great sea, 
from the south border as far as opposite the entrance of Hamath. This is the west side. So you shall divide this land to yourselves, according to the tribes of Israel. It will happen that you shall divide it by lot, for an inheritance to you and to the aliens who live among you, who will father children among you. Then they shall be to you as the native born among the children of Israel. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. It shall happen that in whatever tribe the stranger lives, there you shall give him his inheritance, says the Lord Yahweh. Chapter 48 now these are the names of the tribes from the north end beside the way of Hethlon to the entrance of Hamath Hazar Enon at the border of Damascus northward beside Hamath and they shall have their sides east and west Dan one portion by the border of Dan from the east side to the west side Asher one portion by the border of Asher, from the east side even to the west side, Naphtali, one portion. By the border of Naphtali, from the east side to the west side, Manasseh, one portion. By the border of Manasseh, from the east side to the west side, Ephraim, one portion. By the border of Ephraim, from the east side, even to the west side, Reuben, one portion. By the border of Reuben, from the east side to the west side, Judah, one portion. By the border of Judah, from the east side to the west side, shall be the offering which you shall offer, 25,000 reeds in width and in length as one of the portions from the east side to the west side, and the sanctuary shall be in the middle of it. The offering that you shall offer to Yahweh shall be 25,000 reeds in length and 10,000 in width. For these, even for the priests, shall be the holy offering. Toward the north, 25,000 in length, and toward the west, 10,000 in width and toward the east, 10,000 in width, and toward the south, 25,000 in length. And the sanctuary of Yahweh shall be in the middle of it. It shall be for the priests who are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, who have kept my instruction, who didn't go astray when the children of Israel went astray, as the Levites went astray. It shall be to them an offering from the offering of the land, a most holy thing by the border of the Levites. Answerable to the border of the priests, the Levites shall have 25,000 in length and 10,000 in width. All the length shall be 25,000 and the width 10,000. They shall sell none of it nor exchange it nor shall the first fruits of the land be alienated, for it is holy to Yahweh. The five thousand that are left in the width in front of the twenty-five thousand shall be for common use, for the city, for dwelling, and for pasture lands, and the city shall be in the middle of it. These shall be its measurements. The north side, four thousand and five hundred, and the south side, 4,500, and on the east side, 4,500, and the west side, 4,500. The city shall have pasture lands. Toward the north, 250, and toward the south, 250, and toward the east, 250, and toward the west, 250. The remainder in the length alongside the holy offering shall be 10,000 eastward and 10,000 westward, and it shall be alongside the holy offering. 
its increase shall be for food to those who labor in the city, those who labor in the city out of all the tribes of Israel shall cultivate it. All the offering shall be a square of 25,000 by 25,000. You shall offer it as a holy offering with the possession of the city. The remainder shall be for the prince. On the one side and on the other of the holy offering and of the possession of the city. In front of the 25,000 of the offering toward the east border, and westward in front of the 25,000 toward the west border, alongside the portions, it shall be for the prince. The holy offering and the sanctuary of the house shall be in the middle of it. Moreover, from the possession of the Levites and from the possession of the city, being in the middle of that which is the prince's, between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin, shall be for the prince. As for the rest of the tribes, from the east side to the west side, Benjamin, one portion. By the border of Benjamin, from the east side to the west side, Simeon, one portion. By the border of Simeon, from the east side to the west side, Issachar, one portion. By the border of Issachar, from the east side to the west side, Zebulon, one portion. By the border of Zebulon, from the east side to the west side, Gad, one portion. By the border of Gad, at the south side southward, the border shall be even from Tamar to the waters of Meribath Kadesh, to the brook, to the great sea. This is the land which you shall divide by lot to the tribes of Israel for inheritance. And these are their several portions, says the Lord Yahweh. These are the exits of the city. On the north side, 4,500 reeds by measure. And the gates of the city shall be named after the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, the gate of Reuben, one the gate of Judah, one, the gate of Levi, one. At the east side, 4,500 reeds and three gates, even the gate of Joseph, one, the gate of Benjamin, one, the gate of Dan, one. At the south side, 4,500 reeds by measure and three gates, the gate of Simeon, one, the gate of Issachar, one. The gate of Zebulun, one. At the west side, 4,500 reeds with their three gates. The gate of Gad, one. The gate of Asher, one. The gate of Naphtali, one. It shall be 18,000 reeds around, and the name of the city from that day shall be Yahweh is there. Daniel Chapter 1 In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, and he carried them into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. He brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. The king spoke to Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring in some of the children of Israel, even of the royal offspring and of the nobles, youths in whom was no defect, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and endowed with knowledge and understanding science and who had the ability to stand in the king's palace, and that he should teach them the learning and the language of the Chaldeans. The king appointed for them a daily portion of the king's dainties, and of the wine which he drank, and that they should be nourished three years, that at its end they should stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, 
Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The prince of the eunuchs gave names to them. To Daniel he gave the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's dainties, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God made Daniel find kindness and compassion in the sight of the prince of the eunuchs. The prince of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king, who has appointed your food and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse looking than the youths who are of your own age? Then you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the prince of the eunuchs had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Test your servants, I beg you, ten days, and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our faces be examined before you, and the face of the youths who eat of the king's dainties. And, as you see, deal with your servants. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days their faces appeared fairer, and they were fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate of the king's dainties. So the steward took away their dainties and the wine that they would drink, and gave them vegetables. Now as for these four youths, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the end of the days which the king had appointed for bringing them in, the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and among them all was found no one like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king, in every matter of wisdom and understanding, concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters who were in all his realm. Daniel continued even to the first year of King Cyrus. Chapter 2 In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, and his spirit was troubled, and his sleep went from him. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be called to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king. The king said to them, I have dreamed a dream and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans spoke to the king in the Syrian language. O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered the Chaldeans, The thing has gone from me. If you don't make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you will be cut in pieces, and your houses will be made a dunghill. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you will receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered the second time and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered, I know of a certainty that you are trying to gain time because you see the thing has gone from me. But if you don't make known to me the dream, there is but one law for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me until the situation changes. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can show the king's matter because no king, lord, or ruler has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or Chaldean. It is a rare thing that the king requires, 
and there is no other who can show it before the king, except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, the king was angry and very furious, and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out, and the wise men were to be slain. They sought Daniel and his companions to be slain. Then Daniel returned answer with counsel and prudence to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He answered Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so urgent from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would appoint a time, and he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his companions would not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision of the night. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, you God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might, and have now made known to me what we desired of you. For you have made known to us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went in and said this to him, Don't destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show to the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said this to him, I have found a man of the children of the captivity of Judah, who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king answered Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen, and its interpretation? Daniel answered before the king, and said, The secret which the king has demanded can't be shown to the king by wise men, enchanters, magicians, or soothsayers. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head on your bed are these. As for you, O king, your thoughts came on your bed, what should happen hereafter, and he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will happen. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have, more than any living, but to the intent that the interpretation may be made known to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, saw, and behold, a great image, this image which was mighty and whose brightness was excellent, stood before you, and its appearance was terrifying. As for this image, its head was of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. You saw until a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet that were of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were broken in pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no place was found for them. The stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell its interpretation before the king. You, O king, are king of kings to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, the strength, and the glory. Wherever the children of men dwell, he has given the animals of the field and the birds of the sky into your hand. 
and has made you rule over them all. You are the head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise that is inferior to you, and another third kingdom of bronze, which will rule over all the earth. The fourth kingdom will be strong as iron, because iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things. And as iron that crushes all these, it will break in pieces and crush. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, it will be a divided kingdom. But there will be in it of the strength of the iron, because you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. So the kingdom will be partly strong and partly broken. Whereas you saw the iron mixed with miry clay, they will mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they won't cling to one another, even as iron does not mix with clay. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, nor will its sovereignty be left to another people. But it will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it will stand forever. Because you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will happen hereafter. The dream is certain, and its interpretation sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an offering and sweet odors to him. The king answered to Daniel and said, Of a truth, your God is the God of gods, and the Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, since you have been able to reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel great, and gave him many great gifts, and made him rule over the whole province of Babylon, and to be chief governor over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel requested of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel was in the king's gate. Chapter 3 Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, whose height was sixty cubits, and its width six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the local governors, the deputies, and the governors, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the local governors, the deputies, and the governors, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald cried aloud, To you! It is commanded, peoples, nations, and languages, that whenever you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Whoever doesn't fall down and worship shall be cast into the middle of a burning fiery furnace the same hour. Therefore, at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and brought accusation against the Jews. They answered Nebuchadnezzar the king, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man that hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music 
shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever doesn't fall down and worship shall be cast into the middle of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not respected you. They don't serve your gods and don't worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered them, Is it on purpose, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you don't serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, whenever you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you don't worship, you shall be cast the same hour into the middle of a burning fiery furnace. Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it happens, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his appearance was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He commanded certain mighty men who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their pants, their tunics, and their mantles, and their other clothes, and were cast into the middle of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound, into the middle of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste. He spoke and said to his counselors, Didn't we cast three men bound into the middle of the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He answered, Look, I see four men loose walking in the middle of the fire, and they are unharmed. The appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace. He spoke and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the middle of the fire, the local governors, the deputies, and the governors, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, that the fire had no power on their bodies, the hair of their head wasn't singed, their pants weren't changed, the smell of fire wasn't even on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and have yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language, which speak anything evil against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other god who is able to deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Chapter 4 Nebuchadnezzar the king 
to all the peoples, nations, and languages who dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked toward me. How great are his signs! How mighty are his wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in, and I told the dream before them, but they didn't make known to me its interpretation. But at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. I told the dream before him, saying, Belteshazzar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and no secret troubles you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen, and its interpretation. Thus were the visions of my head on my bed. I saw, and behold, a tree in the middle of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and was strong, and its height reached to the sky, and its sight to the end of all the earth. The leaves of it were beautiful, and it had much fruit, and in it was food for all. The animals of the field had shade under it, and the birds of the sky lived in its branches and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head on my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from the sky. He cried aloud and said this, Cut down the tree and cut off its branches. Shake off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals get away from under it and the fowls from its branches. Nevertheless, Leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of the sky. Let his portion be with the animals in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let an animal's heart be given to him. Then let seven times pass over him. This sentence is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets up over it the lowest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen, and you, Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation. But you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was stricken mute for a while, and his thoughts troubled him. The king answered, Belteshazzar, don't let the dream or the interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar answered, My lord, May the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation to your adversaries. The tree that you saw, which grew and was strong, whose height reached to the sky and its sight to all the earth, whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit plentiful, and in it was food for all, under which the animals of the field lived and on whose branches the birds of the sky had their habitation. It is you, O king, that have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reaches to the sky and your dominion to the end of the earth. Whereas the king saw a watcher 
and the Holy One coming down from the sky and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it. Nevertheless, leave the stump of its roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of the sky. Let his portion be with the animals of the field until seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and it is the decree of the Most High which has come on my lord the king, that you shall be driven from men, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. You shall be made to eat grass as oxen, and shall be wet with the dew of the sky, and seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever he will. Whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be sure to you. After that you will have known that the heavens do rule. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you, and break off your sins by righteousness, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your tranquility. All this came on the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he was walking in the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon? which I have built for the royal dwelling place, by the might of my power, and for the glory of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, a voice came from the sky, saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. You shall be driven from men, and your dwelling shall be with the animals of the field. You shall be made to eat grass as oxen. Seven times shall pass over you, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever you will. This was fulfilled the same hour on Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men, and ate grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the sky until his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And no one can stop his hand or ask him, What are you doing? At the same time, my understanding returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and brightness returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are truth, and his ways justice, and those who walk in pride he is able to abase. Chapter 5 Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords, and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded that the golden and silver vessels, which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, be brought to him, that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines, might drink from them. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of God's house, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines, drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of bronze, of iron, 
of wood and of stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand came out and wrote near the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. The king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's face was changed in him, and his thoughts troubled him, and the joints of his thighs were loosened, and his knees struck one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing, and couldn't make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, and his face was changed in him, and his lords were perplexed. The queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Don't let your thoughts trouble you, nor let your face be changed. There is a man in your kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods, and in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, your father, yes, the king, your father, made him master of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, because an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of dark sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you that Daniel of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Judah? I have heard of you, that the spirit of the gods is in you, and that light, understanding, and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing, and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. But I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered before the king, Let your gifts be to yourself, and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king, and make known to him the interpretation. You, king, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, the kingdom, and greatness, and glory, and majesty. Because of the greatness that he gave him, all the peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. He killed whom he wanted to, and he kept alive whom he wanted to. He raised up whom he wanted to, and he put down whom he wanted to. But when his heart was lifted up, and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. He was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the animals, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the sky, until he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men, and that he sets up over it whomever he will. You, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this, but have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives and your concubines, 
have drunk wine from them. You have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which don't see or hear or know. And you have not glorified the God in whose hand your breath is, and whose are all your ways. Then the part of the hand was sent from before him, and this writing was inscribed. This is the writing that was inscribed. Mini, mini, tekel, you farsen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mini, God has counted your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you are weighed in the balances and are found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar commanded, and they clothed Daniel with purple, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, Belshazzar the Chaldean king was slain. Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about sixty-two years old. Chapter 6 It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom one hundred twenty local governors, who should be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three presidents, of whom Daniel was one, that these local governors might give account to them and that the king should suffer no loss. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presidents and the local governors, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king sought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the local governors sought to find occasion against Daniel as touching the kingdom, but they could find no occasion or fault because he was faithful. There wasn't any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, We won't find any occasion against this Daniel, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and local governors assembled together to the king and said this to him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the deputies and the local governors, the counselors and the governors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a strong decree that whoever asks a petition of any god or man for thirty days except of you, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which doesn't alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Now his windows were open in his room toward Jerusalem. And he kneeled on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did before. Then these men assembled together and found Daniel making petition and supplication before his God. Then they came near and spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. Haven't you signed a decree that every man who makes a petition to any god or man within thirty days, except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered, This thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which doesn't alter. Then they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, who is of the children of the captivity of Judah, doesn't respect you, O king, nor the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was very displeased and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him and he labored until the going down of the sun to rescue him. Then these men assembled together to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and Persians that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. 
Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. A stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. No musical instruments were brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. When he came near to the den to Daniel, he cried with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths, and they have not hurt me, because as before him innocence was found in me, and also before you, O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. The king commanded, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions mauled them, and broke all their bones in pieces before they came to the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages who dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is that which will not be destroyed. His dominion will be even to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Chapter 7 In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head on his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the sky broke out on the great sea. Four great animals came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched until its wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet as a man. A man's heart was given to it. Behold, there was another animal a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. They said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I saw, and behold, another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The animal also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, there was a fourth animal, awesome and powerful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured in broken pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. It was different from all the animals that were before it. It had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes, like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I watched until thrones were placed, and one who was ancient of days sat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head 
like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were opened. I watched at that time because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke. I watched even until the animal was slain and its body destroyed, and it was given to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the animals, their dominion was taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, there came with the clouds of the sky one like a son of man, and he came even to the Ancient of Days. And they brought him near before him. Dominion was given him, and glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom, that which will not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was grieved within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great animals, which are four, are four kings, who will arise out of the earth, but the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth animal, which was different from all of them, exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron, and its nails of bronze which devoured, broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and before which three fell, even that horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spoke great things, whose look was more stout than its fellows, I saw, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth animal will be a fourth kingdom on earth, which will be different from all the kingdoms, and will devour the whole earth, and will tread it down, and break it in pieces. As for the ten horns, Ten kings will arise out of this kingdom. Another will arise after them, and he will be different from the former. And he will put down three kings. He will speak words against the Most High, and will wear out the saints of the Most High. He will plan to change the times and the law, and they will be given into his hand until a time and times and half a time. But the judgment will be set, and they will take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it to the end. The kingdom and the dominion, and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole sky, will be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions will serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts much troubled me, and my face was changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Chapter 8 In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, even to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. I saw the vision. Now it was so that when I saw, I was in the citadel of Susa, which is in the province of Elam. I saw in the vision, and I was by the river Uli. Then I lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. The two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, 
and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward. No animals could stand before him. There wasn't any who could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and magnified himself. As I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west over the surface of the whole earth and didn't touch the ground. The goat had a notable horn between his eyes. He came to the ram that had the two horns, which I saw standing before the river, and ran on him in the fury of his power. I saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with anger against him, and struck the ram, and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and trampled on him. There was no one who could deliver the ram out of his hand. The male goat magnified himself exceedingly. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and instead of it, there came up four notable horns toward the four winds of the sky. Out of one of them came out a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east and toward the glorious land. It grew great, even to the army of the sky, and it cast down some of the army and of the stars to the ground and trampled on them. Yes, it magnified itself, even to the prince of the army, and it took away from him the continual burnt offering, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The army was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through disobedience. It cast down truth to the ground, and it did its pleasure and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who spoke, How long will the vision about the continual burnt offering and the disobedience that makes desolate to give both the sanctuary and the army to be trodden underfoot be? He said to me, to two thousand and three hundred evenings and mornings. Then the sanctuary will be cleansed. When I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. Then, behold, there stood before me something like the appearance of a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, which called and said, Gabriel! Make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, for the vision belongs to the time of the end. Now as he was speaking with me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright. He said, Behold, I will make you know what will be in the latter time of the indignation, for it belongs to the appointed time of the end. The ram which you saw, that had the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. The rough male goat is the king of Greece. The great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. As for that which was broken, in the place where four stood up. Four kingdoms will stand up out of the nation, but not with his power. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have come to the full, a king of fierce face and understanding dark sentences will stand up. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. He will destroy awesomely, and will prosper in what he does. He will destroy the mighty ones and the holy people. Through his policy, he will cause deceit to prosper in his hand. He will magnify himself in his heart, and he will destroy many in their security. He will also stand up against the prince of princes, but he will be broken without hand. The vision of the evenings and mornings which have been told is true. But seal up the vision, for it belongs to many days to come. I, Daniel, fainted 
and was sick for some days. Then I rose up and did the king's business. I wondered at the vision, but no one understood it. Chapter 9 In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the offspring of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years about which Yahweh's word came to Jeremiah the prophet for the accomplishing of the desolations of Jerusalem, even seventy years. I set my face to the Lord God to seek by prayer and petitions with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to Yahweh my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and have dealt perversely and have done wickedly and have rebelled, even turning aside from your precepts and from your ordinances. We haven't listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us confusion of face, as it is today, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel, who are near and who are far off, through all the countries where you have driven them, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against you. Lord, to us belongs confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. We haven't obeyed Yahweh, our God's voice, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel have transgressed your law, turning aside, that they should not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has been poured out on us, for we have sinned against him. He has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us, and against our judges who judged us by bringing on us a great evil, for under the whole sky such has not been done as has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come on us. Yet we have not entreated the favor of Yahweh our God, that we should turn from our iniquities and have discernment in your truth. Therefore Yahweh has watched over the evil and brought it on us. For Yahweh, our God, is righteous in all his works, which he does, and we have not obeyed his voice. Now, Lord, our God, who has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand, and have gotten yourself renowned as it is today, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Lord, according to all your righteousness, let your anger and please let your wrath be turned away from your city Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all who are around us. Now, therefore, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his petitions, and cause your face to shine on your sanctuary that is desolate, for the Lord's sake, my God, turn your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our petitions before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercy's sake. Lord, hear. Lord, forgive. Lord, listen and do. Don't defer for your own sake, my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. 
while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before Yahweh my God for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening offering. He instructed me and talked with me and said, Daniel, I have now come to give you wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your petitions, the commandment went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed on your people and on your holy city to finish disobedience and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the Most Holy. Know therefore, and discern, that from the going out of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem to the Anointed One, the Prince, will be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It will be built again, with street and moat, even in troubled times. After the sixty-two weeks, the Anointed One will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the Prince who come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end will be with a flood, and war will be even to the end. Desolations are determined. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week. In the middle of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease. On the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, and even to the full end, and that determined, wrath will be poured out on the desolate. Chapter 10 In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true, even a great warfare. He understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three whole weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. No meat or wine came into my mouth. I didn't anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. In the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittakel, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man clothed in linen, whose thighs were adorned with pure gold of euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as flaming torches. His arms and his feet were like burnished bronze. The voice of his words was like the voice of a multitude. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me didn't see the vision. But a great quaking fell on them, and they fled to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision. No strength remained in me, for my face grew deathly pale and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words. When I heard the voice of his words, then I fell into a deep sleep on my face, with my face toward the ground. Behold, a hand touched me, which set me on my knees and on the palms of my hands. He said to me, Daniel, you greatly beloved man, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you now. When he had spoken this word to me, I stood, trembling. Then he said to me, Don't be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I have come for your words' sake, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But behold, Michael, 
one of the chief princes, came to help me, because I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is yet for many days. When he had spoken these words to me, I set my face toward the ground and was mute. Behold, one in the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke and said to him who stood before me, My Lord, by reason of the vision, my sorrows have overtaken me, and I retain no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me, immediately there remained no strength in me. There was no breath left in me. Then one, like the appearance of a man, touched me again, and he strengthened me. He said, Greatly beloved man, don't be afraid. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. When I go out, behold, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you that which is inscribed in the writing of truth. There is no one who holds with me against these but Michael, your prince. Chapter 11 As for me, in the first year of Darius the Mede, I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. Now I will show you the truth. Behold. Three more kings will stand up in Persia, and the fourth will be far richer than all of them. When he has grown strong through his riches, he will stir up all against the realm of Greece. A mighty king will stand up, who will rule with great dominion, and do according to his will. When he stands up, his kingdom will be broken and will be divided toward the four winds of the sky, but not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, with which he ruled, for his kingdom will be plucked up, even for others besides these. The king of the south will be strong. One of his princes will become stronger than him, and have dominion. His dominion will be a great dominion, at the end of years, they will join themselves together, and the daughter of the king of the south will come to the king of the north to make an agreement, but she will not retain the strength of her arm. He will also not stand, nor will his arm, but she will be given up with those who brought her, and he who became the father of her, and he who strengthened her in those times. But out of a shoot from her roots, one will stand up in his place, who will come to the army, and will enter into the fortress of the king of the north, and will deal against them, and will prevail. He will also carry their gods, with their molten images, and with their goodly vessels of silver and of gold, captive into Egypt. He will refrain some years from the king of the north. He will come into the realm of the king of the south, but he will return into his own land. His sons will wage war and will assemble a multitude of great forces, which will come on and overflow and pass through. They will return and wage war, even to his fortress. The king of the south will be moved with anger, and will come out and fight with him, even with the king of the north. He will send out a great multitude, and the multitude will be given into his hand. The multitude will be lifted up, and his heart will be exalted. He will cast down tens of thousands, but he won't prevail. 
the king of the north will return, and will send out a multitude greater than the former. He will come on at the end of the times, even of years, with a great army and with much substance. In those times, many will stand up against the king of the south. Also, the children of the violent among your people will lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they will fall. So the king of the north will come and cast up a mound and take a well-fortified city. The forces of the south won't stand, neither will his chosen people, neither will there be any strength to stand. But he who comes against him will do according to his own will and no one will stand before him. He will stand in the glorious land, and destruction will be in his hand. He will set his face to come with the strength of his whole kingdom, and with him equitable conditions. He will perform them. He will give him the daughter of women to corrupt her, but she will not stand and won't be for him. After this, he will turn his face to the islands and will take many. But a prince will cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Yes, moreover, he will cause his reproach to turn on him. Then he will turn his face toward the fortresses of his own land. But he will stumble and fall and won't be found. Then, one who will cause a tax collector to pass through the kingdom, to maintain its glory, will stand up in his place. But within few days, he shall be destroyed, not in anger and not in battle. In his place, a contemptible person will stand up, to whom they had not given the honor of the kingdom. But he will come in time of security, and will obtain the kingdom by flatteries. The overwhelming forces will be overwhelmed from before him, and will be broken. Yes, also the prince of the covenant. After the treaty made with him, he will work deceitfully, for he will come up, and will become strong with a small people. In time of security, he will come, even on the fattest places of the province. He will do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He will scatter among them prey, plunder, and substance. Yes, he will devise his plans against the strongholds, even for a time. He will stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, with a great army, and the king of the south will wage war in battle with an exceedingly great and mighty army, but he won't stand, for they will devise plans against him. Yes, those who eat of his dainties will destroy him, and his army will be swept away. Many will fall down slain. As for both these kings, their hearts will be to do mischief, and they will speak lies at one table. But it won't prosper, for the end will still be at the appointed time. Then he will return into his land with great wealth. His heart will be against the Holy Covenant. He will take action and return to his own land. He will return at the appointed time and come into the south but it won't be in the latter time as it was in the former, for ships of Kittim will come against him. Therefore, he will be grieved and will return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant and will take action. He will even return and have regard to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Forces will stand on his part and they will profane the sanctuary, even the fortress, and will take away the continual burnt offering. 
Then they will set up the abomination that makes desolate. He will corrupt those who do wickedly against the covenant by flatteries. But the people who know their God will be strong and take action. Those who are wise among the people will instruct many, yet they will fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by plunder many days. Now when they fall, they will be helped with a little help. But many will join themselves to them with flatteries. Some of those who are wise will fall to refine them, and to purify, and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for the time appointed. The king will do according to his will. He will exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and will speak marvelous things against the god of gods. He will prosper until the indignation is accomplished, for that which is determined will be done. He won't regard the gods of his fathers or the desire of women or regard any god. For he will magnify himself above all, but in his place he will honor the god of fortresses. He will honor a god whom his fathers didn't know, with gold, silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. He will deal with the strongest fortresses by the help of a foreign god. He will increase with glory whoever acknowledges him. He will cause them to rule over many, and will divide the land for a price. At the time of the end, the king of the south will contend with him, and the king of the north will come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. He will enter into the countries, and will overflow and pass through. He will enter also into the glorious land, and many countries will be overthrown, but these will be delivered out of his hand. Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He will also stretch out his hand on the countries. The land of Egypt won't escape, but he will have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. The Libyans and the Ethiopians will be at his steps, but news out of the east and out of the north will trouble him, and he will go out with great fury to destroy and utterly to sweep away many. He will plant the tents of his palace between the sea and the glorious holy mountain, yet he will come to his end and no one will help him. Chapter 12 At that time, Michael will stand up, the great prince who stands for the children of your people, and there will be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. At that time, your people will be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the book, many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth, will awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine as the brightness of the expanse. Those who turn many to righteousness will shine as the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many will run back and forth, and knowledge will be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others stood, one on the river bank on this side, and the other on the river bank on that side. One said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. How long will it be to the end of these wonders? 
I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives for ever that it will be for a time, times, and a half and when they have finished breaking in pieces the power of the holy people, all these things will be finished. I heard, but I didn't understand. Then I said, My Lord, what will be the outcome of these things? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will purify themselves, and make themselves white, and be refined. But the wicked will do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. But those who are wise will understand. From the time that the continual burnt offering is taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there will be one thousand two hundred ninety days blessed is he who waits and comes to the one thousand three hundred thirty five days but go your way until the end for you will rest and will stand in your inheritance at the end of the days hosea chapter one Yahweh's word that came to Hosea, the son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When Yahweh spoke at first by Hosea, Yahweh said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of prostitution, and children of unfaithfulness, for the land commits great adultery, forsaking Yahweh. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblium, and she conceived and bore him a son. Yahweh said to him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel on the house of Jehu, and will cause the kingdom of the house of Israel to cease. It will happen in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then he said to him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel that I should in any way pardon them. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and will save them by Yahweh their God, and will not save them by bow, sword, battle, horses, or horsemen. Now when she had weaned Loruhama, she conceived and bore a son. He said, Call his name. Lo am I, for you are not my people, and I will not be yours. Yet the number of the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea, which can't be measured or counted. And it will come to pass that, in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God the children of Judah and the children of Israel will be gathered together and they will appoint themselves one head and will go up from the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. Chapter 2 Say to your brothers, my people, and to your sisters, my loved ones, Contend with your mother, contend, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. And let her put away her prostitution from her face, and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked, and make her bare as in the day that she was born, 
and make her like a wilderness, and set her like a dry land, and kill her with thirst. Indeed, on her children I will have no mercy, for they are children of unfaithfulness. For their mother has played the prostitute. She who conceived them has done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers, who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns, and I will build a wall against her, that she can't find her way. She will follow after her lovers, but she won't overtake them, and she will seek them, but won't find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. For she didn't know that I gave her the grain, the new wine, and the oil, and multiplied to her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. Therefore I will take back my grain in its time, and my new wine in its season, and will pluck away my wool and my flax, which should have covered her nakedness. Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one will deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her celebrations to cease, her feasts, her new moons, her sabbaths, and all her solemn assemblies. I will lay waste her vines and her fig trees, about which she has said, These are my wages that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the animals of the field shall eat them. I will visit on her the days of the bales, to which she burned incense, when she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels, and went after her lovers, and forgot me, says Yahweh. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and bring her into the wilderness, and speak tenderly to her. I will give her vineyards from there, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope, and she will respond there, as in the days of her youth, and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. It will be in that day, says Yahweh, that you will call me my husband, and no longer call me my master, for I will take away the names of the Baals out of her mouth, and they will no longer be mentioned by name. In that day I will make a covenant for them with the animals of the field, and with the birds of the sky, and with the creeping things of the ground, I will break the bow, the sword, and the battle out of the land, and will make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness, and in compassion. I will even betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know Yahweh. It will happen in that day. I will respond says Yahweh, I will respond to the heavens, and they will respond to the earth, and the earth will respond to the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will sow her to me in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy, and I will tell those who were not my people, you are my people, and they will say, my God. Chapter 3 Yahweh said to me, Go again. Love a woman loved by another, and an adulteress, even as Yahweh loves the children of Israel, though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins. So I bought her for myself, for fifteen pieces of silver, and a homer and a half of barley. I said to her, You shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the prostitute, and you shall not be with any other man. I will also be so toward you. For the children of Israel shall live many days without king, and without prince, and without sacrifice, and without sacred stone, and without ephod or idols. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek Yahweh their God and David their king 
and shall come with trembling to Yahweh and to his blessings in the last days. Chapter 4 Hear Yahweh's word, you children of Israel, for Yahweh has a charge against the inhabitants of the land. Indeed, there is no truth, nor goodness, nor knowledge of God in the land. There is cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break boundaries, and bloodshed causes bloodshed. Therefore, the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells in it will waste away with all living things in her, even the animals of the field and the birds of the sky. Yes, the fish of the sea also die. Yet let no man bring a charge, neither let any man accuse. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. You will stumble in the day, and the prophet will also stumble with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you may be no priest to me. Because you have forgotten your God's law, I will also forget your children. As they were multiplied, so they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They feed on the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. It will be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways, and will repay them for their deeds. They will eat and not have enough. They will play the prostitute, and will not increase, because they have abandoned the giving to Yahweh. Prostitution, wine, and new wine take away understanding. My people consult with their wooden idol and answer to a stick of wood. Indeed, the spirit of prostitution has led them astray, and they have been unfaithful to their God. They sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense on the hills, under oaks and poplars and terebinks, because its shade is good. Therefore, your daughters play the prostitute and your brides commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they play the prostitute, nor your brides when they commit adultery, because the men consort with prostitutes, and they sacrifice with the shrine prostitutes. So the people without understanding will come to ruin. Though you, Israel, play the prostitute, yet don't let Judah offend, and don't come to Gilgal, neither go up to beth Haven, nor swear as Yahweh lives. For Israel has behaved extremely stubbornly, like a stubborn heifer. Then how will Yahweh feed them like a lamb in a meadow? Ephraim is joined to idols. Leave him alone. Their drink has become sour. They play the prostitute continually. Her rulers dearly love their shameful way. The wind has wrapped her up in its wings, and they shall be disappointed because of their sacrifices. Chapter 5 Listen to this, you priests. Listen, house of Israel, and give ear, house of the king. For the judgment is against you, for you have been a snare at Mizpah, and a net spread on Tabor. The rebels are deep in slaughter, but I discipline all of them. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hidden from me. For now, Ephraim, you have played the prostitute. Israel is defiled. Their deeds won't allow them to turn to their God, for the spirit of prostitution is within them, and they don't know Yahweh. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. Therefore, Israel and Ephraim will stumble in their iniquity. Judah also will stumble with them. They will go with their flocks and with their herds to seek Yahweh, but they won't find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. They are unfaithful to Yahweh, 
for they have borne illegitimate children. Now the new moon will devour them with their fields. Blow the cornet in Gibeah and the trumpet in Ramah. Sound a battle cry at beth -Avon. Behind you, Benjamin, Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel, I have made known that which will surely be. The princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. I will pour out my wrath on them like water. Ephraim is oppressed. He is crushed in judgment because he is intent in his pursuit of idols. Therefore, I am to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Judah like rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob, but he is not able to heal you, neither will he cure you of your wound. For I will be to Ephraim like a lion and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I myself will tear in pieces and go away. I will carry off and there will be no one to deliver. I will go and return to my place until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me earnestly. Chapter 6 Come, let's return to Yahweh, for he has torn us to pieces, and he will heal us. He has injured us, and he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, and we will live before him. Let's acknowledge Yahweh. Let's press on to know Yahweh. As surely as the sun rises, Yahweh will appear. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. Ephraim, what shall I do to you? Judah, what shall I do to you? For your love is like a morning cloud, and like the dew that disappears early. Therefore I have cut them to pieces with the prophets. I killed them with the words of my mouth. Your judgments are like a flash of lightning, for I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like Adam, have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Gilead is a city of those who work iniquity. It is stained with blood. As gangs of robbers wait to ambush a man, so the company of priests murder on the path toward Shechem, committing shameful crimes. In the house of Israel, I have seen a horrible thing. There is prostitution in Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you when I restore the fortunes of my people. Chapter 7 When I would heal Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim is uncovered, also the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood and the thief enters in, and the gang of robbers ravages outside. They don't consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own deeds have engulfed them. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness, and the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers. They are burning like an oven that the baker stops stirring from the kneading of the dough until it is leavened. On the day of our king, the princes made themselves sick with the heat of wine. He joined his hand with mockers, for they have prepared their heart like an oven while they lie in wait. Their baker sleeps all the night. In the morning, it burns as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven and devour their judges. All their kings have fallen. There is no one among them who calls to me. Ephraim, 
he mixes himself among the nations. Ephraim is a pancake, not turned over. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he doesn't realize it. Indeed, gray hairs are here and there on him, and he doesn't realize it. The pride of Israel testifies to his face, yet they haven't returned to Yahweh their God, nor sought him for all this. Ephraim is like an easily deceived doe, without understanding. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. When they go, I will spread my net on them. I will bring them down like the birds of the sky. I will chastise them, as their congregation has heard. Woe to them, for they have wandered from me. Destruction to them for they have trespassed against me. Though I would redeem them, yet they have spoken lies against me. They haven't cried to me with their heart, but they howl on their beds. They assemble themselves for grain and new wine. They turn away from me. Though I have taught and strengthened their arms, yet they plot evil against me. They return but not to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Their princes will fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This will be their derision in the land of Egypt. Chapter 8 Put the trumpet to your lips. Something like an eagle is over Yahweh's house, because they have broken my covenant and rebelled against my law. They cry to me, My God, we, Israel, acknowledge you. Israel has cast off that which is good. The enemy will pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I didn't approve. Of their silver and their gold, they have made themselves idols, that they may be cut off. Let Samaria throw out his calf idol. My anger burns against them. How long will it be until they are capable of purity? For this is even from Israel. The workmen made it, and it is no God. Indeed, the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces, for they sow the wind, and they will reap the whirlwind. He has no standing grain. The stalk will yield no head. If it does yield, strangers will swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now they are among the nations like a worthless thing, for they have gone up to Assyria like a wild donkey wandering alone. Ephraim has hired lovers for himself, but although they sold themselves among the nations, I will now gather them. And they began to waste away because of the oppression of the king of mighty ones. Because Ephraim has multiplied altars for sinning, they became for him altars for sinning. I wrote for him the many things of my law, but they were regarded as a strange thing. As for the sacrifices of my offerings, they sacrifice meat and eat it but Yahweh doesn't accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They will return to Egypt, for Israel has forgotten his maker and built palaces, and Judah has multiplied fortified cities. But I will send a fire on his cities, and it will devour its fortresses. Chapter 9 don't rejoice, Israel, to jubilation like the nations, for you were unfaithful to your God. You loved the wages of a prostitute at every grain threshing floor. The threshing floor and the wine press won't feed them, and the new wine will fail her. They won't dwell in Yahweh's land, but Ephraim will return to Egypt, and they will eat unclean food in Assyria. They won't pour out wine offerings to Yahweh, neither will they be pleasing to him. 
Their sacrifices will be to them like the bread of mourners. All who eat of it will be polluted, for their bread will be for their appetite. It will not come into Yahweh's house. What will you do in the day of solemn assembly and in the day of the feast of Yahweh? For behold, they have gone away from destruction. Egypt will gather them up. Memphis will bury them. Nettles will possess their pleasant things of silver. Thorns will be in their tents. The days of visitation have come. The days of reckoning have come. Israel will consider the prophet to be a fool and the man who is inspired to be insane because of the abundance of your sins and because your hostility is great. A prophet watches over Ephraim with my God. A fowler's snare is on all of his paths and hostility in the house of his God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah. He will remember their iniquity. He will punish them for their sins. I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first ripe in the fig tree at its first season. But they came to Baal Peor and consecrated themselves to the shameful thing and became abominable like that which they loved. As for Ephraim, their glory will fly away like a bird. There will be no birth, no one with child, and no conception. Though they bring up their children, yet I will bereave them, so that not a man shall be left. Indeed, woe also to them when I depart from them. I have seen Ephraim, like Tyre, planted in a pleasant place. But Ephraim will bring out his children to the murderer. Give them, Yahweh, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. All their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. Because of the wickedness of their deeds, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. All their princes are rebels. Ephraim is struck. Their root has dried up. They will bear no fruit. Even though they give birth, yet I will kill the beloved ones of their womb. My God will cast them away because they didn't listen to him, and they will be wanderers among the nations. Chapter 10 Israel is a luxuriant vine that produces his fruit. According to the abundance of his fruit, he has multiplied his altars. As their land has prospered, they have adorned their sacred stones, their heart is divided. Now they will be found guilty. He will demolish their altars. He will destroy their sacred stones. Surely now they will say, We have no king, for we don't fear Yahweh. And the king, what can he do for us? They make promises, swearing falsely in making covenants. Therefore, Judgment springs up like poisonous weeds in the furrows of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria will be in terror for the calves of beth -Avon, for its people will mourn over it, along with its priests who rejoiced over it, for its glory because it has departed from it. It also will be carried to Assyria for a present to a great king. Ephraim will receive shame and Israel will be ashamed of his own counsel. Samaria and her king float away like a twig on the water. The high places also of Avon, the sin of Israel, will be destroyed. The thorn and the thistle will come up on their altars. They will tell the mountains, Cover us, and the hills, fall on us. Israel. You have sinned from the days of Gibeah. There they remained. The battle against the children of iniquity doesn't overtake them in Gibeah. When it is my desire, 
I will chastise them, and the nations will be gathered against them when they are bound to their two transgressions. Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh, so I will put a yoke on her beautiful neck. I will set a rider on Ephraim. Judah will plow. Jacob will break his clods. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap according to kindness. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek Yahweh until he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies, for you trusted in your way, in the multitude of your mighty men. Therefore, a battle roar will arise among your people, and all your fortresses will be destroyed, as Shalman destroyed Beth Arbel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces with her children. So Bethel will do to you because of your great wickedness. At daybreak, the king of Israel will be destroyed. Chapter 11 When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. They called to them, so they went from them. They sacrificed to the Baals and burned incense to engraved images. Yet I taught Ephraim to walk. I took them by his arms, but they didn't know that I healed them. I drew them with cords of a man, with ties of love, and I was to them like those who lift up the yoke on their necks. And I bent down to him, and I fed him. They won't return into the land of Egypt, but the Assyrian will be their king because they refused to repent. The sword will fall on their cities and will destroy the bars of their gates and will put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Though they call to the Most High, he certainly won't exalt them. How can I give you up? Ephraim, how can I hand you over, Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is turned within me. My compassion is aroused. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not man, the Holy One among you and I will not come in wrath. They will walk after Yahweh, who will roar like a lion, for he will roar, and the children will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like a bird out of Egypt, and like a dove out of the land of Assyria, and I will settle them in their houses, says Yahweh. Ephraim surrounds me with falsehood, and the house of Israel, with deceit. Judah still strays from God and is unfaithful to the Holy One. Chapter 12 Ephraim feeds on wind and chases the east wind. He continually multiplies lies and desolation. They make a covenant with Assyria and oil is carried into Egypt. Yahweh also has a controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his deeds, he will repay him. In the womb, he took his brother by the heel, and in his manhood, he contended with God. Indeed, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication to him. He found him at Bethel. And there he spoke with us, even Yahweh, the God of armies. Yahweh is his name of renown. Therefore, turn to your God. Keep kindness and justice and wait continually for your God. A merchant has dishonest scales in his hand. He loves to defraud. Ephraim said, Surely I have become rich. I have found myself wealth. 
in all my wealth they won't find in me any iniquity that is sin. But I am Yahweh your God from the land of Egypt. I will yet again make you dwell in tents, as in the days of the solemn feast. I have also spoken to the prophets, and I have multiplied visions, and by the ministry of the prophets I have used parables. If Gilead is wicked, surely they are worthless. In Gilgal they sacrifice bulls. Indeed, their altars are like heaps in the furrows of the field. Jacob fled into the country of Aram, and Israel served to get a wife. And for a wife he tended flocks and herds. By a prophet Yahweh brought Israel up out of Egypt, and by a prophet he was preserved. Ephraim has bitterly provoked anger, therefore his blood will be left on him and his Lord will repay his contempt. Chapter 13 When Ephraim spoke, there was trembling. He exalted himself in Israel, but when he became guilty in Baal, he died. Now they sin more and more, and have made themselves molten images of their silver even idols according to their own understanding, all of them the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, they offer human sacrifice and kiss the calves. Therefore they will be like the morning mist and like the dew that passes away early, like the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the threshing floor and like the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am Yahweh your God from the land of Egypt, and you shall acknowledge no God but me, and besides me there is no Savior. I knew you in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore they have forgotten me. Therefore I am like a lion to them. Like a leopard, I will lurk by the path. I will meet them like a bear that is bereaved of her cubs and will tear the covering of their heart. There I will devour them like a lioness. The wild animal will tear them. You are destroyed, Israel, because you are against me, against your help. Where is your king now that he may save you in all your cities? and your judges, of whom you said, Give me a king and princes. I have given you a king in my anger, and have taken him away in my wrath. The guilt of Ephraim is stored up. His sin is stored up. The sorrows of a travailing woman will come on him. He is an unwise son, for when it is time, he doesn't come to the opening of the womb. I will ransom them from the power of Sheol. I will redeem them from death. Death, where are your plagues? Sheol, where is your destruction? Compassion will be hidden from my eyes. Though he is fruitful among his brothers, an east wind will come, the breath of Yahweh coming up from the wilderness, and his spring will become dry and his fountain will be dried up. He will plunder the storehouse of treasure. Samaria will bear her guilt, for she has rebelled against her God. They will fall by the sword. Their infants will be dashed in pieces, and their pregnant women will be ripped open. Chapter 14 Israel Return to Yahweh your God, for you have fallen because of your sin. Take words with you and return to Yahweh. Tell him, Forgive all our sins and accept that which is good. So we offer our lips like bulls. Assyria can't save us. We won't ride on horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, our gods. For in you 
the fatherless finds mercy. I will heal their waywardness. I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from him. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like the lily and send down his roots like Lebanon. His branches will spread and his beauty will be like the olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. Men will dwell in his shade. They will revive like the grain and blossom like the vine. Their fragrance will be like the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim, what have I to do any more with idols? I answer, and will take care of him. I am like a green cypress tree. From me your fruit is found. Who is wise, that he may understand these things? Who is prudent, that he may know them? For the ways of Yahweh are right, and the righteous walk in them but the rebellious stumble in them. Joel Chapter 1 Yahweh's word that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders, and listen, all you inhabitants of the land. Has this ever happened in your days? or in the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it, and have your children tell their children, and their children, another generation. What the swarming locust has left, the great locust has eaten. What the great locust has left, the grasshopper has eaten. What the grasshopper has left, the caterpillar has eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Well, all you drinkers of wine, because of the sweet wine. For it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation has come up on my land, strong and without number. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he has the fangs of a lioness. He has laid my vine waste and stripped my fig tree. He has stripped its bark and thrown it away. Its branches are made white. Mourn like a virgin dressed in sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meal offering and the drink offering are cut off from Yahweh's house. The priests, Yahweh's ministers, mourn. The field is laid waste. The land mourns, for the grain is destroyed. The new wine has dried up, and the oil languishes. Be confounded, you farmers. Wail, you vineyard keepers, for the wheat and for the barley. For the harvest of the field has perished. The vine has dried up, and the fig tree withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all of the trees of the field, are withered. For joy has withered away from the sons of men. Put on sackcloth and mourn, you priests. Well, you ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God. For the meal offering and the drink offering are withheld from your God's house. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of Yahweh, your God and cry to Yahweh. Alas for the day, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, and it will come as destruction from the Almighty. Isn't the food cut off before our eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God? The seeds rot under their clods. The granaries are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the grain has withered. How the animals groan. The herds of livestock are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yes, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. Yahweh, I cry to you, for the fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. 
and the flame has burned all the trees of the field. Yes, the animals of the field pant to you, for the water brooks have dried up, and the fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Chapter 2 Blow the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh comes, for it is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the dawn spreading on the mountains, a great and strong people. There has never been the like, neither will there be any more after them, even to the years of many generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and no one has escaped them. Their appearance is as the appearance of horses, and they run as horsemen. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains, they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. At their presence, the peoples are in anguish. All faces have grown pale. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like warriors. They each march in his line, and they don't swerve off course. Neither does one jostle another. They march everyone in his path, and they burst through the defenses, and don't break ranks. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. They climb up into the houses. They enter in at the windows like thieves. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. Yahweh thunders his voice before his army, for his forces are very great, for he is strong who obeys his command. For the day of Yahweh is great and very awesome, and who can endure it? Yet even now, says Yahweh, turn to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Tear your heart, and not your garments, and turn to Yahweh your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness, and relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meal offering and a drink offering to Yahweh your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the assembly. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those who nurse from breasts. Let the bridegroom go out of his room and the bride out of her room. Let the priests, the ministers of Yahweh, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare your people, Yahweh, and don't give your heritage to reproach, that the nations should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then Yahweh was jealous for his land, and had pity on his people. Yahweh answered his people, Behold, I will send you grain, new wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied with them and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. But I will remove the northern army far away from you, and will drive it into a barren and desolate land, its front into the eastern sea, and its back into the western sea, and its stench will come up, and its bad smell will rise. Surely he has done great things. Land, don't be afraid. Be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh has done great things. Don't be afraid, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness spring up, for the tree bears its fruit, 
the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your God, for he gives you the early rain in just measure, and he causes the rain to come down for you, the early rain and the latter rain, as before. The threshing floors will be full of wheat, and the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the great locust, the grasshopper, and the caterpillar, my great army, which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied, and will praise the name of Yahweh, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people will never again be disappointed. You will know that I am among Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your God, and there is no one else and my people will never again be disappointed. It will happen afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And also on the servants and on the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my Spirit. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. It will happen that whoever will call on Yahweh's name shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be those who escape, as Yahweh has said, and among the remnant those whom Yahweh calls. Chapter 3 For behold, in those days and in that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will execute judgment on them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have divided my land, and have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a prostitute, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Yes, and what are you to me, Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia? Will you repay me? And if you repay me, I will swiftly and speedily return your repayment on your own head, because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried my finest treasures into your temples, and have sold the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem to the sons of the Greeks, that you may remove them far from their border. Behold, I will stir them up out of the place where you have sold them, and will return your repayment on your own head, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah, and they will sell them to the men of Sheba, to a faraway nation, for Yahweh has spoken it. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Stir up the mighty men. Let all the warriors draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Hurry and come, all you surrounding nations, and gather yourselves together. Cause your mighty ones to come down there, Yahweh. Let the nations arouse themselves, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, tread, for the winepress is full. The vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining. 
Yahweh will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth will shake, but Yahweh will be a refuge to his people and a stronghold to the children of Israel. So you will know that I am Yahweh your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem will be holy, and no strangers will pass through her any more. It will happen in that day that the mountains will drop down sweet wine, the hills will flow with milk, all the brooks of Judah will flow with waters, and a fountain will flow out from Yahweh's house and will water the valley of Shittim. Egypt will be a desolation, and Edom will be a desolate wilderness for the violence done to the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for Yahweh dwells in Zion. Amos Chapter 1 The words of Amos, who was among the herdsmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake, he said, Yahweh will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the pastures of the shepherds will mourn, and the top of Carmel will wither. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Damascus, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with threshing instruments of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazael, and it will devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will break the bar of Damascus, and cut off the inhabitant from the valley of Avon, and him who holds the scepter from the house of Eden. And the people of Syria shall go into captivity to Kir, says Yahweh. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Gaza, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they carried away captive the whole community to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, and it will devour its palaces. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod, and him who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. And I will turn my hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines will perish says the Lord, Yahweh. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Tyre, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they delivered up the whole community to Edom and didn't remember the brotherly covenant. But I will send a fire on the wall of Tyre, and it will devour its palaces. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Edom, Yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because he pursued his brother with the sword and cast off all pity. And his anger raged continually, and he kept his wrath forever. But I will send a fire on Teman, and it will devour the palaces of Basra. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of the children of Ammon, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have ripped open the pregnant women of Gilead, that they may enlarge their border. But I will kindle a fire in the wall of Rabbah, and it will devour its palaces, with shouting in the day of battle, with a storm in the day of the whirlwind. And their king will go into captivity, he and his princes together, says Yahweh. Chapter 2 Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Moab, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because he burned the bones of the king of Edom into lime, 
But I will send a fire on Moab, and it will devour the palaces of Kerioth, and Moab will die with tumult, with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. And I will cut off the judge from among them, and will kill all its princes with him, says Yahweh. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Judah, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have rejected Yahweh's law, and have not kept his statutes, and their lives have led them astray, after which their fathers walked. But I will send a fire on Judah, and it will devour the palaces of Jerusalem. Yahweh says, For three transgressions of Israel, yes, for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have sold the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They trample on the dust of the earth, on the head of the poor, and deny justice to the oppressed. And a man and his father use the same maiden to profane my holy name. And they lay themselves down beside every altar on clothes taken in pledge. And in the house of their God, they drink the wine of those who have been fined. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above, and his roots from beneath. Also, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt, and led you forty years in the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. I raised up some of your sons for prophets, and some of your young men for Nazarites. Isn't this true, you children of Israel? says Yahweh. But you gave the Nazarites wine to drink, and commanded the prophets, saying, Don't prophesy. Behold, I will crush you in your place, as a cart crushes that is full of grain. Flight will perish from the swift and the strong won't strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself, neither shall he stand who handles the bow, and he who is swift of foot won't escape. Neither shall he who rides the horse deliver himself, and he who is courageous among the mighty will flee away naked on that day, says Yahweh. Chapter 3 Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, I have only chosen you of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all of your sins. Do two walk together unless they have agreed? Will a lion roar in the thicket when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out of his den if he has caught nothing? Can a bird fall in a trap on the earth where no snare is set for him? Does a snare spring up from the ground when there is nothing to catch? Does the trumpet alarm sound in a city without the people being afraid? Does evil happen to a city and Yahweh hasn't done it? Surely the Lord Yahweh will do nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared. Who will not fear? The Lord Yahweh has spoken. Who can but prophesy? Proclaim in the palaces at Ashdod, and in the palaces in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria, and see what unrest is in her, and what oppression is among them. Indeed, they don't know to do right, says Yahweh, who hoard plunder and loot in their palaces. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, An adversary will overrun the land, and he will pull down your strongholds, and your fortresses will be plundered. Yahweh says, As the shepherd rescues out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be rescued 
who sit in Samaria on the corner of a couch and on the silken cushions of a bed. Listen and testify against the house of Jacob, says the Lord Yahweh, the God of armies. For in the day that I visit the transgressions of Israel on him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar will be cut off and fall to the ground. I will strike the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory will perish, and the great houses will have an end, says Yahweh. Chapter 4 Listen to this word, you cows of Bashan, who are on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who tell their husbands, Bring us drinks. The Lord Yahweh has sworn by his holiness that, behold, the days shall come on you that they will take you away with hooks and the last of you with fish hooks. You will go out at the breaks in the wall, everyone straight before her, and you will cast yourselves into Harmon, says Yahweh. Go to Bethel and sin, to Gilgal and sin more. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving of that which is leavened, and proclaim free will offerings and brag about them. For this pleases you, you children of Israel, says the Lord Yahweh. I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and lack of bread in every town. Yet you haven't returned to me, says Yahweh. I also have withheld the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain on one city, and caused it not to rain on another city. One place was rained on, and the piece where it didn't rain withered. So two or three cities staggered to one city to drink water, and were not satisfied. Yet you haven't returned to me, says Yahweh. I struck you with blight and mildew many times in your gardens and your vineyards, and the swarming locusts have devoured your fig trees and your olive trees. Yet you haven't returned to me, says Yahweh. I sent plagues among you like I did Egypt. I have slain your young men with the sword and have carried away your horses. And I've filled your nostrils with the stench of your camp, yet you haven't returned to me, says Yahweh. I have overthrown some of you, as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were like a burning stick plucked out of the fire, yet you haven't returned to me, says Yahweh. Therefore, thus I will do to you, Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, Israel. For, behold, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what is his thought, who makes the morning darkness and treads on the high places of the earth. Yahweh, the God of armies, is his name. Chapter 5 Listen to this word, which I take up for a lamentation over you, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel has fallen. She shall rise no more. She is cast down on her land. There is no one to raise her up. For the Lord Yahweh says, The city that went out a thousand shall have a hundred left, and that which went out one hundred shall have ten left to the house of Israel. For Yahweh says to the house of Israel, Seek me, and you will live. But don't seek Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and don't pass to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to nothing. Seek Yahweh, and you will live lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour, and there be no one to quench it in Bethel. 
you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns the shadow of death into the morning and makes the day dark with night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. Yahweh is his name who brings sudden destruction on the strong, so that destruction comes on the fortress. They hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks blamelessly. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take taxes from him of wheat, you have built houses of cut stone, but you will not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses, and how great are your sins, you who afflict the just, who take a bribe, and who turn away the needy in the courts. Therefore, a prudent person keeps silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and so Yahweh, the God of armies, will be with you, as you say. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice in the courts. It may be that Yahweh, the God of armies, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of armies, the Lord, says, Wailing will be in all the wide ways, and they will say in all the streets, Alas, alas! And they will call the farmer to mourning, and those who are skillful in lamentation to wailing. In all vineyards there will be wailing, for I will pass through the middle of you, says Yahweh. Woe to you who desire the day of Yahweh! Why do you long for the day of Yahweh? It is darkness and not light as if a man fled from a lion, and a bear met him. Or he went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a snake bit him. Won't the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I can't stand your solemn assemblies. Yes, Though you offer me your burnt offerings and meal offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat animals. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps. But let justice roll on like rivers, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Did you bring to me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years? house of Israel, you also carried the tent of your king and the shrine of your images, the star of your God, which you made for yourselves. Therefore, I will cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, says Yahweh, whose name is the God of armies. Chapter 6 Woe to those who are at ease in Zion, and to those who are secure on the mountain of Samaria, the notable men of the chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel come. Go to Calneh and see, and from there go to Hamath the great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Are they better than these kingdoms, or is their border greater than your border? those who put far away the evil day and cause the seed of violence to come near, who lie on beds of ivory and stretch themselves on their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the middle of the stall, who strum on the strings of a harp, who invent for themselves instruments of music like David, who drink wine in bowls, and anoint themselves with the best oils. But they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. Therefore, they will now go captive with the first who go captive, and the feasting and lounging will end. 
The Lord Yahweh has sworn by himself, says Yahweh, the God of armies. I abhor the pride of Jacob and detest his fortresses. Therefore, I will deliver up the city with all that is in it. It will happen, if there remain ten men in one house, that they shall die. When a man's relative carries him, even he who burns him, to bring bodies out of the house, and asks him who is in the innermost parts of the house, Is there yet any with you? And he says, No. Then he will say, Hush, indeed we must not mention Yahweh's name. For behold, Yahweh commands, and the great house will be smashed to pieces and the little house into bits. Do horses run on the rocky crags? Does one plow there with oxen? But you have turned justice into poison, and the fruit of righteousness into bitterness. You who rejoice in a thing of nothing, who say, Haven't we taken for ourselves horns by our own strength? For, behold, I will raise up against you a nation, House of Israel, says Yahweh, the God of armies, and they will afflict you from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of the Arabah. Chapter 7 Thus the Lord Yahweh showed me, and behold, he formed locusts in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth, and behold, it was the latter growth after the king's harvest. When they finished eating the grass of the land, then I said, Lord Yahweh, forgive, I beg you. How could Jacob stand, for he is small? Yahweh relented concerning this. It shall not be, says Yahweh. Thus the Lord Yahweh showed me, and behold, the Lord Yahweh called for judgment by fire, and it dried up the great deep and would have devoured the land. Then I said, Lord Yahweh, stop, I beg you. How could Jacob stand, for he is small? Yahweh relented concerning this. This also shall not be, says the Lord Yahweh. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood beside a wall made by a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. Yahweh said to me, Amos, what do you see? I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the middle of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. The high places of Isaac will be desolate. The sanctuaries of Israel will be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the middle of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For Amos says, Jeroboam will die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of his land. Amaziah also said to Amos, You, seer, go, flee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there. But don't prophesy again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a royal house. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a farmer of sycamore figs. And Yahweh took me from following the flock. And Yahweh said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now, therefore, listen to Yahweh's word. You say, Don't prophesy against Israel, and don't preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, Yahweh says, Your wife shall be a prostitute in the city and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be divided by line, and you yourself shall die in a land that is unclean, 
and Israel shall surely be led away captive out of his land. Chapter 8 Thus the Lord Yahweh showed me, Behold, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? I said, A basket of summer fruit. Then Yahweh said to me, The end has come on my people Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. The songs of the temple will be wailing in that day, says the Lord Yahweh. The dead bodies will be many. In every place they will throw them out with silence. Hear this, you who desire to swallow up the needy and cause the poor of the land to fail, saying, When will the new moon be gone, that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may market wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel large, and dealing falsely with balances of deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the sweepings with the wheat, Yahweh has sworn by the pride of Jacob, Surely I will never forget any of their works. Won't the land tremble for this, and every one mourn who dwells in it? Yes, it will rise up holy like the river, and it will be stirred up and sink again like the river of Egypt. It will happen in that day, says the Lord Yahweh, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. And I will make you wear sackcloth on all your bodies, and baldness on every head. I will make it like the mourning for an only son, and its end like a bitter day. Behold, the days come, says the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing Yahweh's words. They will wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They will run back and forth to seek Yahweh's word, and will not find it. In that day, the beautiful virgins and the young men will faint for thirst. Those who swear by the sin of Samaria and say, As your God, Dan, lives, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they will fall and never rise up again. Chapter 9 I saw the Lord standing beside the altar, and he said, Strike the tops of the pillars, that the thresholds may shake, and break them in pieces on the head of all of them, and I will kill the last of them with the sword. There shall not one of them flee away, and there shall not one of them escape. Though they dig into Sheol, there my hand will take them. And though they climb up to heaven, there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out there. And though they be hidden from my sight in the bottom of the sea, there I will command the serpent, and it will bite them. Though they go into captivity before their enemies, there I will command the sword, and it will kill them. I will set my eyes on them for evil and not for good. For the Lord, Yahweh of armies, is he who touches the land, and it melts, and all who dwell in it will mourn, and it will rise up holy like the river, and will sink again like the river of Egypt. It is he who builds his rooms in the heavens, and has founded his vault on the earth. He who calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out on the surface of the earth. Yahweh 
is his name. Are you not like the children of the Ethiopians to me, children of Israel, says Yahweh? Haven't I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kir? Behold, the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are on the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the surface of the earth, except that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says Yahweh. For behold, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all the nations, as grain is sifted in a sieve, yet not the least kernel will fall on the earth. All the sinners of my people will die by the sword, who say, Evil won't overtake nor meet us. In that day I will raise up the tent of David who is fallen, and close up its breaches, and I will raise up its ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the nations who are called by my name, says Yahweh who does this. Behold, the days come, says Yahweh, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the one treading grapes, him who sows seed, and sweet wine will drip from the mountains and flow from the hills. I will bring my people Israel back from captivity, and they will rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them and they will plant vineyards and drink wine from them. They shall also make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they will no more be plucked up out of their land, which I have given them, says Yahweh your God. Obadiah Chapter 1 the vision of Obadiah. This is what the Lord Yahweh says about Edom. We have heard news from Yahweh, and an ambassador is sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let's rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, who says in his heart, Who will bring me down to the ground? Though you mount on high as the eagle, and though your nest is set among the stars, I will bring you down from there, says Yahweh. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, Oh, what disaster awaits you? Wouldn't they only steal until they had enough? If grape pickers came to you, wouldn't they leave some gleaning grapes? How Esau will be ransacked! How his hidden treasures are sought out! All the men of your alliance have brought you on your way, even to the border. The men who were at peace with you have deceived you and prevailed against you. Friends who eat your bread lay a snare under you. There is no understanding in him. Won't I in that day, says Yahweh, destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mountain of Esau? Your mighty men, Teman, will be dismayed, to the end that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter for the violence done to your brother jacob shame will cover you and you will be cut off forever in the day that you stood on the other side in the day that strangers carried away his substance and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots for jerusalem even you were like one of them but don't look down on your brother in the day of his disaster and don't rejoice over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Don't speak proudly in the day of distress. Don't enter into the gate of my people 
in the day of their calamity. Don't look down on their affliction in the day of their calamity. Neither seize their wealth on the day of their calamity. Don't stand in the crossroads to cut off those of his who escape. Don't deliver up those of his who remain in the day of distress. For the day of Yahweh is near all the nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. For as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so will all the nations drink continually. Yes, they will drink, swallow down, and will be as though they had not been. But in Mount Zion, there will be those who escape, and it will be holy. The house of Jacob will possess their possessions. The house of Jacob will be a fire the house of Joseph, a flame, and the house of Esau, for stubble. They will burn among them and devour them. There will not be any remaining to the house of Esau. Indeed, Yahweh has spoken. Those of the south will possess the mountain of Esau, and those of the lowland, the Philistines. They will possess the field of Ephraim, and the field of Samaria. Benjamin will possess Gilead. The captives of this army of the children of Israel, who are among the Canaanites, will possess even to Zarephath. And the captives of Jerusalem, who are in Sepharad, will possess the cities of the Negev. Saviors will go up on Mount Zion to judge the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom will be Yahweh. Jonah Chapter 1 Now Yahweh's word came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid its fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of Yahweh. But Yahweh sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty storm on the sea, so that the ship was likely to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried to his God, they threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone down into the innermost parts of the ship, and he was laying down and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Maybe your God will notice us so that we won't perish. They all said to each other, Come, let's cast lots that we may know who is responsible for this evil that is on us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they asked him, Tell us, please, for whose cause this evil is on us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? Of what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear Yahweh, the God of heaven, who has made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What have you done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of Yahweh because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm to us? For the sea grew more and more stormy. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will be calm for you. For I know that because of me, this great storm is on you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to get them back to the land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more stormy against them. Therefore they cried to Yahweh and said, We beg you, Yahweh, we beg you, don't let us die for this man's life, and don't lay on us innocent blood, for you, Yahweh have done as it pleased you. So they took up Jonah 
and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased its raging. Then the men feared Yahweh exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to Yahweh, and made vows. Yahweh prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter 2 Then Jonah prayed to Yahweh, his God, out of the fish's belly. He said, I called because of my affliction to Yahweh. He answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried. You heard my voice, for you threw me into the depths, in the heart of the seas. The flood was all around me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to the soul. The deep was around me. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth barred me in forever. Yet have you brought up my life from the pit, Yahweh my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered Yahweh. My prayer came into you, into your holy temple. Those who regard lying vanities forsake their own mercy but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed. Salvation belongs to Yahweh. Then Yahweh spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah on the dry land. Chapter 3 Yahweh's word came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise! Go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I give you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to Yahweh's word. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey across. Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried out and said, In forty days! Nineveh will be overthrown. The people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, from their greatest even to their least. The news reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and took off his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He made a proclamation, and published through Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor animal, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let them be covered with sackcloth, both man and animal. And let them cry mightily to God. Yes, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows whether God will not turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we might not perish? God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. God relented of the disaster which he said he would do to them, and he didn't do it. Chapter 4 But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. He prayed to Yahweh and said, Please, Yahweh, wasn't this what I said when I was still in my own country? Therefore I hurried to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and you relent of doing harm. Therefore now, Yahweh, take, I beg you, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Yahweh said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made himself a booth and sat under it in the shade until he might see what would become of the city. 
Yahweh God prepared a vine and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head, to deliver him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the vine. But God prepared a worm at dawn the next day, and it chewed on the vine so that it withered. When the sun arose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he fainted and requested for himself that he might die and said, It is better for me to die than to live. God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the vine? He said, I am right to be angry even to death. Yahweh said, You have been concerned for the vine for which you have not labored neither made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. Shouldn't I be concerned for Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who can't discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much livestock? Micah Chapter 1 Yahweh's word that came to Micah the Morashtite in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear, you peoples, all of you. Listen, O earth, and all that is therein, and let the Lord Yahweh be witness against you the Lord from his holy temple. For, behold, Yahweh comes out of his place and will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. The mountains melt under him and the valleys split apart like wax before the fire, like waters that are poured down a steep place. All this is for the disobedience of Jacob and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the disobedience of Jacob? Isn't it Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Aren't they Jerusalem? Therefore, I will make Samaria like a rubble heap of the field, like places for planting vineyards, and I will pour down its stones into the valley, and I will uncover its foundations. All her idols will be beaten to pieces, and all her temple gifts will be burned with fire, and all her images I will destroy. For of the hire of a prostitute has she gathered them, and to the hire of a prostitute shall they return. For this I will lament and wail. I will go stripped and naked. I will howl like the jackals and moan like the daughters of owls for her wounds are incurable, for it has come even to Judah. It reaches to the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Don't tell it in Gath. Don't weep at all. At beth Ophrah, I have rolled myself in the dust. Pass on, inhabitant of Shaphir, in nakedness and shame. The inhabitant of Zaanan won't come out. The wailing of Beth Ezel will take from you his protection. For the inhabitant of Maroth waits anxiously for good, because evil has come down from Yahweh to the gate of Jerusalem. Harness the chariot to the swift steed, inhabitant of Lachish. She was the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in you. Therefore, you will give a parting gift to Marisheth Gath. The houses of Agzib will be a deceitful thing to the kings of Israel. I will yet bring to you, inhabitant of Marisha, he who is the glory of Israel will come to Adullam. Shave your heads and cut off your hair for the children of your delight. Enlarge your baldness like the vulture for they have gone into captivity from you. 
Chapter 2 Woe to those who devise iniquity and work evil on their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them, and houses and take them away. And they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Therefore Yahweh says, Behold, I am planning against these people a disaster, from which you will not remove your necks, neither will you walk haughtily, for it is an evil time. In that day they will take up a parable against you, and lament with a doleful lamentation, saying, we are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. Indeed, he takes it from me and assigns our fields to traders. Therefore, you will have no one who divides the land by lot in Yahweh's assembly. Don't prophesy. They prophesy. Don't prophesy about these things. Disgrace won't overtake us. Shall it be said, O house of Jacob, is Yahweh's spirit angry? Are these his doings? Don't my words do good to him who walks blamelessly? But lately my people have risen up as an enemy. You strip the robe and clothing from those who pass by without a care, returning from battle. You drive the women of my people out from their pleasant houses, from their young children you take away my blessing forever. Arise and depart, for this is not your resting place, because of uncleanness that destroys, even with a grievous destruction. If a man walking in a spirit of falsehood lies, I will prophesy to you of wine and of strong drink. He would be the prophet of this people. I will surely assemble, Jacob, all of you, I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as a flock in the middle of their pasture. They will swarm with people. He who breaks open the way goes up before them. They break through the gate and go out, and their king passes on before them with Yahweh at their head. Chapter 3 I said, Please listen, you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel. Isn't it for you to know justice? You who hate the good and love the evil, who tear off their skin and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and peel their skin from off them, and break their bones, and chop them in pieces as for the pot, and as meat within the cauldron. Then they will cry to Yahweh, but he will not answer them. Yes, he will hide his face from them at that time, because they made their deeds evil. Yahweh says concerning the prophets who lead my people astray, for those who feed their teeth, they proclaim, peace, and whoever doesn't provide for their mouths, they prepare war against him. Therefore, night is over you with no vision, and it is dark to you that you may not divine, and the sun will go down on the prophets, and the day will be black over them. The seers shall be disappointed, and the diviners confounded. Yes, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am full of power by Yahweh's Spirit, and of judgment, and of might, to declare to Jacob his disobedience, and to Israel his sin. Please listen to this, you heads of the house of Jacob, and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Her leaders judge for bribes 
and her priests teach for a price, and her prophets of it tell fortunes for money. Yet they lean on Yahweh and say, Isn't Yahweh among us? No disaster will come on us. Therefore, Zion, for your sake, will be plowed like a field, and Jerusalem will become heaps of rubble, and the mountain of the temple like the high places of a forest. Chapter 4 But in the latter days it will happen that the mountain of Yahweh's temple will be established on the top of the mountains, and it will be exalted above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let's go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law will go out of Zion and Yahweh's word from Jerusalem, and he will judge between many peoples and will decide concerning strong nations afar off. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war any more. But they will sit, every man, under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the mouth of Yahweh of armies has spoken. Indeed, all the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of Yahweh our God forever and ever. In that day, says Yahweh, I will assemble that which is lame, and I will gather that which is driven away, and that which I have afflicted, and I will make that which was lame a remnant, and that which was cast far off a strong nation. And Yahweh will reign over them on Mount Zion from then on, even forever. You, tower of the flock, the hill of the daughter of Zion, to you it will come. Yes, the former dominion will come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why do you cry out aloud? Is there no king in you? Has your counselor perished, that pains have taken hold of you as of a woman in travail? Be in pain and labor to give birth daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now you will go out of the city, and will dwell in the field, and will come even to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There Yahweh will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Now many nations have assembled against you, that say, Let her be defiled, and let our eye gloat over Zion. But they don't know the thoughts of Yahweh, neither do they understand his counsel. For he has gathered them like the sheaves to a threshing floor. Arise and thresh, daughter of Zion, for I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hooves bronze, and you will beat in pieces many peoples, and I will devote their gain to Yahweh and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. Chapter 5 Now you shall gather yourself in troops, daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. They will strike the judge of Israel with a rod on the cheek. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, being small among the clans of Judah, out of you one will come out to me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings out are from of old from ancient times. Therefore he will abandon them until the time that she who is in labor gives birth. Then the rest of his brothers will return to the children of Israel. He shall stand and shall shepherd in the strength of Yahweh, in the majesty of the name of Yahweh his God, and they will live, for then he will be great to the ends of the earth, he will be our peace when Assyria invades our land, and when he marches through our fortresses, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight leaders of men. They will rule the land of Assyria with the sword, 
and the land of Nimrod in its gates. He will deliver us from the Assyrian when he invades our land and when he marches within our border. The remnant of Jacob will be among many peoples, like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass, that don't wait for man, nor wait for the sons of men. The remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, among many peoples, like a lion among the animals of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, who, if he goes through, treads down and tears in pieces, and there is no one to deliver. Let your hand be lifted up above your adversaries, and let all of your enemies be cut off. It will happen in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses out from among you, and will destroy your chariots. I will cut off the cities of your land, and will tear down all your strongholds. I will destroy witchcraft from your hand, and you shall have no soothsayers. I will cut off your engraved images and your pillars out from among you, and you shall no more worship the work of your hands. I will uproot your Asherah poles out from among you, and I will destroy your cities. I will execute vengeance in anger and wrath on the nations that didn't listen. Chapter 6 Listen now to what Yahweh says. Arise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, you mountains, Yahweh's controversy, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For Yahweh has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me, for I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. My people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, devised, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of Yahweh, how shall I come before Yahweh and bow myself before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will Yahweh be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my disobedience, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good? What does Yahweh require of you but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Yahweh's voice calls to the city, and wisdom sees your name. Listen to the rod and he who appointed it. Are there yet treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked, and a short ephah that is accursed? Shall I be pure with dishonest scales and with a bag of deceitful weights? Her rich men are full of violence. Her inhabitants speak lies, and their tongue is deceitful in their speech. Therefore, I also have struck you with a grievous wound. I have made you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat but not be satisfied. Your humiliation will be within you. You will store up, but not save, and that which you save I will give up to the sword. You will sow, but won't reap. You will tread the olives, but won't anoint yourself with oil, and crush grapes, but won't drink the wine. For the statutes of Omri are kept, and all the works of Ahab's house. You walk in their counsels, that I may make you a ruin, and her inhabitants a hissing, and you will bear the reproach of my people. Chapter 7 Misery is mine. Indeed, I am like one who gathers the summer fruits as gleanings of the vineyard. There is no cluster of grapes to eat. 
My soul desires to eat the early fig. The godly man has perished out of the earth, and there is no one upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. Every man hunts his brother with a net. Their hands are on that which is evil, to do it diligently. The ruler and judge ask for a bribe, and the powerful man dictates the evil desire of his soul. Thus they conspire together. The best of them is like a briar. The most upright is worse than a thorn hedge. The day of your watchman, even your visitation, has come. Now is the time of their confusion. Don't trust in a neighbor. Don't put confidence in a friend. With the woman lying in your embrace, be careful of the words of your mouth. For the son dishonors the father. The daughter rises up against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. But as for me, I will look to Yahweh. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Don't rejoice against me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, Yahweh will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of Yahweh because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes judgment for me. He will bring me out to the light. I will see his righteousness. Then my enemy will see it, and shame will cover her who said to me, Where is Yahweh, your God? Then my enemy will see me and will cover her shame. Now she will be trodden down like the mire of the streets, a day to build your walls. In that day, he will extend your boundary. In that day, they will come to you from Assyria and the cities of Egypt, and from Egypt even to the river, and from sea to sea, and mountain to mountain. Yet the land will be desolate because of those who dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your heritage, who dwell by themselves in a forest, in the middle of fertile pasture land. Let them feed in Bashan and in Gilead, as in the days of old, as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt. I will show them marvelous things. The nations will see and be ashamed of all their might. They will lay their hand on their mouth. Their ears will be deaf. They will lick the dust like a serpent, like crawling things of the earth, they shall come trembling out of their dens. They will come with fear to Yahweh our God and will be afraid because of you. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the disobedience of the remnant of his heritage? He doesn't retain his anger forever because he delights in loving kindness. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot, and you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. You will give truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Nahum Chapter 1 A Revelation About Nineveh the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkishite. Yahweh is a jealous God and avenges. Yahweh avenges and is full of wrath. Yahweh takes vengeance on his adversaries and he maintains wrath against his enemies. Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. Yahweh has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up all the rivers. Bashan languishes and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languishes. The mountains quake before him and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence 
yes, the world, and all who dwell in it. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can endure the fierceness of his anger? His wrath is poured out like fire, and the rocks are broken apart by him. Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make a full end of her place and will pursue his enemies into darkness. What do you plot against Yahweh? He will make a full end. Affliction won't rise up the second time. For entangled like thorns, and drunken as with their drink, they are consumed utterly like dry stubble. There is one gone out of you who devises evil against Yahweh, who counsels wickedness. Yahweh says, Though they be in full strength, and likewise many, even so they will be cut down, and he shall pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no more. Now I will break his yoke from off you, and will burst your bonds apart. Yahweh has commanded concerning you, no more descendants will bear your name. Out of the house of your gods, I will cut off the engraved image and the molten image. I will make your grave, for you are vile. Behold, on the mountains, the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace. Keep your feasts, Judah. Perform your vows for the wicked one will no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. Chapter 2 He who dashes in pieces has come up against you. Keep the fortress. Watch the way. Strengthen your waist. Fortify your power mightily, for Yahweh restores the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the destroyers have destroyed them and ruined their vine branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots flash with steel in the day of his preparation, and the pine spears are brandished. The chariots rage in the streets. They rush back and forth in the wide ways. Their appearance is like torches. They run like the lightnings. He summons his picked troops. They stumble on their way. They dash to its wall, and the protective shield is put in place. The gates of the rivers are opened, and the palace is dissolved. It is decreed. She is uncovered. She is carried away and her servants moan as with the voice of doves, beating on their breasts. But Nineveh has been from of old like a pool of water, yet they flee away. Stop, stop, they cry, but no one looks back. Take the plunder of silver, take the plunder of gold, for there is no end of the store, the glory of all goodly furniture. She is empty, void, and waste. The heart melts, the knees knock together. Their bodies and faces have grown pale. Where is the den of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions where the lion and the lioness walked, the lion's cubs, and no one made them afraid? The lion tore in pieces enough for his cubs, and strangled for his lionesses, and filled his caves with the keel, and his dens with prey. Behold, I am against you, says Yahweh of armies, and I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword will devour your young lions, and I will cut off your prey from the earth, and the voice of your messengers will no longer be heard.
Chapter 3 Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey doesn't depart. The noise of the whip, the noise of the rattling of wheels, prancing horses and bounding chariots, the horsemen mounting, and the flashing sword, the glittering spear, and a multitude of slain, and a great heap of corpses, and there is no end of the bodies. They stumble on their bodies, because of the multitude of the prostitution of the alluring prostitute, the mistress of witchcraft, who sells nations through her prostitution and families through her witchcraft. Behold, I am against you, says Yahweh of armies, and I will lift your skirts over your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. I will throw abominable filth on you and make you vile and will set you a spectacle. It will happen that all those who look at you will flee from you and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will mourn for her? Where will I seek comforters for you? Are you better than Noammon, who was situated among the rivers, who had the waters around her? whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was of the sea? Cush and Egypt were her boundless strength. Put and Libya were her helpers. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the head of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honorable men and all her great men were bound in chains. You also will be drunken. You will be hidden. You also will seek a stronghold because of the enemy. All your fortresses will be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they are shaken, they fall into the mouth of the eater. Behold, your troops among you are women. The gates of your land are set wide open to your enemies. The fire has devoured your bars. Draw water for the siege. Strengthen your fortresses. Go into the clay and tread the mortar. Make the brick kiln strong. There the fire will devour you. The sword will cut you off. It will devour you like the grasshopper. Multiply like grasshoppers, multiply like the locust. You have increased your merchants more than the stars of the skies. The grasshopper strips and flees away. Your guards are like the locusts, and your officials like the swarms of locusts, which settle on the walls on a cold day. But when the sun appears, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Your shepherds slumber, king of Assyria. Your nobles lie down. Your people are scattered on the mountains, and there is no one to gather them. There is no healing your wound, for your injury is fatal. All who hear the report of you clap their hands over you, for who hasn't felt your endless cruelty? Habakkuk. Chapter 1 The Revelation Which Habakkuk the Prophet Saw Yahweh, how long will I cry, and you will not hear? I cry out to you, violence, and will you not save? Why do you show me iniquity, and look at perversity? For destruction and violence are before me. There is strife, and contention rises up. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. Look among the nations. Watch and wonder marvelously. For I am working a work in your days, which you will not believe, though it is told you. For, behold, I raise up the Chaldeans, 
that bitter and hasty nation, that march through the width of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are feared and dreaded. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Their horsemen press proudly on. Yes, their horsemen come from afar. They fly as an eagle that hurries to devour. All of them come for violence. Their hordes face the desert. He gathers prisoners like sand. Yes, he scoffs at kings, and princes are a derision to him. He laughs at every stronghold, for he builds up an earthen ramp and takes it. Then he sweeps by like the wind and goes on. He is indeed guilty, whose strength is his God. Aren't you from everlasting, Yahweh my God, my Holy One? We will not die. Yahweh, you have appointed him for judgment. You, Rock, have established him to punish. You who have purer eyes than to see evil and who cannot look on perversity. Why do you tolerate those who deal treacherously and keep silent when the wicked swallows up the man who is more righteous than he and make men like the fish of the sea, like the creeping things that have no ruler over them? He takes up all of them with the hook. He catches them in his net and gathers them in his dragnet. Therefore he rejoices and is glad Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet, because by them his life is luxurious and his food is good. Will he therefore continually empty his net and kill the nations without mercy? Chapter 2 I will stand at my watch and set myself on the ramparts and will look out to see what he will say to me, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Yahweh answered me, Write the vision, and make it plain on tablets, that he who runs may read it. For the vision is yet for the appointed time, and it hurries toward the end, and won't prove false. Though it takes time, wait for it, because it will surely come. It won't delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright in him, but the righteous will live by his faith. Yes, moreover, wine is treacherous. An arrogant man who doesn't stay at home, who enlarges his desire as Sheol, and he is like death and can't be satisfied, but gathers to himself all nations, and heaps to himself all peoples. Won't all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him who increases that which is not his, and who enriches himself by extortion. How long? Won't your debtors rise up suddenly, and wake up those who make you tremble, and you will be their victim? Because you have plundered many nations, all the remnant of the peoples will plunder you because of men's blood and for the violence done to the land, to the city, and to all who dwell in it. Woe to him who gets an evil gain for his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the hand of evil. You have devised shame to your house, by cutting off many peoples, and have sinned against your soul. For the stone will cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the woodwork will answer it. Woe to him who builds a town with blood, and establishes a city by iniquity. Behold, isn't it of Yahweh of armies that the peoples labor for the fire, and the nations weary themselves for vanity? 
for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of Yahweh's glory as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives his neighbor drink, pouring your inflaming wine until they are drunk, so that you may gaze at their naked bodies. You are filled with shame and not glory. You will also drink and be exposed. The cup of Yahweh's right hand will come around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. For the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and the destruction of the animals which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence done to the land, to every city, and to those who dwell in them. What value does the engraved image have that its maker has engraved it? The molten image, even the teacher of lies, that he who fashions its form trusts in it to make mute idols. Woe to him who says to the wood, Awake, or to the mute stone, Arise. Shall this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all within it. But Yahweh is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Chapter 3 A Prayer of Habakkuk the Prophet Set to Victorious Music Yahweh, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Yahweh. Renew your work in the middle of the years. In the middle of the years, make it known. In wrath, you remember mercy. God came from Teman the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and his praise filled the earth. His splendor is like the sunrise. Rays shine from his hand, where his power is hidden. Plague went before him, and pestilence followed his feet. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains were crumbled, the age-old hills collapsed. His ways are eternal. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The dwellings of the land of Midian trembled. Was Yahweh displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers, or your wrath against the sea, that you rode on your horses, on your chariots of salvation? You uncovered your bow. You called for your sworn arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and were afraid. The storm of waters passed by. The deep roared and lifted up its hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in the sky. At the light of your arrows as they went, at the shining of your glittering spear, you marched through the land in wrath. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. You crushed the head of the land of wickedness. You stripped them head to foot. You pierced the heads of his warriors with their own spears. They came as a whirlwind to scatter me gloating as if to devour the wretched in secret. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning mighty waters. I heard, and my body trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness enters into my bones, and I tremble in my place, because I must wait quietly for the day of trouble, for the coming up of the people who invade us. For though the fig tree doesn't flourish, nor fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive fails, the fields yield no food, the flocks are cut off from the fold, and there is no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in Yahweh. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Yahweh, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like deer's feet and enables me to go in high places. For the music director, 
on my stringed instruments. Zephaniah Chapter 1 Yahweh's word which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly sweep away everything from the surface of the earth, says Yahweh. I will sweep away man and animal. I will sweep away the birds of the sky, the fish of the sea, and the heaps of rubble with the wicked. I will cut off man from the surface of the earth, says Yahweh. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place, the name of the idolatrous and pagan priests, those who worship the army of the sky on the housetops, those who worship and swear by Yahweh and also swear by Malcolm, those who have turned back from following Yahweh, and those who haven't sought Yahweh nor inquired after him. Be silent at the presence of the Lord Yahweh, for the day of Yahweh is at hand. For Yahweh has prepared a sacrifice, he has consecrated his guests. It will happen in the day of Yahweh's sacrifice that I will punish the princes, the king's sons, and all those who are clothed with foreign clothing. In that day, I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's house with violence and deceit. In that day, says Yahweh, there will be the noise of a cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter, and a great crashing from the hills. Wail, you inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the people of Canaan are undone. All those who were loaded with silver are cut off. It will happen at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are settled on their dregs, who say in their heart, Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. Their wealth will become a plunder, and their houses a desolation. Yes, they will build houses, but won't inhabit them. They will plant vineyards, but won't drink their wine. The great day of Yahweh is near. It is near and hurries greatly, the voice of the day of Yahweh. The mighty man cries there, bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high battlements. I will bring distress on men that they will walk like blind men because they have sinned against Yahweh, and their blood will be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of Yahweh's wrath, but the whole land will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make an end, yes, a terrible end, of all those who dwell in the land. Chapter 2 Gather yourselves together, yes, gather together, you nation that has no shame, before the appointed time, when the day passes as the chaff, before the fierce anger of Yahweh comes on you, before the day of Yahweh's anger comes on you. Seek Yahweh, all you humble of the land, who have kept his ordinances, Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of Yahweh's anger, for Gaza will be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They will drive out Ashdod at noonday, and Ekron will be rooted up. Woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Karathites. Yahweh's word is against you, Canaan, the land of the Philistines, 
I will destroy you, that there will be no inhabitant. The seacoast will be pastures, with cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. The coast will be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They will find pasture. In the houses of Ashkelon, they will lie down in the evening, for Yahweh, their God, will visit them and restore them. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insults of the children of Ammon with which they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, says Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, surely Moab will be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, a possession of nettles and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The remnant of my people will plunder them, and the survivors of my nation will inherit them. This they will have for their pride, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of Yahweh of armies. Yahweh will be awesome to them, for he will famish all the gods of the land. Men will worship him, everyone from his place, even all the shores of the nations. You Cushites also, you will be killed by my sword. He will stretch out his hand against the north, destroy Assyria, and will make Nineveh a desolation, as dry as the wilderness. Herds will lie down in the middle of her, all the animals of the nations, both the pelican and the porcupine will lodge in its capitals. Their calls will echo through the windows. Desolation will be in the thresholds, for he has laid bare the cedar beams. This is the joyous city that lived carelessly, that said in her heart, I am, and there is no one besides me. How she has become a desolation, a place for animals to lie down in. Everyone who passes by her will hiss and shake their fists. Chapter 3 Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted, the oppressing city. She didn't obey the voice. She didn't receive correction. She didn't trust in Yahweh. She didn't draw near to her God. Her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They leave nothing until the next day. Her prophets are arrogant and treacherous people. Her priests have profaned the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. Yahweh within her is righteous. He will do no wrong. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He doesn't fail, but the unjust know no shame. I have cut off nations. Their battlements are desolate. I have made their streets waste so that no one passes by. Their cities are destroyed so that there is no man, so that there is no inhabitant. I said, just fear me. Receive correction so that her dwelling won't be cut off, according to all that I have appointed concerning her. But they rose early and corrupted all their doings. Therefore wait for me, says Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth will be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then I will purify the lips of the peoples, that they may all call on Yahweh's name, to serve him shoulder to shoulder. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshippers, even the daughter of my dispersed people, will bring my offering. In that day, you will not be disappointed for all your doings in which you have transgressed against me. For then I will take away out from among you 
your proudly exulting ones, and you will no more be arrogant in my holy mountain. But I will leave among you an afflicted and poor people, and they will take refuge in Yahweh's name. The remnant of Israel will not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they will feed and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. Sing, daughter of Zion, shout, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. Yahweh has taken away your judgments. He has thrown out your enemy. The king of Israel, Yahweh, is among you. You will not be afraid of evil any more. In that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Don't be afraid, Zion. Don't let your hands be weak. Yahweh your God is among you, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will calm you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will remove those who grieve about the appointed feasts from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. Behold, at that time I will deal with all those who afflict you, and I will save those who are lame, and gather those who were driven away. I will give them praise and honor, whose shame has been in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, and at that time I will gather you for I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says Yahweh. Haggai Chapter 1 In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, This is what Yahweh of armies says. These people say, The time hasn't yet come, the time for Yahweh's house to be built. Then Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, is it a time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses while this house lies waste? Now therefore, this is what Yahweh of armies says. Consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you aren't filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put them into a bag with holes in it. This is what Yahweh of armies says. Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, bring wood, and build the house. I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, says Yahweh. You looked for much, and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says Yahweh of armies, because of my house that lies waste, while each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, for your sake, the heavens withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. I called for a drought on the land, on the mountains, on the grain, on the new wine, on the oil, on that which the ground produces, on men, on livestock, and on all the labor of the hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed Yahweh, their God's voice, and the words of Haggai, the prophet, as Yahweh, their God, had sent him. And the people feared Yahweh. Then Haggai, Yahweh's messenger, spoke Yahweh's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says Yahweh. 
Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and worked on the house of Yahweh of armies, their God, in the twenty-fourth day of the month, in the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. Chapter 2 In the seventh month, in the twenty-first day of the month, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Who is left among you who saw this house in its former glory? How do you see it now? Isn't it in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says Yahweh. Be strong, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, says Yahweh. And work. For I am with you, says Yahweh of armies. This is the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit lived among you. Don't be afraid, for this is what Yahweh of armies says. Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, the precious things of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says Yahweh of armies. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says Yahweh of armies. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says Yahweh of armies. And in this place I will give peace, says Yahweh of armies. In the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, Yahweh's word came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Ask now the priests concerning the law, saying, If someone carries holy meat in the fold of his garment, and with his fold touches bread, stew, wine, oil, or any food, Will it become holy? The priests answered, No. Then Haggai said, If one who is unclean by reason of a dead body touch any of these, will it be unclean? The priests answered, It will be unclean. Then Haggai answered, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, says Yahweh. And so is every work of their hands. That which they offer there is unclean. Now, please consider from this day and backward. Before a stone was laid on a stone in Yahweh's temple, through all that time, when one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were only ten. When one came to the wine vat to draw out fifty, there were only twenty. I struck you with blight, mildew, and hail in all the work of your hands. Yet you didn't turn to me, says Yahweh. Consider, please, from this day and backward, from the twenty-fourth day of the ninth month, since the day that the foundation of Yahweh's temple was laid. Consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yes, the vine, the fig tree the pomegranate, and the olive tree haven't produced. From today I will bless you. Yahweh's word came the second time to Haggai in the twenty-fourth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the nations. I will overthrow the chariots and those who ride in them. The horses and their riders will come down. 
every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, says Yahweh of armies, I will take you, Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, says Yahweh, and will make you as a signet, for I have chosen you, says Yahweh of armies. Zechariah Chapter 1 In the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, Yahweh's word came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, Yahweh was very displeased with your fathers. Therefore, tell them, Yahweh of armies says, Return to me says Yahweh of armies, and I will return to you, says Yahweh of armies. Don't you be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets proclaimed, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Return now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they didn't hear nor listen to me, says Yahweh. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my decrees, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, didn't they overtake your fathers? Then they repented and said, Just as Yahweh of armies determined to do to us according to our ways and according to our practices, so he has dealt with us. On the twenty-fourth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Shebat, in the second year of Darius, Yahweh's word came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I had a vision in the night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in a ravine, and behind him there were red, brown, and white horses. Then I asked, my lord what are these the angel who talked with me said to me i will show you what these are the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered they are the ones yahweh has sent to go back and forth through the earth they reported to yahweh's angel who stood among the myrtle trees and said we have walked back and forth through the earth and behold all the earth is at rest and in peace. Then Yahweh's angel replied, O Yahweh of armies, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which you have had indignation these seventy years? Yahweh answered the angel who talked with me with kind and comforting words. So the angel who talked with me said to me, Proclaim saying, Yahweh of armies says, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. I am very angry with the nations that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, but they added to the calamity. Therefore, Yahweh says, I have returned to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it says Yahweh of armies, and a line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Proclaim further, saying, Yahweh of armies says, My cities will again overflow with prosperity, and Yahweh will again comfort Zion, and will again choose Jerusalem. I lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, four horns, I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these? He answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Yahweh showed me four craftsmen. Then I asked, What are these coming to do? He said, These are the horns which scattered Judah, so that no man lifted up his head. But these have come to terrify them, to cast down the horns of the nations, 
which lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. Chapter 2 I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then I asked, Where are you going? He said to me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is its width and what is its length. Behold, the angel who talked with me went out, and another angel went out to meet him, and said to him, Run. Speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem will be inhabited as villages without walls, because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I, says Yahweh, will be to her a wall of fire around it, and I will be the glory in the middle of her. Come, come, flee from the land of the north, says Yahweh. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the sky, says Yahweh. Come, Zion, escape, you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For Yahweh of armies says, For honor he has sent me to the nations which plundered you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For, behold, I will shake my hand over them and they will be a plunder to those who serve them. And you will know that Yahweh of armies has sent me. Sing and rejoice, daughter of Zion, for behold, I come and I will dwell within you, says Yahweh. Many nations shall join themselves to Yahweh in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell among you. And you shall know, that Yahweh of armies has sent me to you. Yahweh will inherit Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent, all flesh, before Yahweh, for he has roused himself from his holy habitation. Chapter 3 He showed me Joshua the high priest, standing before Yahweh's angel, and Satan standing at his right hand to be his adversary. Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Yes, Yahweh, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Isn't this a burning stick plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. He answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take the filthy garments off him. To him he said, Behold, I have caused your iniquity to pass from you, and I will clothe you with rich clothing. I said, Let them set a clean turban on his head. So they set a clean turban on his head and clothed him and Yahweh's angel was standing by. Yahweh's angel protested to Joshua, saying, Yahweh of armies says, If you will walk in my ways, and if you will follow my instructions, then you also shall judge my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give you a place of access among these who stand by. Hear now, Joshua the high priest, you and your fellows who sit before you, for they are men who are a sign. For, behold, I will bring out my servant, the branch. For, behold, the stone that I have set before Joshua, on one stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave its engraving, says Yahweh of armies and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, says Yahweh of armies, you will invite every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Chapter 4 The angel who talked with me came again and wakened me, as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. 
He said to me, What do you see? I said, I have seen, and behold, a lampstand all of gold, with its bowl on the top of it, and its seven lamps on it. There are seven pipes to each of the lamps, which are on the top of it, and two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl, and the other on the left side of it. I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered me, Don't you know what these are? I said, No, my lord. Then he answered and spoke to me, saying, This is Yahweh's word to the rebel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit says Yahweh of armies. Who are you, great mountain? Before the rubbabel, you are a plain, and he will bring out the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, The hands of the rubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And you will know that Yahweh of armies has sent me to you. Indeed, who despises the day of small things? For these seven shall rejoice, and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are Yahweh's eyes, which run back and forth through the whole earth. Then I asked him, What are these two olive trees on the right side of the lampstand and on the left side of it? I asked him the second time, What are these two olive branches, which are beside the two golden spouts, that pour the golden oil out of themselves? He answered me, Don't you know what these are? I said, No, my lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Chapter 5 then again I lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, a flying scroll. He said to me, What do you see? I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is twenty cubits, and its width ten cubits. Then he said to me, This is the curse that goes out over the surface of the whole land. For every one who steals shall be cut off according to it on the one side, and every one who swears falsely shall be cut off according to it on the other side. I will cause it to go out, says Yahweh of armies, and it will enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him who swears falsely by my name, and it will remain in the middle of his house, and will destroy it with its timber and its stones. Then the angel who talked with me came forward and said to me, Lift up now your eyes, and see what this is that is appearing. I said, What is it? He said, This is the ephah basket that is appearing. He said moreover, This is their appearance in all the land. And behold, a talent of lead was lifted up. And this is a woman sitting in the middle of the ephah basket. He said, This is wickedness. And he threw her down into the middle of the ephah basket, and he threw the weight of lead on its mouth. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there were two women, and the wind was in their wings. Now they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah basket between earth and the sky. Then I said to the angel who talked with me, Where are these carrying the ephah basket? He said to me, To build her a house in the land of Shinar. When it is prepared, she will be set there in her own place. Chapter 6 Again I lifted up my eyes, and saw, and behold, four chariots came out from between two mountains, 
and the mountains were mountains of bronze. In the first chariot were red horses. In the second chariot, black horses. In the third chariot, white horses. And in the fourth chariot, dappled horses, all of them powerful. Then I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these, my lord? The angel answered me, These are the four winds of the sky, which go out from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The one with the black horses goes out toward the north country, and the white went out after them, and the dappled went out toward the south country. The strong went out and sought to go, that they might walk back and forth through the earth. And he said, Go around and through the earth. So they walked back and forth through the earth. Then he called to me and spoke to me, saying, Behold, those who go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Heldai, of Tobijah, and of Judea, and come the same day, and go into the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah, where they have come from Babylon. Yes, take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and speak to him, saying, Yahweh of armies says, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build Yahweh's temple, even he shall build Yahweh's temple, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule on his throne, and he shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. The crowns shall be to Helam and to Tobijah, and to Judea, and to Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in Yahweh's temple. Those who are far off shall come and build in Yahweh's temple. And you shall know that Yahweh of armies has sent me to you. This will happen if you will diligently obey Yahweh your God's voice. Chapter 7 in the fourth year of King Darius, Yahweh's word came to Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, the month of Kislev. The people of Bethel sent Sherezer and Regam Melek and their men to entreat Yahweh's favor and to speak to the priests of the house of Yahweh of armies and to the prophets, saying, Should I weep in the fifth month? separating myself as I have done these so many years? Then the word of Yahweh of armies came to me, saying, Speak to all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and in the seventh month for these seventy years, did you at all fast to me, really to me? When you eat and when you drink, don't you eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? Aren't these the words which Yahweh proclaimed by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and its cities around her and the south and lowland were inhabited? Yahweh's word came to Zechariah, saying, Thus has Yahweh of armies spoken, saying, Execute true judgment and show kindness and compassion every man to his brother. Don't oppress the widow, nor the fatherless, the foreigner, nor the poor, and let none of you devise evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to listen, and turned their backs, and stopped their ears, that they might not hear. Yes, they made their hearts as hard as flint, lest they might hear the law and the words which Yahweh of armies had sent by his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore, 
great wrath came from Yahweh of armies. It has come to pass that, as he called, and they refused to listen, so they will call, and I will not listen, said Yahweh of armies. But I will scatter them with a whirlwind among all the nations which they have not known. Thus the land was desolate after them, so that no man passed through nor returned, for they made the pleasant land desolate. Chapter 8 The word of Yahweh of armies came to me. Yahweh of armies says, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I am jealous for her with great wrath. Yahweh says, I have returned to Zion, and will dwell in the middle of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the City of Truth, and the mountain of Yahweh of armies, the Holy Mountain. Yahweh of armies says, Old men and old women will again dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, every man with his staff in his hand for very age. The streets of the city will be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Yahweh of armies says, If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in those days, should it also be marvelous in my eyes? Says Yahweh of armies. Yahweh of armies says, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country and I will bring them, and they will dwell within Jerusalem, and they will be my people, and I will be their God, in truth and in righteousness. Yahweh of armies says, Let your hands be strong, you who hear in these days these words from the mouth of the prophets, who were in the day that the foundation of the house of Yahweh of armies was laid, even the temple that it might be built. For before those days there was no wages for man, nor any wages for an animal. Neither was there any peace to him who came out or came in because of the adversary. For I set all men, every one, against his neighbor. But now I will not be to the remnant of this people as in the former days, says Yahweh of armies. For the seed of peace, and the vine will yield its fruit, and the ground will give its increase, and the heavens will give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to inherit all these things. It shall come to pass that, as you were a curse among the nations, house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you, and you shall be a blessing. Don't be afraid. Let your hands be strong, for Yahweh of armies says, As I thought to do evil to you when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says Yahweh of armies, and I didn't repent. So again I have thought in these days to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Don't be afraid. These are the things that you shall do. Speak every man the truth with his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates, and let none of you devise evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath, for all these are things that I hate, says Yahweh. The word of Yahweh of armies came to me. Yahweh of armies says, The fasts of the fourth, fifth, seventh and tenth months shall be for the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love truth and peace. Yahweh of armies says, Many peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will yet come, and the inhabitants of one shall go to another, saying, Let's go speedily to entreat the favor of Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of armies. I will go also. Yes, many peoples and strong nations 
will come to seek Yahweh of armies in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of Yahweh. Yahweh of armies says, In those days ten men will take hold, out of all the languages of the nations, they will take hold of the skirt of him who is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Chapter 9 A Revelation Yahweh's word is against the land of Hadrach, and will rest upon Damascus. For the eye of man and of all the tribes of Israel is toward Yahweh, and Hamath also, which borders on it, Tyre and Sidon, because they are very wise. Tyre built herself a stronghold, and heaped up silver like the dust, and fine gold like the mire of the streets. Behold, the Lord will dispossess her, and he will strike her power in the sea, and she will be devoured with fire. Ashkelon will see it and fear, Gaza also, and will writhe in agony, as will Ekron, for her expectation will be disappointed, and the king will perish from Gaza, and Ashkelon will not be inhabited. Foreigners will dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. I will take away his blood out of his mouth and his abominations from between his teeth. And he also will be a remnant for our God, and he will be as a chieftain in Judah, and Ekron as a Jebusite. I will encamp around my house against the army, that no one pass through or return, and no oppressor will pass through them any more. For now I have seen with my eyes. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king comes to you. He is righteous and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off, and he will speak peace to the nations, and his dominion will be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I have set free your prisoners from the pit in which is no water. Turn to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, even today I declare that I will restore double to you, for indeed I bend Judah as a bow for me. I have filled the bow with Ephraim, and I will stir up your sons, Zion, against your sons, Greece, and will make you like the sword of a mighty man. Yahweh will be seen over them, and his arrow will go flash like lightning. And the Lord Yahweh will blow the trumpet and will go with whirlwinds of the south. Yahweh of armies will defend them and they will destroy and overcome with sling stones and they will drink and roar as through wine and they will be filled like bowls, like the corners of the altar. Yahweh their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people for they are like the jewels of a crown, lifted on high over his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty! Grain will make the young men flourish, and new wine the virgins. Chapter 10 Ask of Yahweh rain in the springtime, Yahweh who makes storm clouds, and he gives rain showers to everyone for the plants in the field. For the teraphim have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and they have told false dreams. They comfort in vain, therefore they go their way like sheep. They are oppressed because there is no shepherd. 
My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the male goats. For Yahweh of armies has visited his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his majestic horse in the battle. From him will come the cornerstone, from him the nail, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler together. They shall be as mighty men, treading down muddy streets in the battle, and they shall fight because Yahweh is with them, and the riders on horses will be confounded. I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them back, for I have mercy on them. And they will be as though I had not cast them off, for I am Yahweh their God, and I will hear them. Ephraim will be like a mighty man, and their heart will rejoice as through wine. Yes, their children will see it and rejoice. Their heart will be glad in Yahweh. I will signal for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them and they will increase as they have increased. I will sow them among the peoples, and they will remember me in far countries, and they will live with their children and will return. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and there won't be room enough for them. He will pass through the sea of affliction and will strike the waves in the sea and all the depths of the Nile will dry up and the pride of Assyria will be brought down and the scepter of Egypt will depart. I will strengthen them in Yahweh and they will walk up and down in his name, says Yahweh. Chapter 11 Open your doors, Lebanon, that the fire may devour your cedars. Wail, cypress tree, for the cedar has fallen, because the stately ones are destroyed. Wail, you oaks of Bashan, for the strong forest has come down, a voice of the wailing of the shepherds, for their glory is destroyed, a voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of the Jordan is ruined. Yahweh my God says, Feed the flock of slaughter. Their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. Those who sell them say, Blessed be Yahweh, for I am rich. And their own shepherds don't pity them. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, says Yahweh. But behold, I will deliver the men, everyone, into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. They will strike the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. So I fed the flock of slaughter, especially the oppressed of the flock. I took for myself two staffs, the one I called favor, and the other I called union, and I fed the flock. I cut off the three shepherds in one month, for my soul was weary of them, and their soul also loathed me. Then I said, I will not feed you. That which dies, let it die, and that which is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let those who are left eat each other's flesh. I took my staff, favor, and cut it apart, that I might break my covenant that I had made with all the peoples. It was broken in that day, and thus the poor of the flock that listened to me knew that it was Yahweh's word. I said to them, If you think it best, give me my wages, and if not, keep them. So they weighed for my wages thirty pieces of silver. Yahweh said to me, Throw it to the potter, the handsome price that I was valued at by them. 
I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them to the potter in Yahweh's house. Then I cut apart my other staff, even union, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Yahweh said to me, Take for yourself yet again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for, behold, I will raise up a shepherd in the land who will not visit those who are cut off, neither will seek those who are scattered, nor heal that which is broken, nor feed that which is sound. But he will eat the meat of the fat sheep and will tear their hoofs in pieces. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. The sword will be on his arm and on his right eye. His arm will be completely withered, and his right eye will be totally blinded. Chapter 12 A Revelation Yahweh's Word Concerning Israel Yahweh, who stretches out the heavens and lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him, says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of reeling to all the surrounding peoples, and it will also be on Judah in the siege against Jerusalem. It will happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all the peoples. All who burden themselves with it will be severely wounded, and all the nations of the earth will be gathered together against it. In that day, says Yahweh, I will strike every horse with terror, and his rider with madness, and I will open my eyes on the house of Judah, and will strike every horse of the peoples with blindness. The chieftains of Judah will say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem are my strength, in Yahweh of armies, their God. In that day, I will make the chieftains of Judah like a pan of fire among wood, and like a flaming torch among sheaves, and they will devour all the surrounding peoples, on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem will yet again dwell in their own place, even in Jerusalem. Yahweh also will save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of David's house and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem not be magnified above Judah. In that day, Yahweh will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. He who is feeble among them at that day will be like David, and David's house will be like God, like Yahweh's angel before them. It will happen in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. I will pour on David's house and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication, and they will look to me, whom they have pierced. And they shall mourn for him, as one mourns for his only son, and will grieve bitterly for him, as one grieves for his firstborn. In that day, there will be a great mourning in Jerusalem, like the mourning of Hadadrimon in the valley of Megiddo. The land will mourn, every family apart, the family of David's house apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart the family of the Shimeites apart, and their wives apart, all the families who remain, every family apart, and their wives apart. Chapter 13 In that day there will be a spring opened to David's house and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. It will come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of armies, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they will be remembered no more. I will also cause the prophets and the spirit of impurity to pass out of the land. It will happen that, 
when anyone still prophesies, then his father and his mother who bore him will tell him, You must die because you speak lies in Yahweh's name. And his father and his mother who bore him will stab him when he prophesies. It will happen in that day that the prophets will each be ashamed of his vision when he prophesies. Neither will they wear a hairy mantle to deceive, but he will say, I am no prophet, I am a tiller of the ground, for I have been made a bondservant from my youth. One will say to him, What are these wounds between your arms? Then he will answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Awake, sword, against my shepherd, and against the man who is close to me, says Yahweh of armies. Strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand against the little ones. It shall happen that in all the land, says Yahweh, two parts in it will be cut off and die but the third will be left in it. I will bring the third part into the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will test them like gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they will say, Yahweh is my God. Chapter 14 Behold, a day of Yahweh comes, when your plunder will be divided within you. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be taken, the houses rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city will go out into captivity, and the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then Yahweh will go out and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. His feet will stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two, from east to west, making a very great valley. Half of the mountain will move toward the north, and half of it toward the south. You shall flee by the valley of my mountain, for the valley of the mountains shall reach to Azel. Yes, you shall flee, just like you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Yahweh my God will come, and all the holy ones with you. It will happen in that day that there will not be light, cold, or frost. It will be a unique day which is known to Yahweh, not day, and not night, but it will come to pass that at evening time there will be light. It will happen in that day that living waters will go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the eastern sea, and half of them toward the western sea. It will be so in summer and in winter. Yahweh will be king over all the earth. In that day, Yahweh will be one and his name one. All the land will be made like the Arabah, from Geba to Rimmon, south of Jerusalem, and she will be lifted up and will dwell in her place, from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate, to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. Men will dwell therein, and there will be no more curse, but Jerusalem will dwell safely. This will be the plague with which Yahweh will strike all the peoples who have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will consume away while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will consume away in their sockets, and their tongue will consume away in their mouth. It will happen in that day that a great panic from Yahweh will be among them, and they will each hold on to the hand of his neighbor, and his hand will rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations will be gathered together, gold and silver and clothing in great abundance. 
A plague like this will fall on the horse, on the mule, on the camel, on the donkey, and on all the animals that will be in those camps. It will happen that everyone who is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of armies, and to keep the feast of booths. It will be that whoever of all the families of the earth doesn't go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of armies, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt doesn't go up and doesn't come, neither will it rain on them. This will be the plague with which Yahweh will strike the nations that don't go up to keep the feast of booths. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that don't go up to keep the feast of booths. In that day, there will be on the bales of the horses holy to Yahweh, and the pots in Yahweh's house will be like the bowls before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy to Yahweh of armies, and all those who sacrifice will come and take of them and cook in them. In that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of Yahweh of armies. Malachi Chapter 1 A Revelation Yahweh's Word to Israel by Malachi I have loved you, says Yahweh. Yet you say, how have you loved us? Wasn't Esau Jacob's brother, says Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob, but Esau I hated, and made his mountains a desolation, and gave his heritage to the jackals of the wilderness. Whereas Edom says, We are beaten down, but we will return and build the waste places. Yahweh of armies says, They shall build but I will throw down, and men will call them the wicked land, even the people against whom Yahweh shows wrath forever. Your eyes will see, and you will say, Yahweh is great even beyond the border of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If I am a father, then where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says Yahweh of armies to you, priests who despise my name. You say, how have we despised your name? You offer polluted bread on my altar. You say, how have we polluted you? In that you say, Yahweh's table is contemptible. When you offer the blind for sacrifice, isn't that evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, isn't that evil? Present it now to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? Or will he accept your person? Says Yahweh of armies. Now please entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. With this, will he accept any of you? Says Yahweh of armies. Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors, that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says Yahweh of armies. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name is great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name is great among the nations, says Yahweh of armies. But you profane it, in that you say, Yahweh's table is polluted, and its fruit, even its food, is contemptible. You say also, Behold, what a weariness it is, and you have sniffed at it, says Yahweh of armies and you have brought that which was taken by violence, the lame and the sick. Thus you bring the offering. 
Should I accept this at your hand, says Yahweh? But the deceiver is cursed, who has in his flock a male, and vows, and sacrifices to the Lord a defective thing. For I am a great king, says Yahweh of armies, and my name is awesome among the nations. Chapter 2 Now, you priests, this commandment is for you, if you will not listen, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says Yahweh of armies, then I will send the curse on you, and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have cursed them already, because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your offspring, and will spread dung on your faces, even the dung of your feasts, and you will be taken away with it. You will know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant may be with Levi, says Yahweh of armies. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him that he might be reverent toward me. And he was reverent toward me, and stood in awe of my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and unrighteousness was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and turned many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of Yahweh of armies. But you have turned away from the path. You have caused many to stumble in the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Yahweh of armies. Therefore I have also made you contemptible and wicked before all the people, according to the way you have not kept my ways, but have had respect for persons in the law. Don't we all have one Father? Hasn't one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother, profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holiness of Yahweh, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god. Yahweh will cut off to the man who does this, him who wakes and him who answers out of the tents of Jacob, and him who offers an offering to Yahweh of armies. This again you do. You cover Yahweh's altar with tears, with weeping and with sighing, because he doesn't regard the offering any more, neither receives it with goodwill at your hand. Yet you say, why? Because Yahweh has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have dealt treacherously, though she is your companion and the wife of your covenant. Did he not make you one? although he had the residue of the Spirit? Why one? He sought godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let no one deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. One who hates and divorces, says Yahweh, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says Yahweh of armies. Therefore, pay attention to your spirit, that you don't be unfaithful. You have wearied Yahweh with your words, yet you say, How have we wearied him? In that you say, Everyone who does evil is good in Yahweh's sight, and he delights in them. Or, Where is the God of justice? Chapter 3 Behold, I send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant, whom you desire. Behold, he comes, says Yahweh of armies. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who will stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like launderer's soap. 
and he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he will purify the sons of Levi, and refine them as gold and silver. And they shall offer to Yahweh offerings in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to Yahweh, as in the days of old, and as in ancient years. I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers, and against the perjurers, and against those who oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow, and the fatherless, and who deprive the foreigner of justice. And don't fear me, says Yahweh of armies, for I, Yahweh, don't change. Therefore you, sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says Yahweh of armies. But you say, How shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you say, How have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for you rob me, even this whole nation. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says Yahweh of armies, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there will not be room enough for. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its fruit before its time in the field, says Yahweh of armies. All nations shall call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says Yahweh of armies. Your words have been stout against me, says Yahweh. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have followed his instructions, and that we have walked mournfully before Yahweh of armies? Now we call the proud happy. Yes, those who work wickedness are built up. Yes, they tempt God and escape. Then those who feared Yahweh spoke one with another. And Yahweh listened and heard, and a book of memory was written before him for those who feared Yahweh and who honored his name. They shall be mine, says Yahweh of armies, my own possession in the day that I make, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him who serves God and him who doesn't serve him. Chapter 4 For, behold, the day comes, it burns as a furnace, and all the proud and all who work wickedness will be stubble, and the day that comes will burn them up, says Yahweh of armies that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in its wings. You will go out and leap like calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I make, says Yahweh of armies. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded to him in Horeb for all Israel, even statutes and ordinances. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Matthew.
Chapter 1 The Book of the Genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the Son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron became the father of Ram. Ram became the father of Amenadab. Amenadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon became the father of Salmon. Salmon became the father of Boaz by Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed by Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse became the father of King David. David became the father of Solomon by her who had been Uriah's wife. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam became the father of Abijah. Abijah became the father of Asa. Asa became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat became the father of Joram. Joram became the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham became the father of Ahaz. Ahaz became the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh became the father of Ammon. Ammon became the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel became the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel became the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim became the father of Azor. Azor became the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim became the father of Eliad. Eliad became the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan. Mathan became the father of Jacob. Jacob became the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary from whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations. From David to the exile to Babylon, fourteen generations. And from the carrying away to Babylon to the Christ, fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was like this. After his mother, Mary, was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take to yourself Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She shall give birth to a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who shall save his people from their sins. Now all this has happened that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall give birth to a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is, being interpreted, God with us. Joseph arose from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife to himself, and didn't know her sexually until she had given birth to her firstborn son. He named him Jesus. Chapter 2 Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, 
where is he who is born king of the jews for we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him when king herod heard it he was troubled and all jerusalem with him gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people he asked them where the christ would be born they said to him in bethlehem of judea for this is written through the prophet you bethlehem land of judah are in no way least among the princes of judah for out of you shall come a governor who shall shepherd my people israel then herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them exactly what time the star appeared he sent them to bethlehem and said go and search diligently for the young child when you have found him bring me word so that i also may come and worship him they having heard the king went their way and behold this star which they saw in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the young child was when they saw the star they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy they came into the house and saw the young child with mary his mother and they fell down and worshipped him opening their treasures they offered to him gifts gold frankincense and myrrh being warned in a dream not to return to herod they went back to their own country another way now when they had departed behold an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into egypt and stay there until i tell you for herod will seek the young child to destroy him he arose and took the young child and his mother by night and departed into egypt and was there until the death of herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the lord through the prophet saying out of egypt i called my son then herod when he saw that he was mocked by the wise men was exceedingly angry and sent out and killed all the male children who were in bethlehem and in all the surrounding countryside from two years old and under according to the exact time which he had learned from the wise men then that which was spoken by jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled saying a voice was heard in ramah lamentation weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her children she wouldn't be comforted because they are no more but when herod was dead behold an angel of the lord appeared in a dream to joseph in egypt saying arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of israel for those who sought the young child's life are dead. He arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in the place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Being warned in a dream, he withdrew into the region of Galilee and came and lived in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophets that he will be called a nazarene chapter three in those days john the baptizer came preaching in the wilderness of judea saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand for this is he who was spoken of by isaiah the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness make the way of the lord ready make his paths straight now john himself wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist his food was locusts and wild honey then people from jerusalem all of judea and all the region around the jordan went out to him they were baptized by him in the jordan confessing their sins 
But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, produce fruit worthy of repentance. Don't think to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you in water for repentance, but he who comes after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor. He will gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn up with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. But John would have hindered him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me. But Jesus, answering, said to him, Allow it now, for this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up directly from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. He saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming on him. Behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Chapter 4 Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. When he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry afterward. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city, he set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you don't dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not test the Lord your God. Again the devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said to him, I will give you all of these things if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and you shall serve him only. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and served him. Now when Jesus heard that John was delivered up, he withdrew into Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he came and lived in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali toward the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness saw a great light. To those who sat in the region and shadow of death, to them light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers for men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, 
he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them. They immediately left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. The report about him went out into all Syria. They brought to him all who were sick, afflicted with various diseases and torments, possessed with demons, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes from Galilee, Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Chapter 5 Seeing the multitudes, he went up onto the mountain. When he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven for that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, with what will it be salted? It is then good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp and put it under a measuring basket but on a stand, and it shines to all who are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. For most certainly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even one smallest letter or one tiny pen stroke shall in any way pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. Whoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and teach others to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, there is no way you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of the judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. Whoever says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of Gehenna. If, therefore, you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are with him on the way, lest perhaps the prosecutor deliver you to the judge, and the judge deliver you to the officer, and you be cast into prison. Most certainly, I tell you, you shall by no means get out of there 
until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who gazes at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gehenna. If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gehenna. It was also said, Whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I tell you, that whoever puts away his wife, except for the cause of sexual immorality, makes her an adulteress. And whoever marries her when she is put away, commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, You shall not make false vows, but shall perform to the Lord your vows. But I tell you, don't swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head, for you can't make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no. Whatever is more than these is of the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist him who is evil. But whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone sues you to take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and don't turn away him who desires to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? If you only greet your friends, what more do you do than others? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Chapter 6 Be careful that you don't do your charitable giving before men to be seen by them, or else you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Therefore, when you do merciful deeds, don't sound a trumpet before yourself, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may get glory from men. Most certainly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you do merciful deeds, don't let your left hand know what your right hand does, so that your merciful deeds may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. When you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Most certainly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your inner room, and having shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. In praying, don't use vain repetitions, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. Therefore, don't be like them, for your Father knows what things you need before you ask Him. Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy, let your kingdom come. 
Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites with sad faces, for they disfigure their faces that they may be seen by men to be fasting. Most certainly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you are not seen by men to be fasting, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Don't lay up treasures for yourselves on the earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves don't break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If, therefore, your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If, therefore, the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. Therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? See the birds of the sky, that they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you of much more value than they? Which of you, by being anxious, can add one moment to his lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today exists and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't he much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, don't be anxious, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? Or, With what will we be clothed? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day's own evil is sufficient. Chapter 7 don't judge so that you won't be judged. For with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye? And behold, the beam is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first remove the beam out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Don't give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, lest perhaps they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. 
Knock, and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be opened. Or who is there among you who, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, who will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you desire for men to do to you, you shall also do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter in by it. How narrow is the gate and restricted is the way that leads to life. Few are those who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do you gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree produces good fruit but the corrupt tree produces evil fruit. A good tree can't produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Every tree that doesn't grow good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will tell me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, in your name cast out demons, and in your name do many mighty works? Then I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Everyone, therefore, who hears these words of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it didn't fall, for it was founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the multitudes were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them with authority and not like the scribes. Chapter 8 When he came down from the mountain, Great multitudes followed him. Behold, a leper came to him and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I want to be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Jesus said to him, See that you tell nobody. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When he came into Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies in the house, paralyzed, grievously tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having under myself soldiers. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and tell another, come, and he comes, and tell my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Most certainly, I tell you, I haven't found so great a faith 
not even in Israel. I tell you that many will come from the east and the west and will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. Let it be done for you as you have believed. His servant was healed in that hour. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. She got up and served him. When evening came, they brought to him many possessed with demons. He cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes around him, he gave the order to depart to the other side. A scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. When he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Behold, a violent storm came up on the sea, so much that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. They came to him and woke him up, saying, Save us, Lord, we are dying. He said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. The men marveled, saying, what kind of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? When he came to the other side, into the country of the Gergesenes, two people possessed by demons met him there, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that nobody could pass that way. Behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding far away from them. The demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of pigs. He said to them, Go. They came out and went into the herd of pigs. And behold, the whole herd of pigs rushed down the cliff into the sea and died in the water. Those who fed them fled and went away into the city and told everything, including what happened to those who were possessed with demons. Behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. When they saw him, they begged that he would depart from their borders. Chapter 9 He entered into a boat and crossed over and came into his own city. Behold, they brought to him a man who was paralyzed, lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, cheer up, your sins are forgiven you. Behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man blasphemes. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Get up and take up your mat and go to your house. He arose and departed to his house. But when the multitudes saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed by from there, he saw a man called Matthew 
sitting at the tax collection office. He said to him, Follow me. He got up and followed him. As he sat in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. But you go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then John's disciples came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples don't fast? Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch would tear away from the garment, and a worse hole is made. Neither do people put new wine into old wineskins, or else the skins would burst, and the wine be spilled, and the skins ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. While he told these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and followed him, as did his disciples. Behold, a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years came behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, for she said within herself, If I just touch his garment, I will be made well. But Jesus, turning around and seeing her, said, Daughter, cheer up, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd in noisy disorder, he said to them, Make room, because the girl isn't dead, but sleeping. They were ridiculing him. But when the crowd was put out, he entered in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. The report of this went out into all that land. As Jesus passed by from there, two blind men followed him, calling out and saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They told him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it done to you. Their eyes were opened. Jesus strictly commanded them, saying, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread abroad his fame in all that land. As they went out, Behold, a mute man, who was demon-possessed, was brought to him. When the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke. The multitudes marveled, saying, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the prince of the demons he casts out demons. Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were harassed and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest indeed is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. Chapter 10 He called to himself his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out 
and to heal every disease and every sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, Labias, who was also called Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Jesus sent these twelve out and commanded them, saying, Don't go among the Gentiles, and don't enter into any city of the Samaritans. Rather, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. Freely you received, so freely give. Don't take any gold, silver, or brass in your money belts. Take no bag for your journey, neither two coats, nor sandals, nor staff. For the laborer is worthy of his food. Into whatever city or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go on. As you enter into the household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come on it. But if it isn't worthy, let your peace return to you. Whoever doesn't receive you, nor hear your words, as you go out of that house or that city, shake the dust off your feet. Most certainly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils, and in their synagogues they will scourge you. Yes, and you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them and to the nations. But when they deliver you up, don't be anxious how or what you will say, for it will be given you in that hour what you will say. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee into the next, for most certainly I tell you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man has come. A disciple is not above his teacher nor a servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he had be like his teacher and the servant like his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more those of his household? Therefore, don't be afraid of them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Aren't two sparrows sold for an Assyrian coin? Not one of them falls on the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore, don't be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Don't think that I came to send peace on the earth. I didn't come to send peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man at odds against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. 
A man's foes will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me isn't worthy of me. He who doesn't take his cross and follow after me isn't worthy of me. He who seeks his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones just a cup of cold water to drink in the name of a disciple, most certainly I tell you, he will in no way lose his reward. Chapter 11 When Jesus had finished directing his twelve disciples, he departed from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you he who comes, or should we look for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is he who finds no occasion for stumbling in me. As these went their way, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Most certainly, I tell you, among those who are born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the baptizer. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the baptizer until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. If you are willing to receive it, this is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces who call to their companions and say, We played the flute for you, and you didn't dance. We mourned for you, and you didn't lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they didn't repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. You, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, you will go down to Hades. For if the mighty works had been done in Sodom, which were done in you, it would have remained until today. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus answered, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you hid these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. 
Yes, Father, for it was well-pleasing in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. Neither does anyone know the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Chapter 12 At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the grain fields. His disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But the Pharisees, when they saw it, said to him, Behold, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Haven't you read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? How he entered into God's house and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? But I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you wouldn't have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He departed from there and went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man with a withered hand. They asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? That they might accuse him. He said to them, What man is there among you who has one sheep? And if this one falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, won't he grab onto it and lift it out? Of how much more value then is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath day. Then he told the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored whole, just like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him, how they might destroy him. Jesus, perceiving that, withdrew from there. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and commanded them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit on him. He will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not strive nor shout. Neither will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He won't break a bruised reed. He won't quench a smoking flax until he leads justice to victory. In his name, the nations will hope. Then one possessed by a demon, blind and mute, was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. All the multitudes were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This man does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the prince of the demons. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I, by Beelzebub, cast out demons, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then God's kingdom has come upon you. Or how can one enter into the house of the strong man and plunder his goods 
unless he first bind the strong man. Then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who doesn't gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him neither in this age nor in that which is to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. You offspring of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, the good man out of his good treasure brings out good things, and the evil man out of his evil treasure brings out evil things. I tell you that every idle word that men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, someone greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, someone greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he passes through waterless places, seeking rest, and doesn't find it. Then he says, I will return into my house from which I came out. And when he has come back, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with himself seven other spirits, more evil than he is. And they enter in and dwell there, the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. Even so will it be also to this evil generation. While he was yet speaking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside, seeking to speak to him. One said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers stand outside, seeking to speak to you. But he answered him who spoke to him, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? He stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Chapter 13 On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. Great multitudes gathered to him, so that he entered into a boat and sat, and all the multitudes stood on the beach. He spoke to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, a farmer went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell by the roadside, and the birds came and devoured them. Others fell on rocky ground, where they didn't have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. When the sun had risen, they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on good soil and yielded fruit, some one hundred times as much some sixty, and some thirty. 
He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered them, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but it is not given to them. For whoever has, to him will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever doesn't have, from him will be taken away even that which he has. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they don't see, and hearing they don't hear, neither do they understand. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, By hearing you will hear, and will in no way understand. Seeing you will see, and will in no way perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are dull of hearing, they have closed their eyes, or else perhaps they might perceive with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and would turn again, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For most certainly I tell you, that many prophets and righteous men desired to see the things which you see, and didn't see them, and to hear the things which you hear, and didn't hear them. Hear then the parable of the farmer. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown by the roadside. What was sown on the rocky places, this is he who hears the word and immediately with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. When oppression or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. What was sown among the thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of this age and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. What was sown on the good ground, this is he who hears the word and understands it, who most certainly bears fruit and produces some one hundred times as much, some sixty and some thirty. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people slept, his enemy came and sowed darnel weeds also among the wheat and went away. But when the blade sprang up and produced fruit, then the darnel weeds appeared also. The servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did these darnel weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest perhaps while you gather up the darnel weeds, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first gather up the darnel weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, until it was all leavened. Jesus spoke all these things in parables to the multitudes, and without a parable he didn't speak to them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. 
Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. His disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the darnel weeds of the field. He answered them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed, these are the children of the kingdom, and the darnel weeds are the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. As therefore the darnel weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that cause stumbling, and those who do iniquity, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. In his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a merchant seeking fine pearls, who, having found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some fish of every kind, which, when it was filled, they drew up on the beach. They sat down and gathered the good into containers, but the bad they threw away. So will it be in the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked from among the righteous and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They answered him, Yes, Lord. He said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been made a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a householder, who brings out of his treasure new and old things. When Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. Coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished, and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother called Mary, and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all of his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all of these things? Were offended by him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. He didn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Chapter 14 At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report concerning Jesus, and said to his servants, This is John the Baptizer. He is risen from the dead. That is why these powers work in him. For Herod had arrested John, and bound him, and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. When he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude, because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced among them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she should ask. She, being prompted by her mother, said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the baptizer. The king was grieved. But for the sake of his oaths, and of those who sat at the table with him, he commanded it to be given. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. His head was brought on a platter and given to the young lady, and she brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body and buried it. 
Then they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place apart. When the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Jesus went out, and he saw a great multitude. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. When evening had come, his disciples came to him, saying, This place is deserted, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. They told him, We only have here five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and, looking up to heaven, he blessed, broke, and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up twelve baskets full of that which remained left over from the broken pieces. Those who ate were about five thousand men, in addition to women and children. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. After he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. When evening had come, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, distressed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Cheer up, it is I, don't be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. He said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat and walked on the waters to come to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was strong, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me! Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got up into the boat, the wind ceased. Those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. When the people of that place recognized him, they sent into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick. And they begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment, as many as touched it were made whole. Chapter 15 Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? For they don't wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered them, Why do you also disobey the commandment of God? because of your tradition. For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever may tell his father or his mother, whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me is a gift devoted to God. He shall not honor his father or mother. You have made the commandment of God void because of your tradition. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching us doctrine rules made by men. He summoned the multitude, and said to them, Hear and understand, that which enters into the mouth 
doesn't defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Then the disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father didn't plant will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter answered him, Explain the parable to us. So Jesus said, Do you also still not understand? Don't you understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly, and then out of the body? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual sins, thefts, false testimony, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands doesn't defile the man. Jesus went out from there and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. Behold, a Canaanite woman came out from those borders and cried, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, you son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he answered her not a word. His disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. But he answered, I wasn't sent to anyone but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, it is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Jesus departed from there and came near to the Sea of Galilee. And he went up into the mountain and sat there. Great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they put them down at his feet. He healed them, so that the multitude wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the injured healed, the lame walking, and the blind seeing and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away fasting, or they might faint on the way. The disciples said to him, Where should we get so many loaves in a deserted place as to satisfy so great a multitude? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven and a few small fish. He commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks and broke them and gave to the disciples and the disciples to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled. They took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces that were left over. Those who ate were 4,000 men, in addition to women and children. Then he sent away the multitudes, got into the boat, and came into the borders of Magdala. Chapter 16 The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and, testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there will be no sign given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. He left them and departed.
the disciples came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They reasoned among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. Jesus, perceiving it, said, Why do you reason among yourselves, you of little faith, because you have brought no bread? Don't you yet perceive, neither remember the five loaves for the five thousand, and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up? How is it that you don't perceive that I didn't speak to you concerning bread, but beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he didn't tell them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say John the Baptizer, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Then he commanded the disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this will never be done to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what will a man give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to everyone according to his deeds. Most certainly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Chapter 17 After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain by themselves. He was changed before them. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as the light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, let's make three tents here one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces, and were very afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and don't be afraid. Lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus alone. 
As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. His disciples asked him, saying, Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Jesus answered them, Elijah indeed comes first and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has come already, and they didn't recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted to. Even so, the Son of Man will also suffer by them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the baptizer. When they came to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffers grievously, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him. The demon went out of him, and the boy was cured from that hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why weren't we able to cast it out? He said to them, Because of your unbelief. For most certainly I tell you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, Move from here to there and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind doesn't go out except by prayer and fasting. While they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered up into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. They were exceedingly sorry. When they had come to Capernaum, those who collected the didrachma coins came to Peter and said, Doesn't your teacher pay the didrachma? He said, Yes. When he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth receive toll or tribute? From their children or from strangers? Peter said to him, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Therefore the children are exempt. But lest we cause them to stumble, go to the sea, cast a hook, and take up the first fish that comes up. When you have opened its mouth, you will find a statir coin. Take that and give it to them for me and you. Chapter 18 In that hour the disciples came to Jesus, saying, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to himself and set him in the middle of them and said, Most certainly I tell you, unless you turn and become as little children, you will in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whoever therefore humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such little child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a huge millstone were hung around his neck and that he were sunk in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of occasions of stumbling, for it must be that the occasions come. But woe to that person through whom the occasion comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life maimed or crippled rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the eternal fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into the Gehenna of fire. See that you don't despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. 
for the Son of Man came to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has one hundred sheep, and one of them goes astray, doesn't he leave the ninety-nine, go to the mountains, and seek that which has gone astray? If he finds it, most certainly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine which have not gone astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go, show him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained back your brother. But if he doesn't listen, take one or two more with you, that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the assembly. If he refuses to hear the assembly also, let him be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Most certainly, I tell you, whatever things you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever things you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Again, assuredly, I tell you, that if two of you will agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the middle of them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him, until seven times? Jesus said to him, I don't tell you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to reconcile accounts with his servants. When he had begun to reconcile, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But because he couldn't pay, his lord commanded him to be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment be made. This servant, therefore, fell down and knelt before him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will repay you all. The Lord of that servant, being moved with compassion, released him and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him one hundred denarii, and he grabbed him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. He would not, but went and cast him into prison, until he should pay back that which was due. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were exceedingly sorry, and came and told their lord all that was done. Then his Lord called him in and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow servant, even as I had mercy on you? His Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father will also do to you if you don't each forgive your brother from your hearts for his misdeeds. Chapter 19 When Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee and came into the borders of Judea beyond the Jordan. Great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Pharisees came to him, testing him, and saying, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any reason? He answered, Haven't you read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother, and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no more two, but one flesh? What, therefore, God has joined together, don't let man tear apart. They asked him, Why then did Moses command us to give her a certificate of divorce and divorce her? 
he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it has not been so. I tell you that whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries her when she is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If this is the case of the man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all men can receive this saying, but those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then little children were brought to him, that he should lay his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Allow the little children, and don't forbid them to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to ones like these. He laid his hands on them and departed from there. Behold, one came to him and said, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is, God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not offer false testimony. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have observed from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sad, for he was one who had great possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, Most certainly I say to you, a rich man will enter into the kingdom of heaven with difficulty. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into God's kingdom. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus said, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered, Behold, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Most certainly I tell you that you who have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on the throne of his glory, you also will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive one hundred times and will inherit eternal life. But many will be last who are first and first who are last. Chapter 20 For the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was the master of a household, who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. About the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, he said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? 
They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and you will receive whatever is right. When evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise each received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the master of the household, saying, These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me for a denarius? Take that which is yours and go your way. It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Isn't it lawful for me to do what I want to with what I own? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify, and the third day he will be raised up. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, kneeling and asking a certain thing of him. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these, my two sons, may sit, one on your right hand and one on your left hand in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for whom it has been prepared by my father. When the ten heard it, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you shall be your bondservant even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they went out from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Behold, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. The multitude rebuked them, telling them that they should be quiet, but they cried out even more, Lord, have mercy on us, you son of David. Jesus stood still and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? They told him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received their sight, and they followed him. Chapter 21 When they came near to Jerusalem, and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village that is opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and laid their clothes on them, and he sat on them. A very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The multitudes who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? The multitudes said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus entered into the temple of God and drove out all of those who sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the money changers' tables and the seats of those who sold the doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children who were crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, did you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and nursing babies you have perfected praise? He left them and went out of the city to Bethany and camped there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. He said to it, Let there be no fruit from you forever. Immediately the fig tree withered away. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree immediately wither away? Jesus answered them, Most certainly I tell you, if you have faith and don't doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you told this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it would be done. All things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. When he had come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority do you do these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, which, if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? They reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will ask us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, from men, we fear the multitude, for all hold John as a prophet. They answered Jesus and said, We don't know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, I will not. But afterward he changed his mind and went. He came to the second and said the same thing. He answered, I'm going, sir, but he didn't go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Most certainly I tell you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering into God's kingdom before you. 
For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. When you saw it, you didn't even repent afterward, that you might believe him. Hear another parable. There was a man who was a master of a household, who planted a vineyard, set a hedge about it, dug a wine press in it, built a tower, leased it out to farmers, and went into another country. When the season for the fruit came near, he sent his servants to the farmers to receive his fruit. The farmers took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they treated them the same way. But afterward he sent to them his son, saying, They will respect my son. But the farmers, when they saw the son, said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the Lord of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those farmers? They told him, He will miserably destroy those miserable men and will lease out the vineyard to other farmers who will give him the fruit in its season. Jesus said to them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected was made the head of the corner? This was from the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, God's kingdom will be taken away from you and will be given to a nation producing its fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it will fall, it will scatter him as dust. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke about them. When they sought to seize him, they feared the multitudes, because they considered him to be a prophet. Chapter 22 Jesus answered and spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, who made a wedding feast for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast. But they would not come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My cattle and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his merchandise. And the rest grabbed his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them. When the king heard that, he was angry and sent his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Go, therefore, to the intersections of the highways, and as many as you may find, invite to the wedding feast. Those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. The wedding was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man who didn't have on wedding clothing. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here not wearing wedding clothing? He was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and throw him into the outer darkness. That is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. For many are called, but few chosen. Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how they might entrap him in his talk. They sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are honest and teach the way of God in truth, no matter whom you teach, for you aren't partial to anyone. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why do you test me? 
you hypocrites. Show me the tax money. They brought to him a denarius. He asked them, Whose is this image and inscription? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled and left him and went away. On that day, Sadducees, those who say that there is no resurrection, came to him. They asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. In the same way, the second also, and the third to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will she be of the seven? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like God's angels in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, haven't you read that which was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the multitudes heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But the Pharisees, when they heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. A second likewise is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, Of David. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand, until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word. Neither did any man dare ask him any more questions from that day forward. Chapter 23 then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sat on Moses' seat. All things, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do, but don't do their works. For they say and don't do, for they bind heavy burdens that are grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not lift a finger to help them. But they do all their works to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad, enlarge the fringes of their garments, and love the place of honor at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, the salutations in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by men. But don't you be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and all of you are brothers. Call no man on the earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, 
and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and as a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you don't enter in yourselves, neither do you allow those who are entering in to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you travel around by sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of Gehenna as yourselves. Woe to you, you blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? Whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obligated. You blind fools! For which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? He, therefore, who swears by the altar, swears by it and by everything on it. He who swears by the temple, swears by it and by him who has been living in it. He who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, deal, and cumin, and have left undone the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But you ought to have done these and not to have left the other undone. You blind guides who strain out a net and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and unrighteousness. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the platter, that its outside may become clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites, for you are like whitened tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the tombs of the righteous, and say, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you testify to yourselves that you are children of those who killed the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you offspring of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna? Therefore, Behold, I send to you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the sanctuary and the altar. Most certainly, I tell you, all these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I would have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you would not. Behold, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me from now on, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. End of section 72